A century ago, the sky split apart, and the dungeon appeared, and the monsters that flooded out of the dungeon could not be restrained with standard weapons. The only ones who could face them were people who awakened supernatural abilities and the appearance of the dungeon. The few selected humans were called Awakeners, and thanks to their performance, the turbulent world stabilized. While monsters, mana, and a new civilization started to take root, some Awakeners became hunters whose job was to take down monsters. Decades later, there were too many hunters, and the mechanism behind the Awakening was uncovered. It became possible to artificially awaken so anyone could become an Awakener as long as they had money. Naturally, the number of people who wanted to become hunters increased. Thus, the Great Age of Hunters occurred. After struggling with the problem, the government created the Pro Hunter exam and limited only those who passed the test to be active hunters. Naturally, institutes that helped people prepare for the hunter exams emerged, which trained physically and provided various hunting information. Ultimately, private institutions that taught everything one needed to become a hunter were founded called Hunter Academies. Later, the monster is injured by an Awakener, and he can't believe the defeat and wonders how a human like him could exist. He laughed and commented that he was just a frog in a well, but the monster refused to accept this, so he tried to attack the hunter. But to become a hunter, people in the present era had to attend a Hunter Academy. But his academy was on a completely different dimension than other academies. He attacked the monster. But the monster survived and attacked him back, he was at ease as he was sure he would trounce it. He remembered the instruction of the instructor Atlas, that heaven-defying fist he could hold up and overturn. While his other instructor's instructions were also revolving in his mind, he attacked and defeated the monster. After he successfully defeated the monster, the notification about the lecture appeared, and after he accepted it, the lecture from Transcension Academy began. Seo Jun was dreaming of becoming a pro hunter, and he had been saving money to become the hunter but was searching for good but cheap hunter academies. His old fellows thought it was something he could be as long as he was awakened, but his other fellow reminded him about the hunter's exams to attend the academies. The protagonist thinks he is right because most of the professors at hunter academies were active and returned hunters since real hunters are teaching them experiences and know how that they usually need to risk their lives to learn. Thanks to that. A massive gap between the educated and uneducated was formed as it was the age where they had to attend a hunter academy to become a hunter. He saved enough to attend one year of classes at a hunter academy and wanted to participate in the better academy, but it was too expensive. While searching for the academy, he saw the ad for Transcending Academy and was startled because it was the first time he heard about it. The paradigm of Transcended is shifting and the transcension rage that was storming the whole universe. A collection of experience and knowledge of seasoned professors tens of thousands of years old, which gives individual tasks to the student. The videos of the students who passed the transcension exams were also uploaded to the site. He was stunned to see such an ad and wondered what kind of nut job it was, as their site was not different from the other academies. He saw the names of so many instructors there and checked it out like one of the Heaven Great Sages. After he clicked on the video, a red monkey introduced himself and his skills and weapons. The lecture was ordinary considering the concept, and Sun Wukong showed the movement to deflect outward. Then, there was the movement to twirl the staff back inward, and finally, they could pierce the enemy at a single point. He was stunned as his movement skill pierced the mountain and disappeared. It was impossible even for S-rank hunters. After he saw the video, the notification appeared asking him if he was for registration. When he decided to register, an error occurred because he was not a member, so it asked him to register for an account, which cost him 40 k dollars. After looking at the calculated fees, he thought they were just scammers. The man packing the fish at his back asked him which academy he was registering. He was thinking about the Ark Hunter Academy as he heard the teachers there were good. Some say that life is comedy in the long shot, but a tragedy happens when seen in close-ups, so a person must be able to take their pain to laugh. The protagonist was leaving when suddenly the chain broke, and the monster loaded on it fell on him, injuring him. The nerves in his legs were necrosis because the broken bone was tangled with the nerve while healing. He immediately needed surgery to prevent the permanent and irreversible damage to the nerve, which cost 40 k dollars. All of his savings were used in the surgery, and the only money he was left with was 3,000 dollars. He wondered if he had to start from scratch, then the Transcension Academy message offered him a free pass if he registered immediately. He looked at this site as he could not find it after that day and his new registration fee, which was calculated, was 3k dollars. He remembered that previously, it was 40k, but now it's 3k, which was all he had in his account. 
he registered, and the money started flying out of the envelope, after which a person popped out his phone, and he was shocked. That person was his mentor for his initial education, and his name was Mentor. The protagonist wondered if he would be the teacher of the great Odysseus, and he affirmed that he was his first student, and they were still in contact. The mentor informed him that they help students transcend, and he was shocked that that was not the Hunter Academy. The mentor requested him to fill out the form, which asked him about the field he wanted to transcend, which was to find out the skill and his current ability and tendencies. He selected combat, and then other options appeared, but he didn't know what to choose for his second question. The mentor asked him to decide what he could, but he could not do anything best, and he wondered how he had become a member. But he assured him that their academy doesn't kick out the membrane, and after some time, he finally answered all 108 questions. He preferred spearmanship instead of mana cultivation, and he recommended a few lectures from the instructors. He recommended he take the lectures of Siddhartha Gautam since he was facing physical and emotional problems regarding the Buddha's founder. After he got the lectures, he would get an unwavering heart, and his mentor wished him luck and instructed that even if he felt he had lost his mind, he should take this lecture. He started the lecture and felt like he was a Buddha, and suddenly, he felt like he was in another universe and realized why his mentor wished him luck. One week later, the doctor was amazed by his speedy recovery, thanks to Buddha's video, although he had just completed 1.3% of it. He was pleased as the Transcension Academy was a great deal. He decided to take Chiron lectures since he could move his body. It was in a class metamorphosis lower than that of an unwavering heart. Instructor Chiron was a centaur with a human torso and a horse's lower body. His lecture's main focus was to prepare the student for transcension. While utterly indulging in the lecture, Chiron shouted at him to start moving and was startled. His daily individual tasks that were allocated after calculating students' levels had arrived. His task included a 30 kilometers run, thousands of squats, push-ups, sit-ups, and a few pull-ups were assigned, and he thought that the task assigned was beyond the daily difficulty. He remembered the doctor's instruction not to overexert for a week, so he avoided the task and watched the video. He tried to skip it multiple times but didn't as he didn't complete his task, and he wondered how the app knew about it. In the end, he admitted his defeat and started watching Buddha lectures first, and he was shocked when the expiration date for his free registration appeared. He didn't expect this, but since it was an academy, he should suppose that, and he decided to absorb all the content he could in that duration. No matter how much he watched the video, his progress stayed the same despite repeatedly watching it, and he lost the confidence to complete it in the remaining days. He started exercising for the first time in nine years because he had no reason. He started with the push-up and completed the task, though it differed from his struggle the last nine years. When he looked at the progress, it mentioned just 81, but he wondered why it was less than what he had performed. He practiced repeatedly and realized that it excluded those who needed proper forms. Then he started his pull-ups, squats, and sit-ups, and after so much struggle, he completed his daily tasks. He lay on the ground as he couldn't do it anymore while the people passing were staring at him. He wondered if he had to do it daily than when he would watch the videos, but that was his headache, not Chiron's. After a few days, he was going out of the hospital for exercise and heard the news about the appearance of the four-star monster behemoth in Seoul. It was in a deep sleep, but the Monster Corpse Association didn't know about it, so they moved it to the inner city and suddenly woke. But luckily, the Awakeners in the vicinity were able to prevent any loss. The old lady beside him was amazed to see those hunters as they often came on the TV, and asked the protagonist if he would also appear that often. He wondered if it was that easy to appear on the TV. Then the man close remarked that not everyone could become a hunter. As he was not a cadet, he couldn't become a hunter just by exercising. The protagonist was furious and informed him that he would decide what to do with his life, so he should worry about himself. The man gets enraged as he advises him for his betterment, but the protagonist thinks it's not impossible to become a hunter, as he was the cadet of the Transcension Academy. He could feel the difference after a week of taking lectures. Meanwhile, an Awakener hates being a hunter as there was no point in establishing an academy since stuff still costs money. But they have no cadet, while she successfully defeated a few monsters, she was annoyed by this. After spending two weeks in the hospital, he came home and realized that his house was the best, no matter how small. He remembered that the hunter exam was held one year later but needed something in his account. He looked at his phone to check his daily tasks and registered for his following lecture. Chiron realized he had enough strength to start toddling now, and he told him the first step to transcend, which was sense, after that lecture, his progress increased. 
The following day, he went to work, and the man warned him that if such an incident happened the next time, it would not be their fault. He also didn't want to go there, but the issue was the money, and he was pondering about it at the corner. Because if he earned money, he couldn't complete the daily tasks when free. He decided to listen to the lecture but needed help remembering the previous lecture. He started the lecture, and Chiron was telling him about all the senses, and his current lecture was on the hidden sense, intuition. His co-worker came from behind and hit him for fun, but he dodged it, and they were shocked, wondering how he knew. He started working and getting three parts of the monster corpse, which were about 200 kilograms and were completely fine. Manchul thought he might be fine now since he could easily carry them around. The protagonist didn't feel exhausted and decided to do his daily tasks after squatting. He decided to look at his progress. He was shocked as his one squat was counted as three due to increased effectiveness with weight. He was thrilled as he needed to arrange extra work for his daily tasks as he could do it while working. And he carried more weight. After all the hard work, he came home and felt like dying. Although doing the task during work was efficient, it was hard. He was glad as he completed his daily tasks and saved his time, and after listening to a lecture, he still had the time. He thought he should get a few more lectures on the free pass and found the lecture by Zhang Yu. He was the hegemon King Zhang Zhu after appearing in The Legend of Chu, and he became a widely known man with overwhelming power. He registered for his lecture and started taking it. While Zhang Zhu remarked that those taking the lectures were trash, he started teaching him but he gave him the daily task so that he could carve the concept of spearman and return to him. His daily task was to swing the spear-type weapon 5,000 times, and he wondered why there were always daily tasks with the lectures. Meanwhile, Class B hunter Park Seo Yoon came to his workplace and instructed them to thoroughly check the monster's corpse since an incident like Behemoth could happen again. Their senior was at his knees for her, and he listened to them whispering and realized that she was the granddaughter of the great sword star Park Min Chul. A hundred years ago, he was an awakener who acted when the concept of the eight started to be created. Unlike the present, the monsters at that time were more brutal, and they roamed in the streets. It was a time when human survival was not guaranteed. At that time, Park Minchul was an active awakener who returned civilization to the world. He might have become old as time passed, but he still had a heavy weight that could compete on the global stage. But that wasn't his business, and he started his daily task, and she wondered what was wrong with him. The man informed her not to mind him since he had been out of his mind for a week. He left the course near Min Chol and asked how long he would work like that but said he had wanted to do it till the end since he started it. He was leaving to bring back some other monster parts, but he sensed some movement and looked at the monster, waking him up. She didn't like the team leader and wondered how she could get rid of that person. While she was still thinking, a few workers started gossiping about it. As her rank was relatively low, even though she was the daughter of the Star Swords, she could hear all their conversation. Her grandfather's name was quite burdensome to hear, and although he directly taught her, she could still not overcome the wall between them. She wanted to be a teacher, but her grandfather forced her into this field since she was the granddaughter of the Sword Star. She made the compromise and returned for the Hunter Academy, but they left when people found out that his grandfather was not teaching them. The remaining cadets were chased out by her grandfather, and she thought if she had one proper cadet, her academy would rise again. While she was pondering, the worker ran out and shouted that the monster had woken up, and she was stunned. Meanwhile, the protagonist wondered why the manticore he carried woke up again. Min Chol instructed Kim Seo Joon to run away, but he knew he would die if he left. He was worried that since the average person couldn't escape from a four-star monster, even hunters would find it difficult. He remembered that there was a hunter, but she was not near them, so he had to step forward to take down that monster. He attacked the monster about to eat his fellow and instructed him to run away as he would stall until the pro hunter appeared. While shaking from the fear of the monster, he suddenly heard his instructor's voice, Siddhartha Godham, telling him to embrace the universe. Due to him, all his emotion, fear, and shaking fade away, and he rushes toward the monster while it attacks him. It was too late for him to step back, so he left his action to his senses and dodged the monster's attack. He jumped and wondered if he should hit the weak point of the monster. His instructor's words helped him not to hesitate and trust that his blow would slit the mountain. He believed that he would be able to get rid of it, so he attacked the monster. Park Seo Yoon wondered what that racket was and was stunned to see him defeating the monster. He realized that he had defeated the monster and the lecture progress of all the instructors was increased. She can't believe the corpse mover defeated the monster without any special weapon but a pipe. 
he rushed toward Min Chul and wondered if he was alright, while all of them were happy as he defeated the monster. While the team leader was pleased they had taken care of their mistake and prevented any mishap, she focused on him as she found the proper cadet. After work, he saw the lecture progress, which can't be compared to repeatedly listening to it, and he thought it might be because of the manticore. He realized that to progress speedily, he needed to take care of the monster, but he needed a license from the Hunter Academy to do that. While murmuring about what he should do, Park Seo Yoon asked for his time to talk, and he wondered what she wanted to discuss with him. She asked him straightforwardly if he wanted to meet her grandfather, but he denied it and left for his home as he had to listen to his lectures. She was flustered as she was doing what she had never done before and told him her intention. He realized that she wanted him to be the cadet of her academy, which was just a hunter academy in documents. Although he did a weird exercise, he was able to get rid of the monster manticore and split it in half, so it was clear that he wanted to become the hunter. She promised him all the facilities and even the instructions from her grandfather, but he declined. But she didn't want to let him go and promised him to allow the raid and provide the license. But he still didn't agree, so she promised him a separate location where he could train as he wanted and would not ask for any tuition fees. He knew that they might be wanting something in return as it was the tempting offer that could solve all his problems. She told him that in return, he had to participate in competitions under her academy name and would tell the people that he was part of their academy. She saw his potential, so she wanted him to be a part of her academy, and he agreed to her offer since it was a relationship where they would use each other. The next day, he received a call from his work, and Man Chol asked what he had done that day as their team leader changed, and he remembered his conversation with her. He requested that she tell the company she wouldn't work with them because of the team leader. While talking, he reached the Hunter Academy, where she was already waiting for him, and gave him the license. Although he didn't get the Pro Hunter license, it was his first step toward his dream. She instructed him to choose the weapon as they would raid the dungeon because she had already gotten permission. Later, he went to the dungeon and killed a kobold while he wondered why she tagged along when they promised not to interfere in each other's matters. But she requested him to think of her as the safety device as they didn't want to let her only cadet go alone on the first raid. After covering a few distances, another kobold attacked them from behind, and he killed him and checked his progress. It was an effective way for him to progress in the lecture and earn from the raid. He looked at her, told her he would increase his speed, and rushed to kill the monster. It was like grinding for a game experience. After returning from the dungeon raid, he continuously stared at his blank screen, and she wondered what he was doing. What she found more strange was that he could massacre the kobold just like hunters who have trained for 10 years. Also, while moving the monster's corpse, he was performing the exercise he could do by calling the corpse mover. She had to inform her about her newly enrolled crazy cadet to her grandfather and wondered if she had made the right decision. He was pleased because of yesterday's effort at the dungeon. He earned almost 10k dollars, but the problem was that he couldn't listen to his lecture. He thought he should work with Manchul as he was trustworthy and could settle his own business with this. His progress rate increased but didn't increase after he killed the last kobold, and he wondered if there was another way to become as strong as the Heaven Great Sage quickly. He remembered his lecture that he could not register for previously because of money, so he wanted to register for his class. But the registration fee was 27 million, so he decided to think about that lecture later and wonder if that academy sold any items. He founded a transcendent shop where he saw many previous elixirs, shields, and lances of Longinus. He decided to buy the lance of Longinus as his weapon, and it was calculating the price. The next day, he was training in CH more desperately, and she wondered what had happened. He never thought that the copy of the mythical weapon would cost that much, as there was no way he would have much money. While he was sad about it, as he couldn't even purchase the weapon, how could he listen to the lecture of the Great Sage? Park Seo Yoon asked him if he had heard about contention like a contest between academies to show their supremacy. She handed him the documents and informed him that if he performed well in the competition, he could get the right to participate in a higher league. She wanted him to join in the competition as her Hunter Academy representative. He agreed since this could help increase lecture progress, which was also part of their agreement. She informed him that its scores were based upon the dungeon raids and duel between the cadets. He had no experience with dueling, so he asked her if she could duel with him, and he couldn't believe his suggestion. It was a great opportunity as she was a B-rank hunter who learned from her grandfather that novice cadets might need help to judge a pro hunter. She wondered if he was sure to fight with her as she was a B-rank hunter, but he was prepared. She allowed him to concede the first blow, and he attacked her, but she dodged. She thought she overestimated him in the dungeon as his steps were predictable and sloppy. She decided to attack him as the blow would defeat her, but she was stunned as he was held back against her attack. 
She wondered how he blocked the mana attack as it would throw his weapon away. Then she put the weapon on his neck, and he rushed back and informed her to go at it for an actual attack. She was surprised as his attacks became faster and sharper than before, and his momentum also changed. This all made the stock difference. While attacking her, his instructor guided him to make the blatant attack that would follow the apparent defense. He instructed him to spin his spear toward himself and repeat it until his opponent was in a position where she couldn't block the attack. When the right time comes, he should put all his effort into his next attack. He tried to attack her, but she threw him back as she used her full power without thinking. She went to him, wondering if he was alright, but he smiled and remarked that he had lost. She was stunned as he believed that a cadet would win against the hunter, and he also thought there was a massive gap between them. He received a notification about his progress, and he requested her to spar with him in free time, and she agreed to help him. She informed him that the contest also had a prize of about 100k dollars, and he was stunned as it was the price of the weapon he wanted to buy. She informed him that after two weeks, he got more enthusiastic about the competition after hearing about the prize. He lifted one of the blocks to use as the weight to train, and she told him that he could use the sandbags to train, and he thanked her. Two weeks later, at the time of the tournament, Li Mingyi arrived at the place and saw many more popular hunters than he thought. He went to the entrance and asked for the waiting room, and the man directed him. He went to the room and was so timid that he could not even move and was speechless after seeing the weapons and muscles of the participants. SNC Every Academy sent the best student to participate. He didn't know to whom he should talk when he saw the protagonist sitting alone with an ordinary weapon. People gossiped about him, thinking he might be forced to participate, but he ignored them. He thought he was the comrade, assuming he might be pretending to look at the phone as he might be alone and nervous. He went to him after introducing himself, he asked if he could sit next to him, and he agreed. While two participants started arguing, he pointed toward one named Jang Duk Chul, who used an axe as his weapon. The person with whom he was fighting was Lee Chulman from Mid Academy, who used twin daggers. The protagonist wondered why he was explaining this to him and asked if he was the infamous explanation character. While arguing, Lee Junwen shouted at them to quit as he was not the only one in the waiting room. With his one sentence, everyone was quiet, and Lee Mingi said that he was the winner of this competition and that as long as he was there, he was sure he would win. Lee Junwen is furious as he wouldn't have participated in this competition without his uncle's wish to rise to League 3. He thought it would be better if he just agreed to park Seo Yoon's offer as she was the granddaughter of Sword Saint and discarded her after using it. While thinking, he started at the protagonist and wondered who that peasant was. Later, the first tournament commenced, and the man arrived at the stadium. His fellow waved at him, but he sat on the wrong seat. He wondered why his fellow got the corner seat but soon realized he was in the wrong seat. He apologized and went to his companion, who asked about the details of the dungeon maze race's first tournament to judge the participants' intuition. The maze had monsters they had to kill, and it provided the clue to escape the maze, which was to test the hunter's skills. While conversing, his companion asked him to see Lee Junwen's attack. His movements were not of that cadet, and the audience was amazed and sure he would be the winner of this competition. She was hiding her face as she didn't want to be discovered by the granddaughter of the Great Sword and wondered how Kim Seo Joon might be doing. He tried to break the wall but failed, so he followed the wall the usual way. While going, he saw a three-way fork, and he thought if he followed the maze rule, he should put his hand on one wall and keep following it till the exit. While taking the path he was thinking, he suddenly had the strange feeling of taking the opposite direction, and wondered if it was part of his sixth sense intuition. He followed the way but found it weird as he heard the announcement that other cadets were fighting the monster and wondered if his intuition was also helping him avoid it. On his way, Lee Mingi appeared from the other side and wondered why he was walking confidently. But he was using his intuition, which stunned him, and he was worried, so he asked him to follow him as the maze was complicated and dangerous. But he wanted to follow his intuition and wondered why Mingi was following him. He replied that they were comrades as both participated separately, so he thought weak people should work together. He was stunned, but he also thought he looked weak from the outside, and he decided to leave and never meet again. Mingi grabbed his legs and requested not to leave, but he wondered if his parents hadn't come to see him. After he realized that his parents passed away, he agreed to tag him along, and he rushed after him. But he was stunned as he was so confident that he didn't hesitate to walk but reached the dead end. The protagonist opened the door, and he became the first maze breaker, and made the new record of breakthrough time. Everyone was shocked as they didn't expect him to be first. 
but he thought he had wasted his experience points as he hadn't met any monster. Mingi couldn't believe he got the second position as he had just followed the protagonist to escape the maze. Other cadets were also stunned as they knew he was from the Hunter Academy they had never heard of before. They wondered if he was the son of someone higher up. It was unexpected as they all thought Youngwon would take the first position. Lee Junwen went to him, and he wondered why he was scrutinizing him from top to bottom and left. Everyone thought he might won by luck, and the door opened, and the man made the announcement about the second round. It was a one-on-one -on -one tournament in which mana weapons were not allowed, mana could be used on the body, and judges could end the duel if they found cadets couldn't fight. The protagonist wondered how the match would start as 32 cadets had passed the previous one. Meanwhile, Park Seo Joon was almost caught as the man recognized her and decided to return after everything calmed down. She heard a few people asking why the tournament started with the semifinals since they announced 32 people won the first round, and the man informed them that everyone else forfeited. They thought it would be tedious to gamble now as other cadets were not worthy, and Junwon would win the match. But someone betted million won for Kim Seo Joon, and they wondered who he was as he was from the academy with no name. Meanwhile, all participants forfeited except five people because they feared the Junwon. The first round was between Kim Seo Joon and Jan Duk Chul, while the second round was between the other. Lee Mingyi was afraid and was shaking in fear as his opponent was Youngwon. He wondered why the protagonist was not scared, but he was confident since no one could see the result before fighting. The preparation for the duel ended, so they were instructed to head to the arena, and Seo Joon left confidently. The first tournament of the contention began and Dung Chul thought he was unlucky to pass the first round since that led him to him. He wondered who would be the one unlucky as the match commenced, so he rushed to attack as he wanted to make him regret what he said. Li Mingyi was worried about the protagonist, but there was a better time to think about others since he would fight Yongwen. He assumed that people like them from No Name Academy were not a match for the people like them, so he wanted to forfeit. But everyone was stunned as the winner of the match was Kim Seo Joon. Youngwon thought those trash were playing in themselves, and he furiously looked at Mingi. Duxiang attacked him with strength a few moments earlier, but he continuously evaded his attack. Everyone realized he might have yet to pass on luck. Duxnag wondered what he was as he ran out of breath after non-stop attacking him, but he was brushing his attack. He attacked him with strength and wanted to see if he could evade this, but he threw his weapon away. He was stunned by this and fell to the ground and accepted his defeat, which overturned it, and he won the match. Later, he saw his lecture progress and was disappointed because it increased just a few points. He expected its speed to increase after the cadet fight, and now he just had 52 days until free pass expiration. He had no choice but to win the match since he was on a tight budget if he had to take lectures and purchase the weapon. He entered the room where Mingi was all riled up as he thought he would be weak, but his match was terrific. The game between Mingyi and Youngwon was starting, and he had no confidence in winning since he had no talent, but he wanted to be someone his sister would be proud of. They were at the stadium, and he was mumbling, which annoyed Youngwon as he was already embarrassed that he had participated in this contention. He could tell by seeing him that he was praying for strong predators like him and was just fodder. Mingyi wielded his sword at him, and he was pestered, wondering if he thought he could win against him. The match commences, and he unleashes his fast attack, but he blocks his attack. He wanted to defeat that pest immediately, so he hit his chest and knelt so everyone wondered if this was the end of the match. He wondered if he could do nothing as he wanted to be a great big brother and be like Seo Joon, so he got up. He wanted his attack to reach Youngwon, even if it would be his finger, and he rushed to attack him, there was a flash, and he fell. Youngho won the match, but his sword reached him, and it pierced his face. The audience thinks Youngwon is not all that and acts cool after being defeated. He gets furious, forfeits the match, kicks Mingyi, and remarks that they were at the four leagues because they swarmed all cadets. He moved toward Mingyi, and they warned him not to take action against him. But he had already forfeited, so he thought they couldn't take action against him, and he put his foot on his face, commenting. They are crawling like pests, as garbage hunters like him deserve to be hit. But the protagonist apologizes and remarks that he deserves to be beaten. The protagonist told him to put his foot away from his head, but he didn't, so he attacked him and got back. He can't understand why someone like him would trample over others and look down on them. So he uttered that because seeing a pest not knowing its place was repulsive. He wondered if he meant they couldn't dream, and Youngwon couldn't believe people could be that unrealistic. The audience wondered why the management was not stepping in, but they got the orders from the higher-ups for not meddling. Youngwon wanted to teach him the lesson about the reality of the world where only they could survive by squashing others. He also thought the same way during the nine years he had to endure the hardship of being the hunter. 
He also wondered if things would be difficult if he were rich and wanted to give up multiple times. He requested the referee to take care of Mingyi and rushed toward Youngwon to attack, but the referee informed him that it violated the rule. But he attacked him and realized that he was strong as the people gossiped, but he didn't want to overthink and just moved according to his senses. The referee tried to stop them, but he did not listen to him as he was the predator, but he could sense similar feelings from them. He rushed to attack him, but he blocked his attack, and after a few more attacks, he became proficient. Kim Seo Joon attacked him, and he pushed away, which he couldn't believe, and retrieved his mana sword. He knew he would lose since he didn't know how to control the mana, but he didn't want to run as it would defy everything he built. His master instructed him to believe in himself and told him that one of his students asked him why he didn't run from one of the fights, the result of which was decided. He wanted to fight till the end, which was how he became hegemon king. With the power of uprooting mountains, will move mountains and have the spirit that overturns the world will dominate. He rushed to attack him, and he couldn't believe it as he dared to attack, and they attacked each other with considerable force which gathered dust. It was difficult for the other to see which would win, but they stood when the dust faded away, and Youngwon soon fell to the ground. She couldn't believe he had won against him as he could barely hold against Mana's sword two weeks before. Then she looked back and saw the guy at the gambling center, and he was also shocked. Although she was also shocked, she thought his expression was too much, it was like some eternal law of nature had been broken. Later, he was walking on the road and was sad because he was disqualified as he violated the rule even after the referee had given him the warning call. He wondered what would happen to Youngwon as he used the Aura Sword, which was a murderous attempt, so he was sure he would be banned from taking pro hunter exams for five years. In the end, Lee Cholman won the tournament by default and Mingyi came second, and Duxul came third place. But he was okay with it since his progress rate had increased. Specifically, Zhang Zhu's progress had passed 50%. Back then, he could sense the strange strength and wondered if he could take additional lectures. While he was looking for the lecture, Seo Yun arrived and was worried about his health and was relieved to know he was fine. He apologized to her for getting disqualified, but she was okay with it as he was fine. She couldn't believe he was not worried as he wanted the prize money. But he forgot the prize money and was worried as he had to buy the item and register for the lectures. He regretted not having it, but he would be more regretful if he didn't step forward. He was sure that one problem would be solved. While conversing, Mingyi arrived, and he wondered if he could be like him if he worked hard. The protagonist remarked it would be difficult, so he should be able to avoid being hung up with Pro Hunter and do something he is good at. He agreed to him, and since he came to give his final farewell, he left after bidding farewell to him. While he was leaving, he told him not to let people tell him what he had to do because someone else's opinion could not become a reality. He started crying since no one had cheered him up, and he had promised to meet him with his sister soon. She had never expected that side of him, and now he had a fan of him, but he thought it would be better if she could get a student instead. His worry about the academy touched her, so she bought him a weapon. Late at her grandfather's residence, Seo Moon Chol arrived and met him even though he was meditating because of an emergency. He gets furious since they disobeyed his orders, and his aura pressure is unbearable for them. He informed him that Lady Seo Yoon participated in the academy tournament, and seemed to have recruited a new student. The sword sent decided to see what kind of person her new student is personally. Later, he practiced and completed his daily task. Then, he sensed a sharp glare behind him as Seo Yoon stared at him. She remarked that he shouldn't be picky as she was buying him the weapons, but he didn't like one of them. She didn't suppose he would be the super pick at the workshop as she knew he would have taken it usually. He agreed with her, but ever since he saw the Lance of Longinus, he hasn't been able to think of any other weapon. He considered borrowing money to buy it, but its price increased, so he realized it counted as money earned through hard work. She wanted to know what mana cultivation technique he used, but she had never seen him cultivate it since he could defeat the monster and handle the mana. He didn't cultivate mana, which enabled him to use mana more efficiently. But it has many variations, divided into high and low classes based on efficiency. Every hunter has a patent mana technique, so he wanted to enroll in an elite academy. He wondered if she taught the mana cultivation technique of her grandfather, but he strictly forbade her. So she taught her own invented mana technique, and he agreed with her that the mana technique was essential since he could feel the difference between him and Youngwon during the duel. Since he had some time, he decided to take a lecture on mana, and she assumed he didn't want to tell her his mana technique, so she left. He wondered where she was going, so she replied that she had her business to do, which stunned her as he did not think she would have any business. She was pestered and wondered if she seemed like someone who didn't have the business. He was looking at the video of instructor Archmage Merlin, 
who instructed Mana that the strict law of causality in the world could shake and overturn the world. Although he could obtain Lecture S after completing the lecture, he knew he would lose his mind differently than Buddha's lecture. After the course, he received a daily task, manifesting a thousand mana orbs. He started cultivating because of Chiron's lecture. It was manageable to feel and control mana, but it wasn't easy to handle since it connected the world of his mind to the physical world. After some time, he could make a man orb, but it was too small that it wouldn't be counted as his daily task. He was sure that he would be able to do it more proficiently after a few more attempts, but then Sword Saint appeared. He came there to see the new student, but he thought he might be talented after seeing the mana in his hand, which was a condensed manifestation of mana. He thought he might be using his granddaughter since he was that talented. He asked who he was, so he introduced himself and said he had never expected her grandfather to come there. He informed her that Miss Seo Yeon had left for his business, and Park Minchul wondered how he was unfazed because the killing intent that he poured might have paralyzed him unless he is S-rank. The protagonist wondered if it was because of the unwavering heart and sword saint who asked for his fundamental objective. He realized he might have misunderstood him, but he approached him, swung his sword, and attacked him. Meanwhile, she was at her grandfather's residence, but he was not there, and the servants needed to learn the details about his whereabouts. She wanted to talk to him about her recruit, Kim Seo Joon, while her grandfather asked him for the truth. The servant told her to ask Councilman Seo about her grandfather. Luckily, he arrived on time. She was glad as she was about to contact him to ask about her grandfather, and he informed her that he went to her academy. She was worried, so she hurriedly left for the academy since she had left her guard down and was not expecting him to visit that soon. Meanwhile, he wondered what that scabbard was and realized he had swung his sword without unleashing it. He realized he might wanted to restrain him rather than kill him, and he stopped him and tried to clarify the misunderstanding. But sword saints don't believe him as not only does he manifest his amna but also shows fierce movement. He furiously attacked him since he did not hesitate to speak foul lies, and he requested her to calm down although he didn't know what she told him. He felt like he said something wrong that made him think more furious as he no longer wanted to consider his circumstances. He realized that he wouldn't hear him even though he was sure he wouldn't kill him. If the sword saint intended to kill him, he would have killed him the second he sensed his presence. It was an excellent chance for him to duel with his ideal while he met many hunters, but only one could gaze into his eyes. He wondered what ambition he had to approach his granddaughter. He rushed to attack him but couldn't see him, and as he reached him, he could sense that his single strike would be at another level. But he wanted to know how long he could last against him, and he attacked him back. Park Minchel pushed him and thought it was just trivial as all he had to do was answer his one question yet he didn't answer it. The protagonist doesn't want to end it like that and knows something is missing in his tricks and attacks. His only chance was when he was going easy on him, and he had to end it just in one blow. Sword Saint attacked him, but he evaded and attacked him back as he remembered that he just had to use his will and mana to trick the world. This was the best he could do then, so he attacked him with his man blow, but he couldn't do much. He knelt, and Saint Sword remarked that he showed his actual color, but he couldn't understand what he was talking about as he was the one who attacked first. He wondered when Miss Seo Yoon would come there, which made him more furious. He decided to kill him if that was what he wanted the most, and he thought he would be done now. Luckily, Seo Yoon arrived and stopped them and was furious and wondered what he was doing there. She was worried about him as he was bruised all over, and he didn't deny the fact that he was hurt. Sword Saint is surprised as a man, but the protagonist thinks gender doesn't matter when getting hit by him. He gets furious as he talks back, and Seo Yoon is also speechless because she never saw anyone talking back to him. She apologized to him on her grandfather's behalf, and he decided to leave for the hospital. She was grateful for her understanding and agreed to talk to her grandfather, but she couldn't speak. He instructed her to stay away from him since he seemed suspicious, but he was not suspect in her eyes. She remembered that for the past 31 years, her grandfather imposed his will on her and ignored his opinion. Even the hunter academy she got from her grandfather wasn't free. Her grandfather always caused trouble whenever a new student arrived, so they all left. She knew what her grandfather's thought and what the ulterior motive of people coming there was when she could stop them. Her grandfather instructed her to expel him till tomorrow, but she refused as he differed from others. She wondered why she had to listen to all of him because that was her academy. It has been a month, and although she has no romantic feelings for him and has many memories together, she gets an odd feeling whenever she watches him. Her grandfather said it was not the time for the tantrums. She didn't know him, so she asked him what she didn't know and asked him to explain to her. She apologized for raising her voice, but she informed him that she wouldn't let him go, and he was stunned as she had never voiced her opinion so strongly. 
He remembered when the dungeon broke suddenly, and he was informed that there was an incident about his son as he died. After his son died and he saw her alone, she decided that she needed strength to defend herself, which was why he was so strict. Even if she doesn't like swordsmanship and she doesn't choose that path, he doesn't want to hear it. After oppression her all these years, he knew that the emotional rift was widening, but he ignored it on purpose, so rebellion was the result of that. Later, he was on his way and thought his daily tasks would be pretty straightforward. When the sword saint came the other day, he thought he would die, but it ended with bruises, luckily. Last night, she called him and told him a story about her situation and relationship with her grandfather. Although she didn't tell her everything, she would understand how she felt and why her grandfather was hostile to him. He wanted to get a written apology from him that something like that would never happen again. But he ignored it since it increased his lecture progress. When he opened the door, he was shocked as the sword saint was waiting for him there, and he wondered if he was going to beat him again. He told him the complete truth about the deal between him and Seo Yoon, but he still suspected him, so he confirmed it again. He wondered why a mere cadet like him had such high strength, and when he first met him, it was not the suspicion but the anger that erupted first. Since they were done talking, he asked for permission to train, and it was an excellent chance for the sword saint to find out what he was hiding. He was particular about one thing. He was not in the right mind as he stared at a smartphone screen for hours. He wondered if he was meditating, but he instructed that it strengthens a person's heart and mind. He asked what was wrong with him since he was not interested in his teaching, and he suggested teaching him. He responded immediately since it hurt his pride, he said to teach him, but he was interested and decided to instruct him. However, the protagonist needed to be more interested in his teaching, which interrupted his progress. Later, Seo Yoon arrived at the academy and was shocked to see her grandfather there, and she wondered why he came back again. She warned him not to bully him again, but he whispered that he was weird and not in his right mind and was strange. But she smiled and replied that it was weird as that was what he usually did, and she got used to it. She went to him, asked for his health, and talked with him smilingly. Her grandfather didn't like him and wondered if their conversation was that entertaining. He was furious at him as he was targeting his granddaughter. Then his man arrived and informed him about the urgent call from the Order of Truth. He instructed him to tell them to come but was stunned to know Kalia personally requested this. He also asked to bring the person named Kim Seo Joon, and he was shocked to see that person was looking for him. He became suspicious of him, wondering if he was part of their organization, but he did not know about them. She remembered seeing the suspicious person at the tournament and asked if he might be the reason behind this. He wondered if it was essential for him to go, and they were shocked as there were several apostles, and among them, Kahila was the successor, and she never asked for someone personally. That didn't matter to him, and Councilman Seo remarked that Kalia knew he would reject her request. So she asked him to deliver the message that he would get 100k dollars just by coming, and he wondered how he knew that he needed that money. The Order of Truth believes in a religious order that serves the fact to God, and the person wrapped in the mysterious veil and seven apostles are the centers of collaboration. A century ago, the Order of Truth was created during the Cataclysm, but by combining their strength with countless heroes, they played a massive part in peace. In that, the most decisive part was the subjugation of the giant monster Berserk. When the end of the cataclysm appeared, a demon appeared, and the heroes of the world couldn't defeat it. In that situation, the only people who could subjugate it were the Grand Voice and the Seven Apostles. In the present moment, at a particular hotel in Seoul, the man guided them to Kalai as he was waiting for them. He couldn't understand why he was watching him and what Sword Saint wanted to get from him and wondered if he knew about the Transcension Academy. He left them in the room to wait for Kalia, and he asked the Sword Saint if he had met her before but it was also his first meeting. While they were waiting for her, she arrived, and he wondered why she was late when she was the one who had called them. Kalia greeted them and introduced herself as a believer in the order of truth who spread the words of God. He asked how she knew him, and she replied that one of their members saw him and praised him so much. But he knew that wouldn't be the true motive to invite him, and she told them that it was because of the dungeon recon, and she wanted them to accompany her. She thought Sword Saint would be aware of it since the report about the distortion of dungeons in Korea. The Sword Saint realized it was not just the dungeon raid as she wanted to solidify her position as successor. She agreed with him as that was also the reason, and he remarked that she was shameless, stating too openly. She wanted the Sword Saint for a favor, but he did not need anything, so she dragged her granddaughter into it. It made him furious and his killer, and it was so strong that the protagonist's whole body felt numb. He told her not to drag his granddaughter into this, and she apologized because she didn't have anything to offer him. She decided to listen to him or request. 
He doesn't believe her promise as she could deny it later, but she is ready to swear on the name of the Order of Truth. So he agreed, and in the ritual of the Vow of Truth, they made the promise that would be unbearable for her. She wanted to sponsor the protagonist in the academy, which he would be studying in any way. Although he didn't demand it at the moment, he was sure she would demand something later. He wanted to ask her one question, but he wasn't sure if she would truthfully answer him. Then he had the perfect solution for this, and he showed his phone screen to her and asked if she could see anything. He was showing her the lecture of the Siddhartha Gautama, and she couldn't understand what he meant. He assumed she didn't want to answer, but she replied that she saw the black screen. After answering, she asked if he should accept her offer, and he denied receiving her scholarship. Later, she was a bit confused, although he didn't have anything special, just a cadet. Something seemed weird, and she asked the member if he was sure about it. He swore in the name of the Order of the Truth and wondered if they should watch him further. But she told him to stop watching him as their priority was the dungeon distortion. The Sword Saint asked him why he refused the offer, and it was because it was not according to his taste. So he wondered if his granddaughter's academy was according to his taste since he worked there. He agreed since she was honest and wondered what the meaning of the distortion in a dungeon is. He explained it as the phenomenon where the difficulty level is increased, leading to early dungeon opening. But these don't occur these days, so he assumes that Kalia might need to be understood. After they reached the academy, he turned and wondered why he wasn't going to her granddaughter's academy, but he had some matters to deal with. He warned him not to mess with his granddaughter as he would watch him. He asked if he was avoiding that because of his behavior, which made him furious. He rushed away because he knew he would hit him because he always tried to suppress others with his strength. He wanted to become strong enough to face him soon, and he entered the room where she was waiting for him. She asked about her grandfather and apologized to him since he liked to meddle more. He knows that he might be meddlesome, but he is a nice person, and if he ever gets furious, he would tolerate his few hits. She was so pleased to know it and thanked him and offered him the money as he rambled about it. He also remembered it since he used all of the money from Kalia to pay his debt. She looked deeper into it and found a 24th dungeon sweep contest for him. The contest prize was 300k for sweeping the dungeon that needed to be cleaned up since the hunters only followed the benefits. The neglected dungeons all have low-ranked monsters, and as time passes, these dungeons break and spill out monsters. Even if they are low-level monsters, they are still harmful to the ordinary citizens. The government and hunters were responsible in the past, so they cared for them. But wasting the time of extravagant pro-hunters in these places could be more efficient, so the government invented a new method. She was confident that he could easily win the competition and didn't have any solid reason not to participate. He agreed to join as he could increase his lecture progress with this and earn the money required for the lectures. He wants to think of the contest slowly as he needs to know what variables could be in this contest, just like the previous one. Kim Seo Joon wished to win the tournament, so he asked for its criteria for scoring. She explained that it would last a week, and when it began, the government would send out the list of dungeon destinations to the participants. The participant could get a reservation, had to clean the dungeon 10 hours after it, and couldn't make two reservations simultaneously. So, the evaluation depends on the speed and the numbers of the dungeon sweep. He thought it would be wrong as he couldn't handle the corpse well at that time, and she was stunned to know that. Since he had to win, his top priority would be to sweep more dungeons, and he wondered what the rules and regulations of the contest were. A few days later, he looked at his lecture progress on the contest day, which considerably shot up. Ms. Seo asked him if he had installed the app, and he assured her that he had prepared everything. She wondered why the helper he called hadn't arrived and if he had lost his way, but he was terrific in finding his way. Mr. Manchel arrived and waved at him. He wondered if he was trying to announce something to the neighbor and asked him what he had to do for him. A few days ago, the protagonist called him and asked if he wanted to work with him. He needed his help in the contest to take care of the corpse and drive. While he would move the corpses, he just needed to dismantle them since he needed the dismantling skill. He would surely need him. The dungeon sweep contest started, and they rushed toward the truck since they were short of time. Since he knew the rules, he explained that their speed was crucial to winning, and he was sure he would quickly get rid of the monster. He showed him the list of the dungeon locations and wanted him to plan which one should be attacked first to save their time. They went toward their first location, and Supervisor Go Sujin was yawning. She was surprised by the protagonist's dungeon. From the academy's perspective, she estimated that he might take an hour. She saw Manchel, and at first, she thought he would bring him for cheating, but that was not the case as he stayed outside. Soon, the protagonist peeked out of the gate and told him to be ready, which startled her as that violated the rule if any other interfered during the raid. He knew that, 
But he already finished the raid, and she couldn't believe it, so she entered the dungeon. She was stunned as what he said was true even though it took him 10 minutes to sweep the dungeon. He carried the corpse out of the dungeon, and she was stunned and thought he was weird. She brings the corpse to Manchel, who starts dismantling it, and the supervisor can't believe it. After they were done, they left for their following location in the vicinity, and she was speechless. Meanwhile, at the other dungeon, the supervisor enjoyed his time outside his office with the beautiful butterfly. He wondered when the participant who reserved the dungeon would arrive and then reach there. He entered the dungeon, immediately got rid of the monster, and left the corpses for his companion. Soon, they were done and left for the other dungeon, and the supervisor was dumbfounded. Later, the dungeon management team under the Ministry of Public Administration and Security organized the contest list. The man looked at the list and saw Lee Su Yeon's profile, who swept 16 dungeons. He thought she might be at the top, but when he saw the result, she was in the first place he was shocked and wondered if someone had raided 17 dungeons. He was shocked as the protagonist cleaned 32 dungeons, and he asked the analyst if the list was correct because it was impossible to do it in one day. The man also doubted it, so he checked the location, and the report was right he further learned that he had raided the dungeon in 10 minutes. He can't believe it and wonders if he cheated, but the man also checked for it, but he didn't violate the rules. While Lee Soo Yeon of the Fast Academy lost first place, she apologized to Headmaster Lee Suckman. He couldn't believe that someone could raid the dungeon in that short time and thought he might have got someone's help. He told her to leave as he would take care of everything, and she realized that he might be trying to bend the rules. He asked her if she also thought it unfair, but in the world, to survive, one has to chase the law according to one's benefits, and he doesn't want her to be stupid like Jinsu. She remembered her brother, who wanted to become a hunter who could move people's hearts. But she disagrees with him since modern people don't think that way, they do it to earn money. She found her brother embarrassing, and her dead brother started appearing in front of her, which pissed her off. Meanwhile, Manchul, every point of the body, was sore and he still had to do it another week. The protagonist can't believe he could also act as a child, but he brainstormed to navigate and drive. But the money they earned with that was more than enough to make them happy, and he wanted to distribute half to each. But he disagreed with that since Kim Seo Joon did the most work, so Manchul wanted to get 30%. The protagonist wondered why he wasn't surprised by his raid at the dungeon. He replied that he already saw him fighting in the academy contest and didn't inform him because he didn't want to pressure him. On the second day of the dungeon sweep contest, the supervisor realizes they are the rumored dungeon dismantler, but they can't get it. So he explained that it was famous that they swept the dungeon and dismantled the corpse. Soon, the second day ended, and he raided 41 dungeons. He would surely be in the first position if they kept doing with this speed. On the third day of the dungeon raid, they were stunned to see that all the dungeons were booked nearby. All of the dungeons near his location except one that was one hour apart were reserved, and they wondered if that was a coincidence or if they were interfering with them. The next and the dungeon after that were also reserved, so he raided ten dungeons. It was weird, and they thought it would all be because of Lee Soyan, who was in second place. Even though they could get the data from the app, proving anything would take much work. Although he was leading now, he might lose the competition if this continued, so he had to push back his dismantling work. He agreed his winning was more important, but he could only do something about the distance if they kept doing this Kim Seo Joon had an idea for that. Meanwhile, a few youngsters gathered at some random place, and the man instructed them to reserve all the dungeons around Kim Seo Joon. They knew what to do but wondered how he could raid the dungeons so quickly. Since he made the reservation, the man instructed them to reserve and guided them to secure it during the 10 minutes he raided so it wouldn't get suspicious. But they were shocked and wondered what they should do because the dungeon where he made a reservation was close to the dungeon of Lee Soyan. He took their phone and wondered if they could cancel the reservation after she was done with her raid. But it couldn't be cancelled for 10 hours after the reservation was made. Meanwhile, she was done at her dungeon raid within 15 minutes and moved to the following location. The driver informed her that all the reservations around her had been made, so she knew where they should go. She realized it was because Kim Seo Joon was stuck next to her, and all of the dungeons near him were reserved. She was also forced to take a hit. Later, she told her father everything, but he didn't think he would respond that way. She assured him to keep doing what he had done since she had another idea to manage it. In the dungeon sweep contest on day 5, he met her as he reserved the dungeon near her and suggested she should play fair and square. She smirked as there was nothing as a good intention as humans were born selfish and only move based on benefits. She entered the dungeon and finished quickly, 
but when she came out, she was stunned to see them working on the corpse. He asked her for permission to use her monster's corpse if she didn't want them, and he took out them and started dismantling them. She wondered why he was doing this. Hearing his reply that he was doing it for money, she realized she had wasted her time. As she expected, there was nothing like a good intention, and everyone became the pro hunter just as a job. Meanwhile, Sword Saint was with Collier raiding the dungeon, but he was surprised as he was informed it was the six-star dungeon, but there was a ten-star monster. She thought it might be because of the distortion, but he felt it was their scheme. But she vowed in the name of truth, so she wanted him not to believe her. But still, he didn't believe her. Young Jimin, the magic saint's apprentice, can't believe they were fighting right before her. She couldn't feel the abnormal flow of magic power, but it is difficult to say if it was because of the distortion. Although she can't sense any distortion, they need to reinvestigate all the low-level dungeons for distortion. Meanwhile, somewhere, the two people were shocked as, for the first time, after long, three dungeon gates were seen attached, which was peculiar. The next day of the raid, they had already taken all the dungeons wherever they went, and acted like they had done it by mistake. Since their old method failed, they started hindering them with the new process. Park Seo Yoon can't bear it further, so she used her grandfather's name. It worked as the point would be given to the person who reserved the dungeon in case of the wrong raid. The next day, the traffic blocked their way, so Lee Soo-yeon took the lead by cheating. All of them in management deny the fact and stall until the competition ends. After further investigation, Park Seo Yoon learned that Lee soo yin was affiliated with Hunter Academy, whose headmaster is Lee Suckman. The man was acquainted with her grandfather and had many connections, but they could do something if her grandfather could step up. But it was not the right way to deal with it, and she could not reach her grandfather. She apologized to him since she couldn't be of much help, but he didn't think the same way as she helped them a lot. Manchel couldn't see her worried, so he remarked that it was all up to him as he knew the protagonist was scheming something. Later, Lee Suckman was furious as they overtook them as they thought he would make a reservation before they could delay their arrival. But they were now reserving just five minutes earlier, so he suggested to boo the overseer about their location. But they can only do a little as the dungeon management watches them due to pressure, and he wonders what academy he belongs to. His man informed him that a sword saint's grandfather ran the academy so that they couldn't find a way, but he still wanted to win the first position. They continuously overtook the first position by sweeping more dungeons, but in the end, they were tied. While in the meeting room, they discussed the joint first place agenda. They fought as she claimed they cheated, but he did not admit it, and the contest leader calmed them down and gave the suggestion. Later, both participants arrived at the stadium, where a team member of dungeon management, Shin Yung Siok, was waiting for them, and he explained the rules of the final match to them. The rules were simple, they had to choose one dungeon from the three dungeons in front of them. Whoever finishes the first and raids the remaining dungeon will be first, and he wondered if there was any reason to clean the remaining dungeon. They were searching for the two dungeons but instead found three, and a person needed to be inside to clean two dungeons. All of them were two-star dungeons, so they chose their dungeon. Before entering, she told him not to be too upset, and they entered it. He wondered what she meant by this but ignored it and couldn't find any monster. He felt weird since it had been five minutes, but he couldn't find any monster, and then he heard the roar that crept him. A four-star monster, a manticore, appeared before him and attacked him, and he realized it was a mismeasured dungeon. He killed the monster and immediately rushed out, worried she might have raided her dungeon. He came out hurriedly and informed the supervisor of a four-star monster side dungeon. But he doesn't think it would be fitting to cancel the match because of the manticore, as the other participant was still inside the dungeon. She was inside the dungeon for a while but couldn't see anything while the monster was behind her. She remembered her past when she was applying ointment on her brother's face, and she couldn't understand why he consistently disobeyed their father's order. He doesn't want to win by cheating, but she gets furious at him because people think of him as shabby and jerk. She thought it wouldn't be wrong to cheat these days because people who are too lovely only lose out. She told him to open his eyes as there are no prestigious and righteous heroes today, only hunters. But he disagrees that few politicians and people are corrupt, not everyone is corrupt. She was sure that someday he would find someone who didn't consider a relationship or any other reason of his own, and he died. Lee Sukum can't believe that his son died while protecting someone who's a stranger to him, but she was different from her brother and would never live the same way. In the present moment, he couldn't believe she hadn't come out of the dungeon as it had already been extended. The team leader remarked that he had already won but could talk it higher if he wanted a rematch. Now, he just had to clean the remaining dungeon, but something was off as he thought the mismeasured dungeon was Lee Soyin's scheme. Meanwhile, assistant manager Kim was worried as the device showed the four-star dungeon. 
the protagonist remembered the distortion in the dungeon that he heard from Kalia, and Saint Sword explained it. They decided to call some pro hunter to investigate and tell the participants about the issue, but he had already left. Meanwhile, Lee Soyan's arms were amputated in the dungeon by six-star monster Nerkura's attack. She remembered her brother talking about poetic justice as that was not true, and the monster was attacking her. That kind of justice was possible in a fairy tale, but she was glad as she would die slightly less stupidly than her brother. She was shocked as the protagonist appeared before her and stopped the monster. The protagonist instructed her to run away, although it would be tough for her to move as he would try to buy some time. As he expected of the six-star monster, it reflected his attacks, and he gathered the monster's attention. He was aware that if he got stuck by its attack, it would be critical, but since he got used to its moment, he tried to deflect the attack as he baited himself in another direction. He got attacked by the monster and threw it away, but she wondered why he wasn't running away as he could have already won the match and earned the money that he wanted. He agreed with her because he needed the money and couldn't forgive what she had done to him. She remembered her brother's words and was confident she would meet her hero one day. The protagonist remarked that despite all her wrongdoings, this doesn't mean he should let her die because a person's life is a better price than money. The monster rushed to attack him, and he was worried when his instructor's words resonated in his mind. Intuition was in the domain of thought, but most cadets seem unable to understand this phrase based on judgment. So, a person should bring his ideas and intuition together before deciding and attacking. His eyes sparkled, and he agreed as if that was true, and with his instinct, he could see each move of the monster. He managed to dodge the attack and buy some time, but if it continued, he could barely hold on until Pro Hunter arrived. Although the team leader would have called for reinforcement, he wondered how long she could endure. He had no time to waste and had to defeat the monster, and with the power to uproot mountain spirit that could overturn the world, he attacked the monster. But that skill alone was insufficient to subjugate the monster, so he added the aura and attacked the beast with the power of uprooting mountains and spearmanship. She was shocked as he killed the beast, and it didn't make sense for a cadet to defeat it. His duel with the beast and his success increased his lecture progress. Later, he took her out of the dungeon and wondered if she was alive as he didn't want to waste his effort fighting. He requested her to tell him that she was not dead, and she replied that she was alive, which relieved him. They came out of the dungeon alive, and the team manager called for the medical facilities. She told him she would never think of him as her savior and didn't think she had done anything wrong. This doesn't matter to him as he didn't expect anything from her while saving her life. As the news of what happened during the dungeon sweep competition spread worldwide, chaos occurred. Six-star monsters appeared in two-star dungeons, and although mismeasured dungeons were non-existent, there had never been such a case. The people and government focused on it, and it naturally followed Kim Seo Joon. They had never heard that name, but he defeated Nekura, which astonished everyone, so they learned about their dream academy. Meanwhile, the Apostle of Temperance was looking for Kalia, and they thought it was because of the distortion of the dungeon. On the other hand, the protagonist decides to shop at the Transcend Shop. Now that he had 400k, he could easily buy the Lance of Logmas, but he wondered if, after the past end, its price would be more accessible by considering the casualties. So, saving money would increase the cost, and he decided to buy another equipment. He looked for the other item and wondered which item he should buy, but the surprise bothered him. There was a high chance the prices would rise each time he tried to purchase an item in the free pass, and causality calculation was triggered. The second problem was that it needed to describe the equipment, so he had to guess its effects based on the mythology the items originated from. He didn't even know a few things and couldn't even read all the mythology for this. He wondered if there was an item review community board, and he saw the item review group. But he needed an ID, so he couldn't comment there. He opened the review post of a person who bought a hundred items. The first item he described was the Aegis Shield. It protects the attack, and the Medusa made on it can turn the person who looked at it into stone. Even the user could turn it into stone. The other item, Kibises, was a subspace pouch that reduced the weight, image memorization, and time stop magic all could apply. The protagonist realizes it might be the item from the Greco-Roman mythology that belongs to the goddess Hera. It was the pouch that hero Perseus used to put Medusa's head in after hunting her down. He checked its price, which turned out to be 100k, and purchased it to help him handle the corpse while doing squats. Three days later, he was discharged from the hospital and looked at his items, which weren't wrong. But his bank account has just thus left since the price of Kibiais suddenly went up due to causality's measures. Park Seo Yoon arrived and asked why he was raiding the dungeon, and he was immediately discharged from the hospital. 
he was okay but needed money, so he decided to raid immediately. She wondered why he was worried about the money as he already had 400k prize money in his account. She was surprised to know that he had used all of his money, and she saw the new weapon in his hand and realized he might have purchased it. Later, they entered the four-star dungeons and saw Gargoyle among the four-star monsters. Their defense was near the top. He rushed to attack them with his Lance of Longinus without using the aura and power of the Uproot Mountain to test it. He splits the body of the monster and kills it, and they both can't understand what's happening. She decided not to be surprised by all the weird circumstances involving him as she looked at him, chopping down the gargoyle. After he was done, he started putting the corpses in the pouch, and she was shocked as it was a pouch of fist size. Curious, she asked him if the prize money was $400 million as he had managed to buy those precious items. She wondered where he bought those items, and he informed her that it was a transcendent shop near his valley. Her eyes sparkled as she also wanted to purchase the items from that shop but he told her that the owner already closed down the shop when he last bought it. He sensed a dangerous energy in the dungeon, and she stepped forward, but he stopped her as he wanted to check something. He wondered what its strength would be if he used the aura, power of the uproot mountain, and momentum of the momentum to overturn the world. His single blow pierced the monsters, and she was shocked, but what was more shocking was his attack. After using all his skill with Aura, creating a massive pathway toward the monsters. The spear that pierced the crucified Jesus, the Holy Lance, was the Lance of Velogenus because it was the copy he thought there would be a bit of a decrease in power. His equipment was incredible, and he wanted to buy more, but the casualties increased after reviewing the views. Furthermore, he had five days remaining for the free pass, so he had to cram for the lecture. While he was exercising, she told him that Sister Jimin wanted to meet him, and he wondered who she was. She makes the introduction easy for him and informs him that she is the apprentice of the Magic Saints, geniuses, as their strength surpasses that of the Magic Saints. He wondered why she wanted to meet her, so she explained that she wanted to ask him a few questions regarding the distortion. Since he agreed to meet her, she texted her to set the time and date of the meeting but was dumbfounded as she arrived there. Since she got an okay from him, she wanted to meet him immediately and asked where he was. She was shocked to see he was a high schooler and wondered where he got that. But he didn't know what she was talking about and wondered why she was talking informally. She grabbed her to stop as she was shouting at him and quarantined her. She apologized to him on her behalf and introduced herself as Jimin. But according to the protagonist's knowledge, she might be in her 40s but looked young. She explained it was because she could alter her appearance according to what she thought while maintaining her youthful appearance. After explaining everything, she asked him where he got that subspace pouch and wondered if it was possible to make something like that, as it was incredible. She rambled about the incredibility of the pouch as it held four circuits that she could sense, but she couldn't even identify one of them. She wanted to buy that pouch even if it was worth her 50 or 100 million dollars, and he was shocked. He wondered if she had that much money, but she assured him she would give him the amount after getting a sponsor. He remembered that one of the subspace pouches was sold for $30 million, so the price she was offering might be less. Although that money would be enough for him to enroll in the lectures, he was afraid as he couldn't sell it. They wondered why he couldn't sell that, so he handed the pouch to her, but she got electrocuted and dropped the pouch. She gets more excited as it has five circuits last one is soul bound, and she asks where he bought this pouch and he explains everything to her. Ultimately, she decides to research it since it is soul-bound and can't conduct anything directly, so she decides to test it. She was willing to pay him, so he wondered how the causality would interpret this, and he agreed to help her research. Later, she asked him about the details of the distortion and how he managed to defeat Nakura. She was speechless to hear that he caught the six-star monster just by luck, as if he could not use the man he could not even defeat. He remembered how he used his mana and aura to defeat the monster, all due to the distortion of one's will. He was shocked and asked if it could be possible that the dungeon distortion could be one, as well as if someone was artificially trying to distort the dungeon. He relates all this to his lecture on Merlin, and she is shocked, wondering if he is also a magic scholar. She asked if he was the one who invented the subspace pouch that left him speechless, and he asked what she was spouting. She wondered how he suddenly had that idea and she asked multiple questions about Mana and Aura, and he correctly answered them. He realized that Transcension Academy lectures are really for the transcended people, so they exceed according to a person's interpretation. He thought that if he could teach his knowledge to others, that would be his idea and wouldn't be prohibited. In this way, he could earn money, but he needed to understand the lectures and make his interpretation. When Park Seo Yoon arrived, Young Jimin was already questioning 
and she left and was excited to research it more. Later, he was worried since his lecture progress could have been faster even though he could finish his daily tasks more quickly due to kibbises. The remaining time was insufficient to advance the lecture progress significantly, so he either needed to earn money or quickly finish the lecture before the free pass ended. He went to Seo Yoon's room while she was wondering about hiring some teachers after the students joined, but she couldn't let any random person join. She was so indulged in her thoughts that she couldn't hear him, so he had to call her closely. He asked her about any tournament that would be held in the next 20 days, but there was no such event or tournament except for the mock exam. There was precisely one pro hunter exam each year, so if the cadet failed, he had to wait another year. The mock exam is held to make the cadet prepare ahead of time for it. There are three famous academies, Hunter Mills, Ale, and Gaon. There are rumors that the scores they get in the mock exams are the same as the actual pro hunter exams, and the prize for the scholarship is also gracious. Later, he listened to his lecture on Chiron, and during his lecture, he told him about the upcoming mock exam. The protagonist didn't know there were mock exams at Transcension Academy, and he received the notification. He was amazed that Transcendian Academy had its license and specific guidelines for acceptance, and someone was judging his performance, too. He thought he would not need to take the mock exam and use that time to increase his progress. He clicked on his other lecture, but the other instructor also talked about the mock exams, and he received its mock exam notification. He supposed Siddhartha Gautam and Merlin videos wouldn't emphasize the mock exam, but they also mentioned the mock exams. He wondered if the exam was that important, so he checked it in the community group. Some were confused about the mock exams, like him, while others suggested taking the exam to increase the lecture progress. The next day, he clicked on the mock test, which was free for the first time. He clicked yes, and then his exam started, which was about seven subjects. His first subject was diminished, and he wondered what kind of monster would appear for it. Suddenly, something popped out of the phone. He was shocked as it grew and grew, a giant dragon. He had to defeat the Fafnir Dragon of Ruin within 30 minutes, and he thought it was impossible until they went insane and the dragon attacked him. He failed his first attempt and did not believe how he could defeat the Dragon of Ruin and wondered if the Transcended Academy people were gods. Although he fought vigorously, nothing outside was destroyed, only he was injured. He received the notification asking if he wanted to try again as he had 10 more chances. Even though he thought nothing would change, he wanted to see who would win. Even after five more, he failed, became sure he couldn't win, and was massacred. He gives up as he can't beat that giant dragon. Even the dream of becoming the pro hunter is a long shot. How could he hope to become transcended? He wondered how to increase his progress now, and then his phone rang as he received the notification. The academy asked if he was interested in listening to an explanatory lecture, but he had to face the penalty. He clicked on it, and three explanations of lectures appeared. One of the lectures was Heaven Great SG Sun Wukong. He registered for his lecture, and his lectures started. They explained that it was over when he avoided the dragon's breath. He showed it with a physical example that he would doge a dragon's breath because, after the first attack, it takes some time for him to recover. During that time, it became just a lizard so he could quickly attack the dragon. The protagonist can't believe it and wonders if that was an explanation lecture meant in the Transcension Academy. He took another lecture, which was face to face, and he wondered how he was supposed to do that. He used his free pass for the mock exam and wanted to use it wisely. The last explanation lecture was left, which was of Siegfried, who was the world's first dragon slayer. He registered for his lecture and explained that dodging a dragon's breath was the easiest way to succeed. Because he was listening to his lecture, it was difficult for him, so he analyzed some specialties and keys in two attack methods. The first method is that dragon fire at the place he was summoned, so if the cadet immediately dashes as soon as the summon finishes, the breath will aim for the spot he was initially called. The second method was for the cadets who found it challenging to find some shiny gold. So the protagonist got a shiny gold and continued his lecture, and the instructor said that he should toss the gold in front of the dragon the moment he was summoned. The dragon would not attack him since he liked the gold, and in fear, it would evaporate from his breath. After his lecture ended, he tried again, the Fafnir appeared, and the moment he opened his mouth, he threw the gold at him. After seeing the gold, the dragon stopped and succeeded in stopping his breath of fire. Soon, the dragon realized it was the gold-plated bar, and he got furious and attacked him. He failed again, and they asked if he wanted to try again, but he didn't know how to defeat it, but his lecture progress increased so he wondered if he should make the gold shield. In his next attempt, the protagonist tried to doge his breath of fire, but dodging it alone was so complicated that he didn't have the time to attack. 
so he was left with no choice, and he got the god out of his pouch and threw it toward him. The dragon again gets enraged after knowing it is gold-plated, so he throws many of the plated bars toward him, and the dragon is mesmerized to see them. It was the time that he had to attack the world, so he attacked it with the power to uproot mountains and momentum to overturn the world. He thought he did it as his attack worked, but he got chills down his spine as the dragon stared at him and failed again. He was still content since his lecture progress had increased. He assumed that if he continued with this pace, he could complete two lectures before the free pass ended, and he decided to try again and increase his lecture progress. Later, Park Dio Yoon asked him if he had not been raiding lately, and he said yes, as he was busy. He knew she would find him weird as he was staring at his phone all day yet saying he was busy. His evaluation of his first question came out, and he failed, but the problem was just his lecture progress. Since all the questions have a break time of three days during this time, he could listen to more lectures and understand them. The second subject was Endurance, whose first question was released, and he had the Dragon Pearl in his hand without knowing there was a monster behind him. He was instructed to flee from Imugi Steely while holding the Pearl, and Imugi shouldn't hurt him. He was surprised to look at the monster behind him, and he failed the question and had three attempts left. His lecture progress increased after this subject, too. The third subject was Reaction Speed, in which he had to defeat or survive the Sphinx while his five senses were blocked and he wondered if it wanted the answer. The fourth subject was Mana. He had to hold the hunger of the Bulgasari for the test duration. He was trying to hold back his hunger by using Mana, but in the end, he was exhausted, so he ran away. But his lecture progress on Chiron and Xiang Yu increased. The fifth subject was Mental Strength, so he had to listen to the Siren's song for 30 minutes. Her song was lovely to hear due to Siddhartha Gautama's lectures, and he passed this subject first level. It was the first time he had passed level one, and he wondered if he would breeze through level 15. For level 2, he had to attend Helheim's Requiem for 30 minutes, but he couldn't bear it as his ears started bleeding. Later, he saw his score, in which just two last subjects remained, which were chosen as subjects 1 and 2. He wondered what these subjects were and assumed he would select the subjects on the day of the exams. Three days have passed, but he still needs to receive a message about the exam, and he has just five days left till his free pass ends. He wanted to complete his two lectures before that and wondered if he had to raid the dungeon. He was leaving for the raid when more came out of his phone, and he was surprised by his sudden appearance from the phone. He wondered why he didn't appear for so long, and the mentor sat awkwardly on the phone. He thought the protagonist would be alright even if he weren't around, so he didn't appear. But that was not the actual reason, and the truth was, while checking his profile, he realized that his level was awful. He wanted him to reach a certain level after completing the two lectures he recommended. Then, the mentor would appear. The protagonist can't get enraged at him since he also thinks his skills are not great. He apologized to him for not informing him and asked if he took the lectures he recommended. And he affirmed. He saw his progress and was shocked, wondering if there was some error since it showed he was taking four lectures, and the progress was also high. The protagonist uttered that he was taking four lectures, and all of the information there was correct. He worked hard for it, and his effort worked, and his mock exams also helped him increase his progress. The mentor thought he was already doing great without his help and was leaving. The protagonist asked him about the two undecided subjects that appeared on his mock exams, and he also didn't have any ID. The mentor remarked that it never happened as they added the ID while registering the cadet, and he was stunned as that never happened, so he decided to bring it up to the principal. He was leaving to inform and solve the matter and promised to return before his free pass ended. Before leaving, he solved his problem about the mock subject, after which he could choose his subject, which was about primary weapon proficiency and skill. He completed the lecture of Xiang Yu, so he ultimately obtained the skill of power to uproot mountains. He can't believe this and tries the skill which naturally flows with the attack. The notification appeared asking him if he wanted to enroll in the epilogue for PTUM. His lecture started, and the instructor didn't want any cadet to be arrogant as it was just an essential skill. It was the beginning of their transcending path. The instructor wanted them to choose the right way, and be resolute about their direction, and his lecture was adjourned. Later, he reached the academy where Park Seo Yoon told him about the application submission starting next week. He agreed, so she sent his application and informed him that his exam would be held in 10 days. He wondered if the enrollment of new cadets was going right but she was worried about her grandfather's reaction after listening to them. Even if she handled her grandfather, her biggest worry was considering which lecturer to invite. She needed a lecturer for different subjects, but it cost a lot, 
which could be a million for the lecture. He was mesmerized after learning the earnings of the lecturer and told her to ask for his help if needed. Three days later, his mock exam results came out, and he was pleased as he had at least completed one lecture. The mentor appeared again, but he wasn't surprised this time and was shocked as he learned that he met one of his lectures. Kim Seo Joon wondered what had happened to the problem before he left, and the mentor informed him that a big issue had occurred. After the mentor checked at the academy, he came to know that no member named Kim Seo Joon had registered at their academy. Even though the principal wasn't aware of this matter since the casualties didn't change, there was a chance of interference from someone. The protagonist wondered if he would get expelled from the academy now. The mentor clarified that would not happen as one of the members had always been an academy member, but he had to wait for his ID. The protagonist wanted to discuss the free pass expiration with him and what he should do now. He explained the curriculum of the Transition Academy to him, which is divided into four levels, and he was at the entry level. He suggested purchasing a new free pass after the current pass ends, and he had to attend individual lectures now. He selected two lectures for him, and the causality calculated the registration fees, which were in millions. He had to earn a lot of money for that. Thus, he also needed to gather casualties, which was the cause of their academy. The cadet is looking for a basis to register, in simpler terms, they call it justification. He wondered what they got in return, but they helped the cadet without getting anything. The protagonist wondered why that was, but the mentor could help him with his current basis that he needs to increase his justification. His mentor wanted to help and support him, and he asked if there were other cadets. He informed him that there are many cadets in their academy in different dimensions, but most are in the four dimensions. Korea's top three hunter academies are Ale, Hunter Mills, and Gaon, each with different specializations they taught. If a person wants to learn magic, he should go to Ale to understand the use of weaponry, the best academy is Gaon, and if they have yet to learn, they should go to Hunter Mill. At present, the Hunter Mills were holding its mock pro hunter exam, and she led him the way. The winner of these mock exams could get a 1 million scholarship, and the price of a new free scholarship was 500k dollars. The prize he earned from the sweep competition needed more for the free pass. If he had to get some money, he should surely win the first prize and come first in the exams. While he was entering, he heard someone fighting as one of the cadets crossed the line. Out of curiosity, he looked there. Kim Ganekchol was sent to the Hunter Mills Academy, and everyone was stunned to see him and the other two academy people were as highly skilled as him. Most students thought Kim Ganekchol would win the first prize as the Order of Truth sponsored him. Most importantly, he was in the Hunter Mill Academy, so they would let their cadet win. The protagonist was stunned when he saw a cadet holding so many weapons arguing with the checker to let him in, but he was instructed to stay in line. He asked why the other cadet was sent inside, so the man informed him he was the cadet of Hunter Mills Academy. They dragged him back while he thought it was unfair, and the protagonist was staring at him when the man told him to follow him inside. Park Dosuk, a cadet of League 2 Academy, can join all three top academies, but he was attending the League 2 Academy just because of the money, as the fees for those academies surpass hundreds of thousands of dollars. People often told him to think of the head of a dragon instead of the tail. But he thinks differently because if he were the tail of the dragon, he could at least compete with other dragons. But with the head, they could only compete with snakes. He participates in the mock exams to play in the big league, primarily because of the protagonist. The mock exams have five pro hunter subjects, including essential endurance, mana proficiency, combat proficiency, dungeon rad, and combat proficiency. For endurance exams, they had to run 3 kilometers in 5 minutes, and if they succeeded, they needed to run another 3 kilometers. If they failed, the evaluation ended there. They both did 15 repetitions, and he had to acknowledge Kim Seo Joon's skills so he would stay energized. Park Dosuk gets exhausted but wants to run further to defeat him, and the evaluation is over. The protagonist takes another lap while he moves his hand to congratulate him, but he passes him and keeps running, and Dosuk wonders if he is the only one sincere there. While exercising, everyone was shocked to see him lifting a heavily weighted dumbbell quickly, even though the rod was bending. They wondered if he was really human, but that was all so easy for him because of his daily tasks. He was able to control his PTUM, after completing Zhang Zhu's lecture, and he wondered how insane its strength could be after he could take Heracles' lecture. The instructor praised him for his hard work and instructed that after the break, they would proceed to the next session. Kim Gangchul was also praised for his effort, and other cadets praised his skills. For those with high skills, this mock test was nothing, and their exam performance was to show fame and superiority. 
However, Kim Gang-chul was instructed by the truth of order to look at the performance of Kim seo joon He wondered who he was as they never once requested something but supported him whenever he needed help. A month ago, he heard his name in the dungeon distortion raid. But when he met him in the corridor, he seemed normal and useless. The result of essential endurance came out, and the protagonist was in the first position. He was in third place, which shocked him, and he tried to calm down as few cadets excelled at specific subjects. But in combat proficiency, he was again in the third position while Kim Seo Joon was at first, and he was shocked. The third subject was mana proficiency, and they will calculate their impact power when they strike the barrier generator. The protagonist needed to be more confident in mana, though he knew the basics from the Merlin lecture, and wondered if it would be alright. The exam started after a few participants. The next participant was Lee Down from Ale Academy. She struck the barrier with her mana, broke it, and was first in mana proficiency, and he was amazed by her skill. The next was Kim Seo Joon's turn. While he was going to the stage, she smirked as giving the signal his best would not work. Although he was not ready, he wanted to try his best, as he didn't need the power of PTUM, so he could draw out all of the mana using Merlin's skill. He rushed to the barrier and struck it, but they were shocked as he split it in half and got first in this exam, too. Afterward, because the mana barrier generator was destroyed, there was no choice but to pause the test. No one expected this, so they didn't prepare the spare, and after all of the twists and turns, the final result came. Everyone was shocked as the top three academies were pushed back, and they wondered who Kim Seo Joon was. Park Seo Yoon expected this much from him in his level. He did not need to attend the mock result as he was overwhelmingly ahead of everyone else. The protagonist wondered why this had to turn out like this and wondered if that was because of the extraordinary strength of the Holy Lance of Longinus. The protagonist needs to learn a description and details about this weapon. He needs to find out if it has an ability that lets it ignore the mana barrier. He wondered if he should buy another weapon and test its capabilities. While pondering, he saw the same guy from the hallway carrying multiple weapons singing. Lee Miniol rushed toward him and was glad to meet the superstar of this year's mock exams. The protagonist realizes he is in the second position, but Miniol finds it uncanny to be called second by him. The protagonist had a problem with him since he didn't approach him due to any grudge or anger, although his personality was weird. Later, he was in the dungeon and wondered if it was made with augmented reality. The fourth subject was the dungeon raid, whose main evaluation point was how quickly one finished the raid. They had to hunt all the ten Nakura, and if they lowered the difficulty by one or two stars, this was a crazy level of difficulty. He killed most of the monsters, and he could sense the difference from the real Nakura, but even if he considered it, he was still at a completely different level than in the past. Three months ago, he was nothing, just an average human, busy day to day, to be more exact. However, his life changed after becoming the Transcension Academy cadet and meeting Miss Seo Yoon. It is not like he wants to be prideful, but maybe even slightly, he could be proud. But the journey was long and arduous. He defeats all the Nakira monsters within a few minutes, leaves the dungeon, and gets first again. Everyone stared at him since he had a combined standard score of first place. Jin dong stared at him and wondered where he had popped up from nowhere. The protagonist knew he was confirmed first place winner except if he forfeited or was disqualified. Lee Miniol arrived and said he was so close this time to surpass him. The protagonist wondered why he had all these weapons and was stunned to know he was a self-taught cadet. These hunters have neither money nor talent and don't even attend hunter academies. However, occasionally, every once in a very long while, there are self-taught cadets born with unique skills. The protagonist remarked that he was at the level where every academy wanted to enroll him. He doesn't want to get entangled at one place and said that he had one master but he didn't know he was his disciple. While conversing, a staff member suddenly arrived and apologized for an unexpected problem. The exam evaluator for the combat proficiency could not arrive because of unforeseen circumstances. On their way, there was a dungeon break of 10 stars, so they couldn't ignore it and had to involve themselves. Everyone was worried as the exam was postponed indefinitely, and they had to wait. Kim gang thought this was the only order of truth, and if that continued, Kim seo Joon would be declared the winner. He suggested they change the testing method since the remaining subject was combat proficiency, so they couldn't use a tournament method. The staff member liked his method, but it would be more time-consuming, and the result might be affected. But they still thought waiting for the new evaluators to come and assess would be fitting. Gangchul suggested the event format where everyone had the choice of whether they wanted to participate or not. Because the mock exam was live-streamed, it would reflect poorly on everyone if they ended it early due to some accident. 
he wanted to defeat the protagonist in the battle. As a result, all his achievements would be tarnished even though he would win the mock. The cadet, if two other famous academies, agreed to him and he assumed they also caught his intention. Lee Miniol also liked the idea and wondered what the protagonist thought. Everyone's attention was directed toward him, and he remarked that since it was an additional test, they should add some extra prize for it. A surprise event match was revealed, and 15 participants registered each from the Hunter Academy of Hopefuls were participating. The first match winner was Gaon Academy cadet Jin Dongmin, and Lee Dooona LS won her match. Kim Gangchul also defeated his opponent, and all three wanted to conquer the protagonist and show him that a mage is different in a real fight. The protagonist was watching the duel and didn't expect they would give another million dollars as the prize. Even though he is the winner, he has to win the combat test, and then he will get two million dollars. After getting the free pass, he would have enough money to register for one of the lectures that his mentor recommended. The protagonist is not worried about three elite academy opponents but only about one opponent. Lee Miniel tossed away his sword, took out the bow, and attacked his opponent. His opponent rushed to attack him, but he removed his sword and blocked the attack. Unlike the other three, the protagonist knew that Lee Miniel was not restricted to one weapon. He was not just competing but brawling, the style from not having a hunter education, which was similar to the protagonist. The protagonist wonders if he is also the cadet of Transcension Academy, just like him. Lee Miniel won the match, and he thought there was a high chance he wouldn't be a cadet of that academy, but there was a reason to suspect this. The host remarked it was as expected from the second position holder as it was a unique and overwhelming match. The next match was between the Ale Academy Lee Doan and the Dream Academy cadet Kim Seo Joon. Lee Doan was a genius in the top five in her academy, the top three academy in Korea. She is a talent acknowledged by the Magic Scholar, following the footsteps of the Magic Saint and genius mage Yung Jimin. She thought she was only pushed down in the ranking because the Hunter Mills mock exams were disadvantageous to mages. She attacked the protagonist and was shocked as he quickly destroyed her mana flames, but that didn't make sense. The fact that he negated the magic like that means two things. Either he used overwhelming mana to suppress the laws that the mage implemented, or he used the dispel to destroy the rules that the mage implemented, which need the complete understanding of mana. He wanted to test his weapon, so he just swung the Lance of Longinus, and as a result, it cut her mana. She attacked him again using the mana arrows, but he swayed his spear in different directions and destroyed all the mana. He went to her, and she knelt as she couldn't win against him, and she overestimated herself. He asked her if he had won this, and she called him a monster, and he was declared the winner of the match. The next match was between Lee Miniol and Jin Dongmin, an intense and close exchange of blows. Lee Miniol threw him back, sharp knuckles came out of his sleeves, and he attacked him but dodged. He can't predict his attack, but there is a limit to how variable his fighting style should be, and Miniol punches him, and he wins. He started crying as if that was cheating and wondered why he could compete in this manner. The protagonist thought that even if Lee Miniol didn't change his tactics, he would still lose against him. Kim Gangchul realized the Order of Truth might not only keep their eyes on the protagonist but also Lee Miniol. The ultimate goal of the Order of Truth in this mock exam is to have both of them fight each other, and he assumes that Miniu is a person linked with the Order of Truth. The competition was in its final stages, and the next match was one of the most awaited matches, which was between Kim Gangchul and Kim Seo Joon. Nagchul realizes that the Order of Truth might want to make him a fool, but he doesn't want to let things go their way. He rushed to attack him, but the protagonist blocked his attack, and they were both thrown back. Ganchul realized that his weapon was extraordinary. Even if it was not filled with aura, it could still deflect his aura sword. He decided to be careful of his weapon while attacking him as that way he could defeat him. He was continuously striking his opponent to prevent him from making the move and could attack so quickly despite wielding the heavier sword. The protagonist remarked that he is different from all the cadets he has faced. He attacked the protagonist again and realized that it was not a bluff that he was in the top three at Hunter Mills Academy. Since it was the case, he decided to try fighting, and the aura poured out of his body. Kim Ganchul was surprised, and the protagonist attacked him, and he blocked his attack and threw him back. He was stunned by the sudden change of his aura as his previous aura had been like calm waves, but the aura he could feel now was like the fiery eruption of a volcano. Kim Ganchul, who had been pressing his attacks, was now being pushed back and retreating. Although it was the simple swing of his sword, compared to the sophisticated swordplay, they were solid and burdensome. The protagonist's blow was so powerful that it threw him back forcefully, and Gangchul knew that it was not like his attacks were heavy, but he was not using his aura spear from the start. 
he realized that he was being able to use the aura, which didn't make sense. He wondered how he had forgotten about the nightmare when he first saw Lee Hyun. He did not expect anything, but the overwhelming helplessness surpassed him. But he can't believe how someone as lowly as him could do it. He stood and wondered how they dared to look down on him as he was Kim Ganchul. He rushed to attack the protagonist and wanted to kill him. But the protagonist broke his sword, and he won the match and moved to the finals. All of the audience was shocked to see how skilled he was, as they had supposed he was just geared up. They wondered who would be his opponent in the final. But it was apparent that Lee Miniel would be at the finals as all the top cadets of the academy were eliminated. The final began, and everyone was excited and thrilled, none had anticipated this. As two supernovas like shooting stars surpass the Hunter Mill, Ale and Gaon Academy will appear, and soon begin their match. The protagonist said he was sad he didn't learn from anyone specific, but he still said he had a master. He affirmed, and Seo Joon asked him about his master, but he got furious and wondered why he was curious. The protagonist wanted to know if it might be possible that he knew his master, and he wondered if he should directly mention Trast Senshin Academy. If he wouldn't be a cadet of the academy, he could twist it by saying he misunderstood, but he was not his comrade. At that time, when he didn't know how he would react, it would not have been brilliant to show his hands first. The protagonist remarked that if what he guessed was correct, then his master might be one of Trascender. Lee Miniel was shocked and wondered how he knew about it, but it was the same thing that he wanted to ask him, but they shouldn't simply tell each other what they wanted to know. The protagonist suggested that the person who loses might answer the questions of the winner. Lee Miniel wondered what the guarantee was that they would answer it truthfully, but it was the thing they had to decide for themselves. The match began, but both were standing without attacking and glaring at each other. Lee Miniel attacked him first, and he currently had the sword in his hand, but according to his tactics, it was a simple sword. The protagonist decided to go with his full strength from the beginning, and he attacked Miniel and broke his sword into pieces. He was shocked and flipped back, so the protagonist rushed toward him and thought the match would have ended if Miniel's decision-making had been a bit slower. The protagonist was stunned as he saw many arrows above his head, but all of them were broken with his single swing. The protagonist was stunned as he saw many arrows above his head, but all of them were broken with his single swing. Lee Miniel was curious about the weapon he was using and wanted him to answer his questions about the weapon if he won. The protagonist agreed, but that all depended on if he won, and Miniel also assured him he would do his best to win. The protagonist can see any desperation from him to win, whether it's the occasional booing from the crowd or when his attacks are easily blocked, Miniel doesn't care. The protagonist asks him if he wants to win, but he replies that he indeed wants to win and wonders why he asked this. But the protagonist can't see any desperation in him, and Miniel wonders what he means because he wants to beat him the most. It was just that he was all right to lose, but he was trying his best to beat him. The protagonist was furious as what he considered trying his best was cheating in other people's eyes. But Miniel doesn't care what other people think about him because their insults wouldn't lower his worth. The protagonist was dumbfounded and took out the spear from his pouch. He hoped his opponent wouldn't think of his action as looking down on him. The protagonist remembered the lecture of Siddhartha Gautama, in which he emphasized the world's reality. The world in which humans currently live is where the strong prey on the weak, and survival of the fittest occurs. The law of nature emphasizes that those who are not strong will be eliminated, so they should always whip themselves, so they are not weeded out and fall behind as they need to improve daily from their older version. Listening to Lee Miniel's words, he remembered his lecture from a while back. Siddhartha Gautama asked if they had ever transcended their thought and looked at the world from even a slightly different perspective. This was an anecdote from when Siddhartha Gautam trained in the accurately called Earth. It was when Shaka Muni had the name of Siddhartha Gautama as a human on Earth, and was a story before he enlightened as Buddha and was training. One day, he encountered the children racing, and for some reason, they kept repeating their race several times. The same child would come in the last place every time, but the smile would not leave his face. Shaka Muni became curious about this and approached the child and asked why he was running. It was because he enjoyed running, so he wondered if he didn't get tired as he kept running. He got tired but could always walk for a bit, and Siddhartha asked if other children would catch him. The child replied that his finish lines and another child's finish lines were all different so they couldn't catch up to him. He pointed toward the finish line that he saw and asked what that line was. But it was the finish line that other people decided on. But to him, it was just a checkpoint. The child got the last place, but in the future, in the most significant race held by this Tathata's country, he won the most fantastic record ever recorded. At that time, he believed that life was about raising the tower with all the effort, and as they put in effort piece by piece, 
He thought it was the life they had made just by themselves. So he went on more intense training to raise a perfect tower after calmly digesting the child's words. He suddenly thought there was no need for this power to be raised with all his effort. Because it was all right for the tower to collapse, he wondered why he could never think of that as well. It was the enlightenment the small child instilled in himself, but their society is a society of conflict. Every day, if a person does not improve, he will weed it out, and if he falls behind, he will disappear. Survival of the fittest, the strong prey on the weak, that was why Kim Seo Joon always worked hard each day. Looking at the image of himself improving, he thought he was not falling behind. However, as this continued, he started to fret about it a lot more and found himself obsessing more about the Transcension Academy. He was swept away by the pressure of needing to work even harder in order not to be weeded out and fall behind, in order not to be overtaken by others and to survive all this competition. Lee Miniel's words seemed to resemble the child's as other finish lines were his checkpoint. He was finally starting to understand Siddhartha Gautama's lecture from the past, and he wondered why he never thought of things from that perspective. So he decided to combat with his ordinary spear, and Lee Miniel wondered why he put away the spear he usually used. Kim Seo Joon hoped he wouldn't think negatively of his action, but Miniel got flustered as he didn't think that way. But he wondered why he changed his spear because, with the previous one, he would win the match. He was also aware that with Lance of Longinus, he would clap him very quickly because no matter what tricks he used, he could break through them. The protagonist's goal to win doesn't change, and he understands that the difference in equipment is also a type of skill. But for some reason, he wants to play with his ordinary spear, and as he said, that insult from others would lower his worth. So if he flips, it means that applause from other people doesn't raise his worth either, he wants to decide his worth. The protagonist was a better person than Miniel ever thought, so he threw all his weapons and picked up the dagger. It was the weapon that he had learned better from his master, and both attacked each other and wanted to win. Both of them were trying their best, but Miniel's forceful attack threw him back, and he threw his multiple daggers toward him. The attack was heavy, and the protagonist thought he could easily sing them casually using his Lance of Longinus. Additionally, Lee Miniel's specialty ever-changing attacks were complicated to respond to. He was striking him, and the protagonist got hurt while blocking the attack. But he thought it would be fine to use it to make his body feel light, as it was okay not to win. But he will still sincerely work his hardest to pull out the win, and they both rush to attack each other. Fighting was never enjoyable for him, and he remarked that it might be true that this would be the only weapon he learned from his master. But it was too early to be surprised by his performance, and he attacked him from behind. The protagonist lunges and evades his attack and he removes the dust in front of him, but he is startled as Miniel disappears. He was stunned as he knew the stealth art, which is the most difficult technique. He sensed his presence behind and realized he might be unable to use it properly. But if he didn't concentrate, then he would keep escaping from his sight, and he thought this would be Lee Miniel's final triumph card. So he decided to use Merlin's Mata. All his previous moves came into his mind. He wondered if going tit this way would be correct as it was that his belief in himself had wavered or anything like that. But seeing through Miniel's free-willed fighting style suddenly made him realize that his fighting style so far has been rigid. He remembered Merlin's lecture instructed that learning is great to do. But if he makes learning everything a habit, it could impede his self-expression. That was because learning at the end of the day is accepting how someone else expresses themselves. So, how long would he display how others express themselves yet claim he was doing well? He realized it shouldn't be Merlin's mana that he would drag out but his mana and using his method. He needs to accept that learning is just a method to discover his way of self-expression. Once again, with Merlin's intelligence, Chiron's senses, Zhang Zhu's power, and Siddhartha Gautama's imperturbable mind, he could create something that didn't belong to anyone else but himself and his mana erupted. Everyone was stunned to see his aura blade, and this didn't make sense because Hunter trained for decades and barely manifested one, so how could a cadet display it? With his intuition, the protagonist can detect him and point his spear toward him, and he accepts his defeat. Kaliaman told her that the protagonist won first overall, and during the match, he suddenly swapped the weapon he was using, and in the middle of the match, he used an aura blade. She was not expecting that, so she told him to keep monitoring him. He wondered why she was going so far on monitoring a cadet even though their plan was halted. She gets furious and tells him to shut up since it's the Order of the Apostle of Temperance. She remembers her visit to the Apostle of Austerity, and he asks if it's true that there was distortion in the dungeon in Korea. She affirmed, so he asked who solved the distortion, and she wondered why he suddenly got interested in who translated it, but she told him about Kim Seo Joon. 
he told her to keep a close watch on him, and out of curiosity, she asked the reason. The Apostle of Temperance gets furious and remarks that even though she is going to be the successor of the Apostle of Chastity, she is not one, so she shouldn't forget her limits. His killing aura was unbearable for her, and she apologized to him while he returned. He said it was not his order. She was worried as someone was using the Apostle of Temperance to pass their order like a messenger. Meanwhile, at the Hunter Hill Academy, Park Seo Yoon wonders if it's just her imagination or if he is becoming more of a monster. The protagonist thought her words were severe, but she disagreed, as everybody would feel the same way, even when he used the Aura Blade. She suggested returning, but before leaving, he wanted to meet someone. Lee Miniel was pestered by the Academy members as they tried to give him the scholarship he was self-taught but he continuously refused their offer. The protagonist knew that he got the spotlight even though he lost in the end, but he was self-taught, which might be drooling other academies' temptations. The protagonist knew this would happen, so he suggested that Miniel meet privately. Lee Miniel gets out of their grasp, hides behind the protagonist, and informs them that he will join the Dream Academy. They hide from them, and after they get away, the protagonist gets furious at him and asks what he means by that. Lee Miniel clarified that he said that to prevent them from sticking around, and he didn't have the thought of joining the same academy as him. He decided to discuss it later, reminded him of his promise, and asked him about his headmaster. The protagonist gets furious as Miniel replies that he doesn't know and decides to beat him until he tells the truth. Miniel assured him he had told the truth and didn't know his master. The protagonist did believe him as he said that dagger skills were his master's teaching and his strength transcends the imagination. But what he means is that he didn't have any direct teaching from him, and he earned it over the shoulder. Self-taught cadets are commonly referred to as people who wish to become Hewner despite having neither ability nor money. But Miniel was different, it was not like he didn't have the money or the ability, but he didn't want to be tied down anywhere. Miniel explained that he trained himself in the mountain and received no one teaching. But one day, he sensed someone's presence there, and when he looked behind, he saw a man lying injured and this was his first meeting with his master. That man was injured, so he decided to take him to the hospital, but he refused as he didn't want to go down the mountain. He could feel the desperation in his words, so he had no choice but to give up at the hospital. He treated him in an abandoned house in the mountain initially. His condition was so severe that it wouldn't have been unusual to die right away. But as more time passed, he could feel that he was steadily recovering, and it was about a month that he started nursing that old man, so he supposed he would be conscious soon. Miniel was going to the house to check his condition, but he was startled when he heard the voice coming out. He hid behind the tree as he saw the whole army swarming there to kill that old man. These people were surprised that he was okay because they supposed he would have died and asked if someone helped him. His master said, he didn't need to know or hear this. The man smirked and asked if it was the kid hiding behind the tree. The old man was furious and killed him while all the other men rushed to kill him. Lee Miniel was shivering and remarked that it was the first time he had seen someone fight so well since he was born. The old man killed all of them except one and guessed that they had forgotten the fact that they couldn't see him. After finishing the last one, he commanded Lee Miniel to leave and never return, and he disappeared. Miniel had no idea about that situation but instinctively thought he needed to listen to that grandpa's words. Before he left, he packed all the items, and there was a manuscript that the grandpa seemed to have forgotten to bring with him, so he packed that, too. He had planned to return it to him if he ever met him, but he never saw him after that day. The protagonist wondered why he was calling someone who had never taught him his master. Lee Miniel explained that he once looked at that manuscript and found out it was his most sacred text as it contained his dagger and stealth art, but he ended up seeing this. The protagonist thought there was a huge possibility that he might be lying, but it was for sure that he was not a cadet of Transcension Academy. He swore that he hadn't lied, and he participated in the mock exam because he thought that with this, his master would be able to find him. Park Seo Yoon uttered after listening to him that she thought the person he was calling master was Sir Dark Saint. Dark Saint, just like the Sword Saint, is one of the five heroes that represent Korea. Among them, he is the most hidden behind a veil. The protagonist asked if she had seen him before, but she had only seen him when she was young. He requested that she ask the Sword Saint to see the textbook and confirm if it belonged to him. While they were deciding everything on their own, he stood there speechless. The next day, at Dream Academy, the protagonist wonders how one piece of equipment costs 500k dollars and wonders why it's a strange academy, as no matter how much he earns, there is no end to the price. The prize money of 1 million for being first in the mock exams was wired to his account. Lee Miniel was shocked as he knew that she was the granddaughter of the Sword Saint and requested that she help him find his master. 
At first, he was wary of showing the sacred text to others, but he was okay with revealing his comprehension. He decided to go to the Dream Academy so they could visit the Sword Saint together. The protagonist purchases the free pass and is shocked as the progress of Chiron, Merlin, and Siddhartha Gautama's lecture becomes 100%. He wondered if the lecture was still progressing even though he hadn't bought the free pass. Since he completed Chiron's compulsory introductory lecture, he obtained metamorphosis entirely. He looked at himself from every angle and wondered what would change, as after he completed the Zion Zoo lecture, he could feel the power of PTUM. From what he heard from Miram's stories, metamorphosis would be like bones twisting and realigning or some impurity oozing out of his body. The protagonist was stunned, and he looked behind and wondered what was as he could suddenly sense a chill running down his spine. It was as if someone had a cold blade placed right against his throat. He was shocked as someone said that he couldn't believe that he was able to notice his existence. Even though he can't understand his form, he sends him and wonders if it is his natural sense. The man told him he didn't need to be wary since he didn't come there to kill him as he would be the burdensome opponent for that striplin. From his choice of words and way of conversing, the protagonist assumed he might be Sir Dark Saint. Dark Saint couldn't understand how he could sense him, and Kim Seo Joon was also surprised, but he thinks it might be because of the metamorphosis he obtained from Chiron's lecture. The protagonist asked if he had come to find him because of Miniol, and just as he thought, he might have left the sacred textbook for him. Drac Saint asked if he had told him that, but he remarked that he would have nothing to say to others that he had left that sacred book for him. But he had no idea that he was Dark Saint and that he purposely left that manuscript for him. The protagonist informs him that Miniol is on his way, so he should wait for him. But he wasn't there for him as he came to see Kim Seo Joon as he had some connection with the Order of Truth. He traced the Order of Truth for some time because he didn't trust them even though most considered them humanity heroes who ended the cataclysm. Not everything a person knows is true, as the excellent monster Berserk they hunted didn't fall that day. Berserk was such an overwhelming monster that it was often called the Second Cataclysm. At the same time, the Grand Voice and the Seven Apostles hunted him, which marked the end of the Cataclysm. Dark Saint uttered that it was never a monster that could be killed, and even if they killed the beast, why was there no video or record of the corpse if they killed them? But the Berserk disappeared, and the protagonist wondered why they were considered the savior of humanity. It was because the Grand Voice did something to the Berserk that it disappeared but didn't die. He asked him if he knew about the Apostle of Chastity, and he said he had heard he died because of old age. But that was not the truth, he suddenly disappeared like a monster, and thought there was a correlation between the two. That was why he was tracing them and learned two things. First, they were trying to kill him for investigating. Second, the Ten Star Dungeon Break was the scheme of Order of Truth, and the reason they did that was Kim Seo Joon. He didn't know why they were doing that, but they were keeping their eye on him, so he came to ask him for a favor. Dark Saint requested him to take care of Miniel. He would have nurtured him if the Order of Truth had not been on the lookout for him. He informed him that the Order of Truth has a particular way of watching their target, so everything is sown to them if they do something. Since they watch Dark Saint, a trace of whoever he encounters will be left behind. That was why he wanted him to be a connection between him and Lee Miniol. The protagonist was stunned because it meant he had left a trace behind him, but he was special. Although they were already keeping their eye on him, like a great saint, they couldn't watch him, so even if they met and he did something, they would think Seo Joon did that. The Dark Saint gave him another notebook to pass to Miniol, and in compensation, he gave him a textbook of another art. But he refused to take it and asked for something else that surprised him, as even an S-rank hunter would get crazy for his book. The protagonist asked him if he had heard about the child support, and he was speechless, as if he was genuinely asking for money from Dark Saint. Dark Saint can't believe it but asks how much he wants, so he asks him for $3 million. He was furious because he demanded a massive sum of money, but the protagonist explained that he knew he could pass it through him. He needed his help multiple times, and if he passed it to Miniol through another person, he wouldn't believe him. Furthermore, if Miniol went to train on the mountain, he would be in danger, and the protagonist was also at risk for helping him. He said $3 million was not too much, so he asked and promised to wire it to him with the association's name. While he was leaving, the protagonist asked him if he should mention him to Miniol. He said he should tell about him and told him not to mention his existence to anyone. After he left, Miniol arrived, and he told him about his master in order of truth but didn't mention the child support. He handed him the notebook and left it when Miniol asked why he handed it to him instead of hiding it. The protagonist was stunned as he asked him why he was giving Dark Saints art instead of stealing them. He wondered what he should answer him as he couldn't look down on the Dark Saint technique or even mention transcending the academy. 
The protagonist replied that doing it would be mean, so he didn't do it. Lee Miniol was so moved that he decided to be in the Dream Academy like him. He informed Pak Seo Yoon that he also wanted to join her academy, and she was glad to know that. The protagonist thinks of it as an opportunity because he could learn from the Book of Dark Saints while practicing. He also doesn't have to waste time searching for him to hand him the art book, so he is like a golden egg laying goose. While he was thinking, Park Seo Yoon remarked that now they could participate in a team contest, and the prize money also allowed any cadets to participate in this contest. After hearing about the prize, the protagonist was pleased and excited and wanted to join the contest. Three days later, the protagonist was sitting in the corner and couldn't believe it as he had used his $4 million again. He registered for the Lecture of Hercules, with which he could obtain the god power. The lecture started when Hercules introduced himself, and he was sure most of the cadets would come to hear his lecture after Chiron's lectures. He suggested that the students who completed Chiron's lectures come after completing that. For the type of warrior, their strength, reflex, and speed are all critical and among them, there was an opportunity to teach them the busting strength of muscles. The protagonist was stunned as he exerted a bit of his strength and muscle size, which was much more significant. After which, he could run with the speed of light and power that could uphold the sky, the reflexes, and high stamina, these all came from muscle strength. After the lecture ended, his daily task arrived, which was not much different from Chiron's lectures. The protagonist didn't notice what was written on his own and thought they were crazy since he had to perform all the exercises with one ton of weight. He wondered if the foot technique lecture was also like this, and he started the lecture. Instructor Jan Sambin gave a brief overview as the foot technique refers to the movement of their feet during the fight while using a sword or skill. The instructor showed him an example, walking to avoid, which was about walking even in the air using inner energy. He was amazed because if someone could move in the air, there wouldn't be any problem moving. After the lecture, the daily task arrived, and he wondered if he could do this as he had to run 30 kilometers in 30 seconds and fall from a height of 30 meters. Later, Manchul's daughter, Seok Su Yeon, arrived as she heard from her father that he was there. She asked him if he contacted her father recently as she suddenly lost contact with him, so she wondered if he knew about him. He was shocked and wondered if something happened, so she said she had fought with her father. She got her power awakened and wanted to join the Hunter Academy, but her father disapproved of it. After she left, he tried calling him but didn't receive it and decided to wait another day for him. Meanwhile, he told Kalia that Evil's Eye had noticed, but they could still not find Kim Seo Joon and Dark Saint. She instructed him not to reveal the truth of the Ten Star Dungeon and to proceed with their original plan. Later, he started completing his daily task and put on his subspace pouch but could not lift it even with PTUM. He assumed he could do it if he added some mana to it, and he never thought he would have to go on to a length for exercising. Later, Seo Yoon arrived while lying on the floor with a subspace pouch on his back and wondered what he was doing. He requested that she save him and put the pouch away from his body, and she wondered how much he had put in it. She tried to put it away and was shocked as it was cumbersome, so she had to use her mana and throw it away. He thought he was going to die and thanked her for saving him and asked if she knew how long this building was. She told him it was a 15 meters long building, but it was not enough for him, and she wondered what he was asking. He said to her that he wanted to jump from the roof, and he told her to wait there and leave. He jumped from the building and realized he could do it. She was speechless and thought he was weird. She wondered what the new students would think about him if they saw him doing all this. Later, Miniol arrived and asked her what happened to him. She went to see a new place to reside, but she also wanted to know this. While he was surprised to see him indulge on the phone and wondered what was wrong with him, he was worried since he could not contact Mankpol for four continuous days for the first time in ten years. He assumed something was wrong and told her he was going out for some time. Park Seo Yoon wondered if he was going to jump from the roof again and if he had forgotten the police to arrive since someone thought the subway line had exploded or a zombie had appeared. He was mortified and told her he was going out to look for Manchul. He went to his work laced. Everyone was glad to see him again and thanked him for getting rid of the cocky supervisor. He liked to get raised even though it was not his doing, as Miss Seo Yoon did real work. He asked them if they had seen Manchul, but they hadn't seen him for a long time. One of them wondered if he had disappeared after following that person. He was shocked and asked for the details, so the worker told him that a man had appeared four days ago and made a tempting offer. They thought it was suspicious as he made a personal request instead of going through the official procedure of their company. It seemed like an illegal or dangerous task, so they disagreed, but Manchul needed money for his daughter's tuition fees. He inquired if they knew where he was but they didn't know but assumed the association would know about him. 
The protagonist thanked them for their help and suggestions and rushed to the association. They refused to give him the information until it was the relative or the person missing. He does not know what to do as he has been missing for four days, and the agency is also not helping him, and he has ominous feelings about it. When he lost all nine years of his savings due to an accident, Uncle Manchel comforted him and cared about him. Even though he doesn't have enough money, he spends that money to get admission into Transcension Academy, which makes him who he is, so he can't sit on this matter as he has to take action. He called Park Seo Yoon and asked for her help to meet Sword Saint. Later, he met Sword Saint, and he had already heard about his situation, so he wondered if he needed his help, but he refused and challenged him to a duel. The Sword Saint was surprised as he was not expecting this, and the protagonist requested that if he won, he had to help him in this matter no matter how much he had to intervene. But if he loses, he will quit Dream Academy even though he can't win the match fairly and squarely, so he requested that if he could inflict a single injury to his body, he should consider it his victory. The protagonist knew the association was not helping him, but if Sword Saint got involved, they had to give information. The Saint Sword remarked he was fearless as he suggested that and instructed Councilman Seo to follow. They went inside the room, and the Saint Sword retrieved his Azure Dragon Sword. According to legend, Kim Yushin, the general of the Silla Kingdom, was cultivating in Waryong. He received a Divine Sword and a Military Strategy Book and later attained a difficult victory. Although it imitates the real Azure Dragon Sword, it was a masterpiece created by Korea's most excellent blacksmith. The councilman was shocked as Sword Saint only brought out his Azure Dragon Sword on one condition when he wanted to kill his opponent. He never brought out his Azure Dragon Sword till the day of catastrophe, so he asked him what he planned to do with him. He was worried because if anything wrong happened to him, then Miss Seo Yoon would be upset. The Saint's sword told him he was still a student no matter what. He was sure he didn't challenge him to a duel with typical determination, so he wanted to entertain him properly. Park Su Yoon was worried that he didn't need to do this as she tried to ask her grandpa for help. He refused, though he appreciated her sentence, but this was necessary for the future. There was no guarantee such a thing would never happen again, and he did not even know if he was the reason behind the disappearance of Manchul. If that were the case, the same thing like this would keep happening, and he doesn't have the strength or authority to protect those around him. So he needs to drag Sword Saint into this to plant the idea that the Sword Saint will personally act if they touch anyone close to Kim Seo Joon. Later, the Sword Saint informed him that if he believed he would go easy on him because of his granddaughter, then he should stop. But he didn't assume that and wanted to keep his promise and acknowledge his spirit. The Saint Sword took out his Azure Sword, pointed it toward him, and gave him the first move to attack. Even though it was a Saint Sword he was sure that his current self would be able to endure for some time and decided to go out all from the beginning and rush to attack him. He attacked with his best but was shocked as Sword Saint quickly blocked his attack. He wondered if that was all he got, and he threw him back and immediately rushed toward him to attack. The protagonist blocked his attack and realized he was serious as each of his movements and attacks was turning him down like it was the final blow. The Sword Saint attacked him several times, but he managed to dodge it and was surprised because a few months ago, he was an immature kid. Although he sensed his potential during their last encounter, which was outstanding at a typical student level. But what he witnessed at that moment was that he strove to develop himself with each passing moment. With the swing of his sword, he threw the protagonist back and noticed his weapon, which felt unusual from the start. But it was surprising as it could hold against his aura. This game would have ended earlier if it had not been for that weapon. He hadn't planned initially to put in his best effort, but he decided to put in a little more effort. He attacked the protagonist so vigorously that he spilled blood. The protagonist thought he was too cocky as he thought he would be able to win. Just experience, he managed to beat a few students who didn't even have any experience with real-world hardship. But in reality, he failed. The Sword Saint approached him, and the protagonist couldn't notice the enormous difference between the Sword Saint and him. He was frustrated because he had not gone out even after all this and he wanted to defeat him. He attacked him, and the Sword Saint wondered how he dared to challenge him when that was all he got. He had the strength to surpass all the enemies, and he can't help but acknowledge it. He respected the Sword Saint and wanted to be like him and respect his strength, but more than that, he revered the method he used to gain it. But he was arrogant as he was absorbed in the empty title of Transcendent, and unconsciously looked down on himself. He was still weaker than Sword Saint, but he finally had the chance to evaluate his level objectively. He rushed to attack the giant sword and was sure he would someday reach heights higher than him and go beyond him. As he was running, he was stunned because he couldn't feel anything in his hand, and his steps felt awkward. The blood sprouted in the air, 
and Seo Yoon rushed toward him worriedly. Everyone thought he was splendid as he could hold against the headmaster for this long. All his power was drained, and he reminded the sword saint to keep his promise, and he fell unconscious on the ground. Seo Yoon looked at her grandfather's face as a small cut was on his face, and she looked at the unconscious Kim Seo Joon as he won his bet. Meanwhile, Manchul was carrying that suspicious man in the cave and remarked that he couldn't follow him if he knew this would happen. The man didn't expect sudden distortion but would have come alone if he knew. Manchul told him to stop worrying as people might have noticed it and were probably heading there for the rescue. But it wouldn't happen as he specifically asked the association president not to disclose the information under any circumstances. Manchul was sure that he would have made his way out no matter what. The man wondered about whom he was talking about. He replied that there was a particular silly guy. After he gained consciousness, he asked Park Seo Yoon how long he had lived there unconscious. Although it was not that long, he didn't have time to waste leisurely. Soon, the sword saint appeared and gave him his dragon azure sword to uphold his promise. If he takes that sword as a token, the association people will figure out what to do. Pro Hunter Association is a government agency that supervises Hunter and is also a for-profit organization established by pro hunters to satisfy their vested interests. Lee Tebum, president of the Korean Pro Hunter Association, looked at the Azure Sword of the Sword Saint. He wondered why he had that sword. The protagonist never thought he would meet the president. He apologized to him for coming without notice as he had an emergency case and introduced himself. The president was surprised as Dark Saint threatened to wire $3 million to Kim Seo Joon not long ago. But now he did not even know Sword Saint, so he wondered who that person was. He said that four days ago, a man named Manchul went missing after entering the dungeon at someone's request. Before entering the dungeon, they had to notify the association, so he asked him which dungeon he went to and with whom he entered. The president wondered why it had to be that person. But before answering his question, he went to check for the authenticity of the Azure Sword. He agreed but wanted him to check it quickly, but he wanted to take his time. The protagonist asked him if he would take responsibility if something went wrong due to delay. So, the president has no option but to tell him, and the protagonist is surprised that he went with Magic Saint. The president informed him that he was investigating 10 Star Dungeon on his instruction and found a lead, so he went there. Later, he called Cyan and informed her that he found lead about her father's whereabouts and came to know there was a problem with the dungeon where he entered. She was worried, wondering if her father would die as she lost her mother 11 years ago during the dungeon break. Because she doesn't want to lose her precious people to monsters again, maybe that's why she wants to become a pro hunter. She was crying, wondering how she would live alone, but he assured her he would find her father. The magic saint was old, but he was still one of the top 5 heroes so it could be a trap set by the order of truth. He received 5 million dollars from the association as collateral for the azure sword. At first, the president was unwilling to keep it as collateral, but soon, he agreed as he suggested writing the memorandum of the loan on the sword to him. He thought that this amount would be enough for him to buy a weapon from Transcension Academy. He purchased a copy of Gungnir for 5 million won, and he went to the Dyred dungeon even though they were just 6-star monsters. Hunting them was difficult because they looked no different from the ordinary tree. He would be in danger if they gathered and attacked him simultaneously, so he decided to sense them. He gets a subtle but indescribable sense of foreign, although it doesn't look any different from outside, and he decides to test his new weapon. He attacked the tree monster, which turned into a beast and dodged his attack, but the weapon returned and attacked and killed the beast. Gangir was the spear that Odin used to rip apart the body of the first giant Ymir and create the nine worlds. The protagonist knew its power would be great, but it should be limited since it's only a copy it was much more destructive than expected from the Transcendent Academy. He wondered if it had a recalling function, so he poured out some mana, but it needed alt F force. He realized it had a recalling function, but it required much mana so that he could use it just once in a battle. One day, he was sure he could use it freely. He supposed that if the sword saint wanted to kill him one day because of putting the azure sword as collateral, he could throw that weapon at him and buy time to run away. Suddenly, a monster attacked him from behind, and he struck it and rushed to find Manchul. Meanwhile, Manchul was running away from the monsters while carrying the magic saint, and the monster attacked them, and they fell to the ground. They were about to kill them when the magic saint created the barrier to protect him and instructed him to leave and run. He was already an old man who was about to die, and this all wouldn't happen if he hadn't brought him along, so he should have run away. Soon, his barrier broke, and he fell to the ground while Manchul was holding him and apologized to her daughter as if it was all because of him. He clenched his teeth as the monster attacked him but was surprised they didn't attack. 
the protagonist was protecting them and remarked that he might not know how much Cyan was worried about him. A tear of happiness emerged in his eyes after seeing him, and he took the magic saint and moved back. He diverted its attention and found its main body because it kept regenerating no matter how much he cut it. He can't get closer to all this, so he uses Gungnir to aim for the main body. He found his Gangnir, but they had not gotten far away, so he stopped the tree from approaching them and felt like his body was ripping apart. After they got far enough, he hurriedly picked up his weapon and threw it toward it, which got pierced by it. He moved toward the monster's main body, but its branches attacked him, so he searched for Gangnir and recalled it. After he grabs his weapon, all the monster trees are scared of him and sneak away. After getting a few hits from it, the protagonists laughed as they learned how dangerous this weapon was. He decided to play a little with them, so he sang while pointing the weapon toward them, ending on one monster. It was his turn to die, so he wished good luck. The tree was shocked and asked if he was talking about him. The protagonist attacked and killed the tree while all others were shocked. They saw the Gungnir away from him and slammed him to prevent him from picking up the weapon. The branch was so annoying, so he thanked the monsters for coming to him, and he used his lance of Longinus and killed all their demon. After getting rid of the monster, he went to Manchul and Magic Saint, wondering why he came after so long. The protagonist uttered that he didn't tell him to be missing and wondered why he fought with his daughter for the Hunter Academy if he would allow her. Manchul remarked that it was not his business, and Kim Seo Joon asked about the condition of the Magic Saint. He was in critical condition from the beginning, but he has been pushing himself to protect himself. The protagonist looked at his situation, which seemed horrible, so he decided to feed him the emergency medicine that he usually carried out. After he gained consciousness, he wondered who he was, so Manchul informed him that he was the person he had told him before. He was shocked to know he was talking about the Hunter Academy kid and wondered what happened to all the Dyron. He cared for them and asked him what had happened there and why he had brought his uncle Manchul there. Magic Saint explained that he needed to research the monster's corpse discreetly, so he needed help. The protagonist asked if he was doing it discreetly because of the Order of the Truth, and he was shocked as he didn't even tell the president of the Hunter Association about it. Suddenly, they felt an earthquake and told him it would be the same monster that turned a Magic Saint into that condition. He thanked him for arriving to save them but remarked that he shouldn't have come there. The protagonist was shocked to see the deformed giant DR land monster and wondered if it could be called a monster. Although massive, it didn't look any different from other Dyrons, and he was glad it didn't notice them. The protagonist suggested that they should stay out of its sight and leave the dungeon. But they had already tried it, and as soon as they tried to leave the dungeon, it could sense them and chase them, which was why he was in that condition. Magic Saint told him that his outer covering was so complex that his magic didn't work. He cannot give it a decisive blow if he breaks its outer covering because of his old age. The protagonist suggests that he should weaken his core, and then he will provide it with a powerful attack using his Gungnir. Since his health is deteriorating, if they fail this attack, they will die, and the protagonist agrees, so he decides to stall the monster so that they can run away. But it was utterly impossible. While talking magic, the saint noticed his weapon and wondered what it was. Its circuit was so complex that he couldn't even interpret it as such a problematic circuit without entwining. He was much more stunned when he knew that the owner recognized his ability, and assumed that with this weapon, they could get rid of the monster without his weak magic. He wondered where he had brought that, and he had no answer, so he replied that Sword Saint had got it for him. Magic Saint did remember Sword Saint being that kind before, and Kim Seo Joon wondered if he should tell him the truth. The plan was simple, when the Magic Saint weakened the monster with the spell, he stabbed its core with his spear. He instructed the Magic Saint to prepare the weak magic to attack the beast and told them his plan. He will enter the Dirons and buy them some time, during which the Magic Saint will put all his might into preparing a weakening magic spell. When the boss became weak, he would destroy his core with Gungnir. But two variables could happen during the plan. First, he might get killed by him, alluring him away. Second, if he noticed Magic Saint while casting the spell and attacked him, he was worried about the second variable since Magic Saint was weak. They begin their plan, and he gets noticed by the boss. Since it is vast, it is not difficult for it to find him. The protagonist instructed them to stay away because if the boss, Dyron, noticed Magic Saint while casting the speech, they would have been in great trouble. He rushed toward the boss, which was even more significant now that he saw him from close. After he got closer, it felt the energy that he thought from its surroundings and could understand why Magic Sand struggled. The protagonist was relaxed as he couldn't see any other minister so that others wouldn't disturb him. He became calm as his single mistake could kill him. 
he called the monstra, and it looked at him furiously and attacked him vigorously with its branches. The protagonist evades every attack and wonders why it's not giving him any rest. Its attacks were more violent than he expected, so he stayed away from the other two and wondered if the weakening magic was not prepared yet. The boss attacked him, and his lance fell on the ground, he picked it up and attacked the boss. The pressure around him was very high, even the air was trembling, so he had no choice. He got the signal and realized that weakling magic might be ready and was leased as they had the perfect timing. The monster attacked him with his branches but was surprised as the protagonist wasn't there. Instead, it was behind him, ready to attack. The boss monster noticed him and started chasing and attacking him while the protagonist was evading his attack and running away. He looked back, and it was still chasing him, and he was glad because soon he would be at the rendezvous point. So he just needed to learn it there. When he reached there, the chain emerged from the ground and tied up the boss, Dairon. Its movement is dull, and its owner has been reduced significantly. He prays Saint Magic, but now he has to destroy its core. The boss monster moved his branch in the other direction, and the protagonist was stunned as he decided to target Magic Saint. He needed to hurry since Magic Saint was almost out of his mana, and Manchul was a civilian. He might be unable to dodge once or twice while carrying a Magic Saint. This was his only chance, so he took out his weapon and poured every last bit of his strength into Gungnir. With calm mind and precision, he looked for its core and targeted it there, and the monster roared as its core was broken. The beast closed its eyes and died while the protagonist faced the after-effect of pouring his strength into Gungnir. He was pleased as he at least destroyed its core, but with his current strength, he could not recall his weapon. Later, he went to Manchul and Magic Saint and was worried as Manchul was injured. But after examining his wound, he realized that it was not fatal. He expected Manchul to be a civilian who could not avoid the attack compared to Magic Saint, who was unscathed. Manchul remarked that if only he were five years younger than now. He could carry two people on his back and run for three days. Magic Saint assumed that only his mouth would survive in crisis, and the protagonist was amazed at how close they got to each other after spending a few days together. They just had to hurry out and head to the hospital, and they wondered if everything was settled now. He was sure that everything was alright since he had damaged its core, so he went to retrieve his weapon. But they were stunned as they could again feel sudden pressure because the boss, Dairon, was standing again. The protagonist was stunned, wondered how this was possible, and assumed its core might not be destroyed. They were surprised to know that there were two cores, and the boss monster was furiously attacking them, and he got prepared to evade the attack. The Dairon boss was attacking them while the magic saint made the magi barrier to protect them, and he coughed out blood because he was in a weak stage. The protagonist was worried because he had already used up all of his mana, so he wouldn't be able to last long. He knew that to defeat that monster, he must destroy his second core, so he started searching for his Gunganir. He wondered where it went but couldn't find it because it was entangled in the branches. He assumed that the boss monster was hiding it on purpose because it knew how powerful this weapon was. Still, since he had the Lance of Longinus with him, it would be possible to destroy its core if he could give him a direct blow. Kim Seo Joon asked the Magic Saint if he could use his weakening magic again. Even though he was in a crucial state, he promised to try his best. The protagonist left to draw the monster's attention, and the magic saint was worried about him since he could die in the process. But there was no time to waste as they had to do what they could to survive, and he started approaching its main body. The boss monster tried to stop him while he came, avoiding its attack. The protagonist was aware that he would die even if he got hit by it once, and he wondered if the magic saint had been blocking these attacks in his terrible condition. But he had reached his limit, so no one else could do that except him. The Syrian attacked him with his branches, but he jumped and avoided it. He had to keep going closer to stab the Lace of Longinus in its core, but he could not find an opening to get closer than that. It was on an entirely different level than luring the monster. Suddenly, one of the branches tangled around his leg. While other branches attacked him, the Magic Saint tied them using his magical chains. The Magic Saint's weakening magic protects him, so he gets out of its grip and starts getting closer. He observed that the chains were fewer in number and thinner than before. As expected, it must have placed an enormous star on his body to activate this again when he doesn't even have enough mana. Finally, the protagonist can find an opening and rushes there to destroy its core. Before he could reach there, the monster broke the magical chains and attacked him. He spilled blood and fell back, and he looked at Dylan as if destroying the core with the Longinus Lance was possible. He thought he needed to get closer to it, but he made the blunder. Its branches approached him, and he knew he had to dodge it, but his body was not responding. He was stunned as the magic saint protected him and told him to run away. 
The magic saint couldn't believe a student like him had achieved such an outstanding level of martial arts at the age of under 30. He wondered how long it had been since his whole body trembled at someone else's martial arts. He was sure that in five years or just a year, there would be no one in Korea who wouldn't know the name of Kim Seo Joon. After another year, who knew what level he would have reached, as he has the potential to surpass Korea's hero someday. But he was not strong enough, so he had to live even if the magic saint had to die in his stead. He shouted to run away. But Kim Seo Joon didn't want to run away Magic Saint suggested that he shouldn't get carried away by his emotions. He has to live, and Magic Saint already has little time left, so he shouldn't be foolish and face his reality. The protagonist asks why he is not running away because he could abandon them. He inquired why he left behind his uncle as he could have done that if he wanted. But he was also trying to sacrifice himself for them even in his worst condition. The protagonist knew that running away was the best option, leaving this lace to Magic Sant, taking Manchul, and getting out of there. On the other hand, the worst option is to fight that monster in his terrible condition, and he already has his answer. But for some reason, he didn't want to run away as he suddenly remembered what Hercules said in his first lecture about the concept of strength. Hercules, the greatest hero in Greek and Roman mythology, emphasized the importance of muscles during his orientation lecture. However, physical strength was not the power he wanted to teach during his lecture. He is the most famous of all these who are known as heroes of myths and legends. Suddenly, Kim Seo Joon recalled the words Hercules had said to me during his first lesson. He remembered he said that power doesn't refer to physical force because the power he was trying to teach him was nothing like that. Hercules was sure that some of them might ask what power he was talking about. The daily quest of Hercules' lecture was so challenging that the protagonist faced difficulties while completing it. During the lecture, Hercules is quiet for a while, and the protagonist wonders if the lecture ended that quickly. Soon, Hercules utters an atonement. Because of Hera's curse, he went insane and murdered his beloved wife and children with his hand. Tormented by guilt, he thought of taking his own life, but fortunately, his excellent friend Thesis persuaded him to do the Twelve Labors of Atonement. Twelve impossible trials of his life include killing the Nemean Lion, slaying the Lernaean Hydra and capturing the Syria Hind, capturing the Urimanthian Boar, and cleaning King Augeas's stables. Drive away the Stymphalian birds, capture the Cretan Bull, capture the man-eating horses of Dion's, and seize the belt of Hippolyte. Meanwhile, the remaining include fetching Jiryon's red cattle, stealing the apples of the Hesperides, and kidnapping Cerberus, the gatekeeper of hell. His reputation increased daily as he completed these twelve trials, but people suddenly started laughing at him. They mocked him, saying that he wished for the glory, but there was no glory for a man who murdered his wife and children. They were right because he committed too many crimes to be a hero. Just like that, people kept coming up with reasons why he couldn't atone. Their insults were so hurtful that he once again thought about committing suicide. But Hercules refused to give up and live for others, sacrificing himself to the point where others thought he was a fool. He just hoped that in the distant future, he would one day see altruism as a natural part of life. Only then could he forgive himself for that fateful day. So Heracles completed the Twelve Labors and became known as the true hero. In addition, he saved the gods of Olympus during the Gigantomachy, which was the battle between the giants and the twelve Olympic gods that nearly ended Roman and Greek mythology. Heracles, who had lost his mind and killed his family at the end of the path of his atonement, became the greatest hero of them all. The power that drove him on his path was the will to atone, so he wanted his cadets to do something when they were trying to do something or become something. People will often tell him that it's impossible. But as a person who has endured the hardest of trials, he wants to let them know that he has always heard people say that stuff while he was going through his trial. But Hercules wants all the cadets to know that such things don't matter because they will tell them repeatedly that it's impossible. They often said they couldn't do it, but he didn't want to tell his students to get over it. They need one personal reason why they must succeed, which alone is enough to become a hero. The magic saint suggested he should stop acting crazy because he also knew that he couldn't win and that was not a monster he could handle at his level. The protagonist didn't deny it because he knew better than anyone that he couldn't win. Magic Saint wanted him to stop as it was futile while he was approaching the monster. The fear clings onto him like a weight upon his heart, and a whisper in his ear tells him to back down. At the same time, Hercules's voice resounded in his mind when the whole world told him he couldn't do it. His mind tells him that he is at his limit. When he keeps thinking about it, he should keep going onward foolishly. He had a thousand reasons why he couldn't win and a thousand excuses to run away. 
he knew that to the old and experienced magic saint, a 28-year-old like him must seem reckless. But these 28 years that are nothing to him made up his entire life, so he doesn't want to give up and ruin his future for this. He remembers Hercules' words about true power, an owner that wells up from within a person's body and soul which is the divine power, an overwhelming force that can destroy all obstacles. His overwhelming aura covered his body, and the boss, Dairon, attacked him, but they were cut with a single blow of his spear. The protagonist rushed toward its core, and there was an explosion. The magic saint was surprised as he defeated the Dairon. Since he overexerted himself, he fell unconscious and fell, but magic saint grabbed him. Later, Kim Seo Joon was lying unconscious, and Manchul asked if he was alright as he was worried about him. Magic Saint explained that his wounds were severe, but his life was not in danger, and he became unconscious because he used a power that his body couldn't withstand. Manchul understood because his power was abnormal and wondered when that kid grew up so much. Magic Saint was terrified and wondered what he was talking about and if he was fearful about the giant tree. The old man that he knows as the Magic Saint could also experience such fear. He laughed as he was not fearless even though he always called himself an old man who didn't have much longer to live but he was afraid of death. He was scared of what would happen to the world after his death because the world is not as safe as everyone thinks. The closer he gets to the end, the more he worries about it because the world still needs him. Manchul wondered if that was why he had the disciple, and he agreed, and Jinan did a much better job than he expected. But he still can't escape from the darkness inside his heart. In retrospect, his worries were just him being paranoid, which was a wake call for him. Even if he died, he was confident his disciple would continue his legacy. He saw the beginning of a new generation of heroes in Kim Seo Joon and was glad. Later he woke up and was in the hospital and was pleased as he made it out of the dungeon safely. He wondered why the magic saint was in the same four patients who shared a room as them even though he was a VIP. He asked them if they were alright, and Manchul replied that he didn't have anything serious happen to him. The wound was a little deep, but he would be alright with the proper treatment. Magic saint was also perfectly okay, and he does not know if it was due to the first aid he gave him. But as long as he rests, he should be in, too. He knew Uncle Manchul would be alright but wondered if Magic Saint was alright as he overstrained himself. Manchul asked him if he was alright because he had passed out for a quarter day. The protagonist was shocked to know that but wondered if he called his daughter Cyan. Manchul had already called her, which relieved him as it looked like it was all resolved without any issues. Manchul uttered that he had also called Seo Yoon, and he was startled and wondered why he had contacted her. Cyan told him that Park Seo Yoon was worried about him as they probably ran to each other while looking for you, and were coming together to see him. The protagonist thought from Miss Seo Yoon's perspective as he told her that he was going to find Manchul, and then he went missing without any notice. Furthermore, he disappeared with her grandfather's swords. Magic asked him about his daughter, and he told him in the dungeon. Manchul explained that he got involved in this pickle to earn her tuition fees to send her to Hunter Academy. As he remembered this, he reminded the magic saint of his promise to double pay, but he ignored which made him furious, wondering if he was thinking of not paying. He was alright with him, but he suggested that he should mentor his daughter if he agreed. They were shocked, and he wondered if he had finally gone senile or crazy, but magic saint asked what he meant as he was neither of them. Since he was alright, Manchul wondered why he suddenly wanted to mentor Cyan because he told him he also had many things to do. Magic Saint asked if he needed to do this work anymore as he should pass down his excellent knowledge to keep it going. He doesn't have a long time to live, and he doesn't think he will live past this year, so he doesn't have to do it until then and was thinking of living his last time while mentoring his daughter. He wants him to consider it a gift for saving his life unless she doesn't want to become the magician. Then, he can do nothing. In C the protagonist also saved his life, he wanted to mentor him. The protagonist refuses and demands money as compensation instead of his knowledge. Magic Saint laughed and agreed to give him the money worth of his life and ask how much he wanted and he didn't want him to hold back since his life isn't worth so little. He was about to ask him for the money when he heard the sound of a sword saint who was furious. Miss Seo Yoon was trying to hold him back and told him it might be a misunderstanding. The protagonist almost forgets that contacting Park Seo Yoon means sword saint would also know about it. The sword saint furiously asked her what she meant by misunderstanding and told her to get out of her way because he didn't want to let it go this time. The sword saint cursed him while Seo Yoon instructed him to run if he wanted to live. His brain started malfunctioning, and he was sacred, requesting him to listen to him first because he was wrong. He wondered what he should do and if he should jump out of the window, but he was talking about sword saint, so he might as well jump out of the window. He wonders if he should try throwing Gungnir at him and run and he remembers his weapon and wonders if he left it in the dungeon. 
The sword saint was enraged and didn't want to leave him alone quickly this time. While he was furious at him, the magic saint suddenly called him as he recognized the sword saint, and they were surprised and wondered what he was doing there. Magic saint didn't expect to meet him like this after so many years, as it seemed like yesterday when the five of them were running around every day when they were still young. He asked if he had been well and he was always the same and asked why he was there and in this weak state. Magic said that he almost died while trying to be brave, so he was residing in the hospital for the moment. He was shocked to know he almost died and guessed he was getting old. Magic Saint laughed and was jealous of him since he was still energetic and wanted to know his secret. The protagonist asked about Cyan, and Seo Yoon whispered that she was on the way. She hurried because her grandfather was freaking out. Sword Saint thought his health was failing since he kept speaking nonsense, but he assured him he would almost die if Kim Seo Joon didn't save them. The Sword Saint furiously looked at him, and he freaked out and uttered that he didn't mean to do it as he had no other choice. He silenced him and yelled that he didn't give it to him so that he could sell it off and remarked that he doesn't seem to have any sense of boundaries because he got away with everything. Magic Saint doesn't know about the situation but requests him to forgive the protagonist once. Sword Saint told him that was not his concern, but he still spoke for him and remarked that he might have made a colossal mistake. But he was sure that he didn't do it on purpose as he must have done it because he was in a situation where he had no choice. Still, he thought he had crossed the line, and the magic saint wondered what he had done to him that was making him go this far. The word saint told him that he had sold his azure dragon sword, and he was surprised. But he realized he might have bought that incredible weapon, Gungnir, using the money from the azure dragon sword. Sword saint didn't understand what he meant, so he explained that the kid had said that he had brought him a weapon. He gets furious at knowing this and wonders why he would give him any weapon. The protagonist informed him that he didn't sell it as he left it as collateral, and he could look for it because the collateral was not that much. Sword Saint asked Magic Saint if he still had to forgive him, but he was speechless and requested that he not kill him. He decided not to kill him since he didn't sell the sword, and the Magic Saint requested that much. He decides to let him go after one hit, and it's up to him if he can block it, dodge it, or die as he likes. The protagonist knew he would let him go with one hit, and he was planning to finish him with that one hit. He was at the corner, telling him he would go and find him, but the Sword Saint punched him. The protagonist could quickly look at his punch, and he hit his head as he stopped it with his punch. The Sword Saint was amazed to see this, and further, his arm was fine after the hit. Usually, it would have broken or shattered. The Sword Saint called him, and the protagonist was so scared that he rambled. He said it would be only one hit so he could dodge it, block it, and die, so he shouldn't take it back now. He rushed out to take the fresh air and requested them to have a nice reunion and Seo Yoon and Manchul also left with him. After he left, the magic saint remarked that he might have gotten old as he even controlled his strength so he couldn't die. He wants to know the truth as he assumes he doesn't dislike him, but he is an eyesore to him, and he wants to get rid of him. The sword saint sat on the stool and asked what happened in the dungeon. It was hard to believe that the trace of the Apostle of Temperance being discovered in the Warp 10 start dungeon wasn't enough. A mutant appeared in the dungeon while trying to find the Order of the Truth. Furthermore, the person who got rid of it was Kim Seo Joon. The magic saint laughed and remarked that he should have seen it with his own eyes to believe. The sword saint remembered that he wasn't at that skill level when he faced him just a few days ago. Magic saint realized that he was still unable to acknowledge him, and he was right because even after knowing this, he would appreciate him. It might be because of the current pro hunter that he doesn't trust as he hasn't seen any good ones, even in those overlived S classes. Magic saints think the same way as they were nothing compared to them, even if they are at a higher level. Regarding the heroes of Cataclysm, both the Sword Saint and the Magic Saint would think the same. The meaning of Pro Hunter was different in that reformed era because being Pro Hunter meant nothing more than a lucrative job. They were not denying the arrival of the new era since they looked forward to peace more than anyone else. However, the world isn't as safe as others thought because once all the heroes disappear, the body of that threat is awakened. Will the world even have the power to fight against them, but they don't know it either. That might be the goal of the Order of the Truth, but he told the Sword Saint that someone believed to be nothing achieved the impossible. They knew their era was passing, or it might have already passed, and they didn't realize it. Meanwhile, Park Seo Yoon was furious at him for selling the Azure Dragon Sword when Cyan arrived. At the same time, the Sword Saint wondered what he meant, and he laughed and said that much time had passed. While Cyan hugged her father, she started crying and Manchul thanked the protagonist for saving his life. It was noted that the best scenery in the world is the scene of everything returning to how it was. As time passed, three of them were discharged from the hospital individually, and everyone could return to where they originally were meant to be. 
However, a few things changed. The first change was that the magic saint took on Cyan as his disciple because she agreed. The next was receiving the promised payment for saving the magic saint's life, 10 billion won. However, the protagonist doesn't want to take this much money because he just joked with him. The magic saint told him that the price of his life was not so low, and he did not want him to feel burdened because he would give this money back to society. Using 500 million won, he returned the Azure Dragon Sword to the Sword Saint and almost died in the process. Further, his lecture progress on Hercules because of the dungeon has also become almost half. It was not his intention, but thanks to the situation, he obtained the Gungnir, and a large sum of 9.5 billion was won. He entered the academy room, checking his progress, and wondered how he tolerated the Sword Saint punch. Lee Miniel was glad to see him back, but the protagonist inquired if he was worried about him because he hadn't even visited him once in the hospital. He was worried about him, but Miss Seo informed him that he was doing fine, so he assured him well. Furthermore, he believed he had been fine quickly since he was a fantastic person. Park Seo Yoon was glad to see him back and asked about his health, and he was completely recovered. Lee Miniel showed her an item from the notebook as he needed this, and she promised to get it for him. And he was glad. Even though many things changed, one thing stayed consistent, the Dream Academy, which was to the point that it felt like home. Later, he took Hercules's lecture and was sure that some students probably realized the significance of God's power. Although it's a challenging task occasionally, some students like that might be surprised about the lecture progress that suddenly went up. But there was nothing to be surprised about since this lecture intended to teach them God power. Simply put, they just realized what they wanted to learn in this lecture, which was why their progress rose. However, thinking that this means they don't have to listen to the lectures anymore is lousy and ridiculous. Hercules explained that God power is a power close to its source. To completely utilize that infinite power, they need muscle that supports it. Therefore, unless they have a body that has been trained to its limit, they wouldn't be able to withstand the power of God power. This was why he emphasized the importance of muscle in his lecture to build a body capable of handling it. The protagonist summed up his lecture by saying that he can use God power, but his body is in a state where it wouldn't be able to keep up with that power. Still, he wondered if it was because of his progress in the lecture that he finished Hercules' lectures faster than usual and had time left over. Because he had the time and money, he thought he should enroll in some other lectures, but he could not find an equally excellent sage course. So he decided to buy an elixir because if he had enough man to retrieve the Giender, that would not be different from being a walking calamity. Furthermore, Transcendent Sop was overflown with the elixir to supplement the lack of mana. Still, he preferred listening to the lecture to taking the elixir because he was unsure if he could absorb the energy from the mixture. Even though he had a Merling lecture which was not about mana cultivation but mana understanding. To absorb energy from Elixir completely, he needs to know the mana cultivation, and he thought it was the right time to learn this lecture. He sent a message to his mentor as he wanted his recommendation on any good lecture about mana cultivation because he had an excellent casualty. Since his response time was a week, he hoped he would get through soon, but his phone rang and he immediately received the reply. The mentor recommended two lectures about mana cultivation to ensure safety and Kai cultivation to pursue efficiency. Since these lectures differed for each individual, he recommended that he listen to the same lecture. He was confused when he suggested two lectures and assumed he should first check the price. Later, he went to Miss Seo, who was furious because he needed money and asked her for a competition. Her anger erupted, and she yelled at him where he was using all the money that he always asked her for. She wondered if he was raising some cash-eating pest or if his money evaporated. He asked for it because both lecture registration fees were 10 billion won. Even though he wanted to tell her the reason, he was sure she wouldn't understand, so he said he was also going crazy about it. She sighed and told him there was a contest closer to the date, and the prize money was 3 billion won. But there was one issue, he could only enter it as a team. They could only enter the competition in a group with at least three members from the same academy. This was the real problem because there were only two students in the Dream Academy. If it's Minial, he knows he should be able to join his party without a problem. But by regulation, they would be able to participate because they don't have three members. He asked her if, by any chance, anyone wanted to join the academy but apologized for asking this question. Even if new students are recruited, there is no guarantee that they will be trustworthy. He wondered if there was anyone trustworthy, someone who was reliable enough to be able to enter the contest together with them. Someone who wants to be a hunter but hasn't enrolled in any academy. He wants one person and wouldn't expect anything from him. He remembered Cyan and asked Miss Seo if she wanted to enroll in the academy, what would she say? 
She was stunned and inquired if he was planning to recruit her and her to join the contest. He said he was going out to talk to her, but she stopped him as she was a disciple of a magic saint. Even though she was all right with his decision, she wondered if there was any reason for her to join an academy just for a contest. But it was not just for a contest. Later, at Magic Saint's residence, the man requested him to wait as Magic Saint would be out shortly. He never thought he would be able to meet Magic Saint on just a call, and he found his sofa very comfortable. Magic Saint arrived and wondered what he would need to see him for, as it had been just a few days since they met. He saw him using the cane and realized his body might be unwell, and he greeted him and asked about Cyan. Magic Saint uttered that she had been all over the place since she was trying to demonstrate elemental magic. The protagonist was stunned because it was just two days since she became a Magic Saint disciple, yet she could sue elemental magic. The first thing they detach after entering the Hunter Academy is Ammon proficiency and mana cultivation. If it's a cadet's first time learning mana proficiency for the first time, he was sure it would take two to three weeks to learn. Magic Saint was also astonished and blacked out because learning mana proficiency took her less than a day. He wondered if he could imagine how surprised he would be because Jimin also took a whole day. He hadn't known where that unpolished stone was hidden till now. He dedicated the rest of his life to helping her but never thought it would be so much fun. Magic Saint asked him why he arrived, but his mouth didn't even move. He was amazed that the Dark Saint disciple was in Seo Yoon Academy, and it was his first time hearing he had a disciple. The protagonist informed him that the Dark Saint was being wary of the Order of Truth, so he was not even contacting his disciple directly and asked him to pass his words on. Since they were also watching Sword and Magic Saints, he worried that Cyan might become their target. They have no idea when the Order of Truth might go after him, but they wouldn't be able to talk with anyone easily if he gets involved. He asked if he was suggesting that he enroll her in the academy, and that she moves there. The protagonist affirmed that the time he needs to train her will have to decrease. Still, he wants him to consider all sides for his and Cyan's safety. Cyan was his uncle Manchul's daughter, and just like his sister, even if it was not for the content, he was going make this proposal anyway. It was not something that the magic saint could impatiently think about just because he didn't have much time. He agreed because, for her sake, he couldn't hold her for too long and he also thought that building up experience from fighting here and there would be an incredible training plan. He took her to the academy, and they were pleased to see her. Miniel introduced herself. He heard that she was the disciple of a magic saint and was going to tell her that he was the disciple of a dark saint. But the protagonist put his hand on his mouth. He said that he shouldn't tell anyone about it, and he told her that he was a dark saint disciple. Miniel gets furious at him as he stops him from revealing the truth, but it's okay if he tells him. He wonders how this makes sense, so Kim Seo Joon tells him to talk to his mentor about this. The protagonist introduced her and told him she was just a high schooler, so he shouldn't have any funny ideas thinking she was pretty. She was mortified and reminded him that she was graduating soon and wondered when he would treat her like a kid. He told them they would enter the competition as a team when they were done. Vinyal was glad they would work as a team, but Cyan wondered if she could do her well. The protagonist told her not to be overwhelmed since there was some time in the contest, and they could guide her till then. Since they decided to enter the competition, they needed to think of a team name for them, and they all stared at him. He wondered why they were staring at him, so many all said he was the leader, so he should decide the name. Ms. Seo Yoon also agreed because he created the team and should be the leader. He was just focused on entering the competition but never thought of any name for the team. He looked at the academy's name and suggested they join its dream team, they liked it, and their only goal was to win the contest. With that, they expanded past Korea, and their name was brought up everywhere. That was how Dream Team was formed on the first day of Team Dream Formation, which was the fusion of Dark Saint Disciple, Magic Saint Disciple, and Transcension Academy Disciple. Miss Seo Yoon was shocked as they were all busy doing their work, and she couldn't tell if it was an academy or a playground. Raid Battle is a competition organized by private organizations, not by government organizations. But in simple terms, it is a competition sponsored by large guilds. Large guilds hold such competitions by using a considerable amount of money in the form of sponsorships because it is to call dibs on exceptional students. Some hunters work alone, but most pro hunters belong to the guild and work as a team. Their intention is not to judge individual strength but also how they perform with the team and what kind of potential they have. Then, they recruit students with promising talents in advance, and this intention was hidden in this raid battle. As a result, large guilds began lobbying the government and associations under the pretext of sponsorship. Smelling the scent of that money, several broadcasting stations and various organizations came together. Thus, the current competition was born.
only the cadets of League 1 and League 2 Hunter Academies can participate. So this competition is where all the money and attention were focused. Meanwhile, everyone was shocked to see Young Siwoon of Gaon Academy, and behind him were Park Yoon Jung and Dooman Joon. They were members of the Academy class team, consisting of three of Gaon's top five members. Everyone was stunned, wondering if that's the extent of Gaon, who's going to come from Hunter Mills and Ale. They know the fact that both the academies would send their best cadets, too. They wondered if Lee Hyun was also coming from the Hunter Academy, the academy that was said to be the most outstanding talent in the history of pro haters. It is the time for the Hunter to come out because, from the rumors, he heard that the Five Heroes Disciple is also participating. Some ask why these kinds of people would take in mere cadets as their disciples. Many all wondered why they were not talking about their captain, as he was also famous. Arcade Battle Round 1 started. The rating of 7-star monster Iraq subjugation whose scoring criteria depended on the raid clearance speed. Lido on who belongs to the Ares Guild B-class hunter, observed the Sudra Academy hunter team and Nature Academy Sunshine team fail. Lido on wondered why so many teams were failing in the first round. His companion remarked that the difficulty of the dungeons might be pretty high, and they asked what was the research Young Jimin did on mutants. She said she found something there, and she applied that to the artificial dungeon this time. Lee Do Eun realized that might be why the student team failed one after another without being able to clear it. He assumed that the master would be surprised to see the result and wondered if he should look at the team still holding on. The first team to clear round one was the Gaon Academy class team which cleared the dungeon raid in 30 minutes and 12 seconds. Everyone wondered about the result of the Hunter Mills and Ale even though they must have not cleared it yet. There would be a time difference because the entry order was different. They heard the beep sound as someone else cleared it too. But who was it this time? Hunter Mills and Ale. But it was Dream Academy. They wondered how much time they took, which was 9 minutes and 34 seconds, and they were shocked. They thought there was an error in the machine, so he informed his man to check it as the display said it was 9 minutes so there might be a mistake. The man decided to confirm it, and he apologized as there was some error in the measurement as they expected because 9 minutes doesn't make any sense. They say the meter malfunctioned momentarily, and the measurement was delayed by 30 seconds. They were stunned to hear that it was delayed, not accelerated, and the rectified time was displayed immediately. A few moments earlier, they faced the 7-star monster Iraq, and the protagonist thought that if the instructor Iraq heard about the monster's name, she would be horrified. The real Iraq was currently teaching sewing to nurture first-year students and familiarize them with the industry at the Transcension Academy. He decided to save Gunnir from an unexpected situation while he was pondering all the monstering through their web at him. He wondered if this was Iraq's spider web, which was said to boast incredible strength and elasticity. However, these were mere strands of the thread of Lance of Longinus, and he rushed and attacked the monster one after the other. Cyan was amazed to see how skilled both of them were, as most of those monsters fell without fighting. She didn't want to stand by as she hadn't learned many magic spells but wanted to use what she had learned. She cast her magic spell, which tied the monster, and they were surprised, so they cleared the dungeon in a few minutes. Lee Miniel praised the protagonist because he amazed him every time he saw him and wondered how he could use such movements. The protagonist blushed and told him to stop bluffing, but Lee Miniel knew he was acting shy. Still, he praised him as he seemed a different person every time he saw him. The protagonist asks him what happened to all the weapons he carries with himself every time. He uttered that he threw them all away because his master didn't like him using a lot of them. So he threw them all away except for the twin daggers and the arrows and bow. The protagonist wondered why he didn't use arrows instead of a twin dagger while fighting. He did that to protect Cyan, of course, if he used the arrows, he must deal damage from a long distance. While they were deeply immersed in their conversation, Cyan called them and informed them that people were staring at them. Everyone was shocked that they completely raided the dungeon in 9 minutes. But when they looked at him, they recognized Kim Seo Joon since he won the Hunter Mill mock exams beside him was Lee min who was the second position holder. The protagonist could feel the poisonous, stinging stare that was coming from the Gaon Academy leader, Young Siwoo left without saying anything. Lee min was pleased because people were finally noticing them, so he told them about his captain. The protagonist told him to shut you, but Cyan was embarrassed by both of them. The Hunter Mills students came out as it was pretty noisy they assumed that everyone might be surprised at their performance. They were overconfident without knowing that they cleared the dungeon in 31 minutes and 11 seconds. They were posing in front of them, but no one noticed them. Ale team member asked him to give him the way, and they also completed their dungeon raid. Round 2 started in which the teams had to collect all the magic crystals in the dungeon within the time limit, 
and scoring depended on the task's clear speed. The Dream Academy Dream Team won first place by completing the task in 4 minutes and 23 seconds. Round 3 was to eliminate the Artificial Monsters Link Ball whose score criteria was Raid Duration, and the Dream Team got first in this raid, too. Round 4 was in Die Red Forest, and the scoring criteria was Endurance Time. Lee Miniel had no arrows left and instructed his captain to kill them as he would take care of that place. The protagonist went and was fighting the monsters, but they kept respawning and didn't completely disappear, but there were fewer. He was surprised as he saw an illuminated sphere floating in the air. Although he couldn't see it with his eyes, Chiron's sense detected something foreign just now. What was more incredible was that he could sense the tremendous amount of mana and wondered if the dungeon's core or some medium regenerated the monsters. While he was pondering, a diret appeared behind him, and he swung his lance. He decided to test it. He attacked the sphere with his Gungnir, but it slipped out. The protagonist was shocked to see the Gungnir passing through the air, and wondered if he had made the mistake of thinking there was something. A diret was attacking him with its branches from behind. While attacking, he was sure about Chiron's sense, which made him realize the fantastic energy. The protagonist looked at its lance of Longinus as he didn't completely understand the power of it, unlike Gungnir. He smirked as the lance of Longinus might be as good as Gungnir, so he evaded Dirad's attack and jumped toward the energy sphere. He wanted to know the valid owner of it, so he decided to attack the sphere with it. Meanwhile, the Gaon Academy team was also in the Dirad Forest, and the leader instructed Doom and June to stay in the center as they were holding very well, so they decided to hold back more. The Gaon Academy class team lasted 44 minutes, and they assumed it should be enough to overwhelm the other team. Park Yoonjung thought she did well this time and made no mistakes. Their judgment was good, and there was no mistake in that they also lasted twice as long as Hunter Mills and Ale's previous record of 20 minutes. She whispered in his ears as Young Siwoo didn't respond. She assumed he must be happy, too. He thought it was the best possible result they could achieve by overcoming their limits. They saw the dream team out, and Lee Minial wanted to give up on comprehending Kim Soo Joon. Sayin was also shocked, wondering how he did that. Park Yoonjung remarked that because they came out first, even though they entered at the same time as them, she thought they won this time. Young Siwoo also felt the same as he expected this and assumed everything they had done until now was fake. They were shocked and wondered what was wrong with the record, and they were shocked as this was not even possible. No one could see through the true nature of the dungeon's core as Dream Academy cleared, but their time was immeasurable. It has been less than a month since the Hunter Mills mock test that he participated in concluded, and he wondered how he got so much more robust in such a short time. If they keep going at this rate, what would happen if they could stay in the professional hunter world when the pro hunter exams end in a few months? They wouldn't even need a year, but there would be a substantial ripple effect, so he wanted to recruit them no matter what. Everyone was calling someone, asking how many guild funds they had available. The protagonist was amazed because, at first, he speculated that Longinus might have an effect of ignoring the mana barrier. The same goes for Gungnir. In the end, he just settled down with their difference in class. He had the feeling that it wouldn't uniquely be the Longinus effects, but he could destroy the hidden core of the dungeon with his Lance of Longinus, which Gunginer couldn't destroy. He concluded that it could be that Longinus' ability could deliver a direct blow to the target existence itself, and he still needed to make a bit more test comparison. Lee Miniol was surprised because the Dirads had suddenly disappeared, and he thought Kim Seo Joon had wiped them all out. Cyan disagreed because no matter what he thought, it made no sense because he didn't have the power to collapse a dungeon. Young Siwoo arrived and asked him what trick he used, and the protagonist saw his team members surprised, so he assumed he was not there as their representative. The protagonist wondered what tricks he talked about, but Siwoo asked if he would make excuses. Lee Miniol was furious at him, but Kim Seo Joon stopped him and asked Siwoo if he thought he had cheated. Young Siwoo can't find any other explanation for their current situation. Although he admits that Kim Seo Joon is outstanding since he heard about what happened during the Hunter Mills mock test. However, an unmeasurable record for this fourth round was impossible. If it were Lee Hae-yoon, he would believe it. He got away, which made Miniol enraged, and he ran away after messing with them. He guessed he was more upset than he thought as he compared that idiot with that girl because she was in a completely different class than them. Lee Miniol was furious, but Sion instructed him to calm down as the last round would start soon. She put tape on his mouth and asked Kim Seo Joon if their victory was decided. He also thought the same way because they placed first in all the rounds, which were more straightforward than he thought, so he was disappointed. While they were going for the final round, a guy appeared and called them as he wanted to give them all an offer. 
he had an offer for them, so if they all agreed, they would give this competition a 6.5 billion won pool prize. And they were shocked. But in return, they had one condition. He asked if they knew there would be a 9-star monster in round 5. They heard about it since it would be a boss monster, and the man told them that although it wouldn't be as strong as a real 9-star monster, it was conjured by sorcery. It's not a monster that a few cadets could subdue, so the goal of the other five was not to defeat the boss. Instead, they would evaluate how students attack powerful monsters simultaneously, and how fast they adapt to their surroundings. These things will be assessed to measure their score, but defeating the beast will give them the highest score. But not a single team has ever succeeded in doing so in the annual raid battles. The protagonist understood the condition he mentioned, defeating the boss. The dream team must forfeit their prize money if the boss is not defeated. The protagonist wonders if they refuse, so the man informs them there would be no disadvantage, it's just an offer. He could proceed with round 5 according to the existing rules and receive the contest's prize money if he wins. The man told them they were not the ones who offered that offer. The protagonist realizes that three great academies have used their influence because they all got pushed out of the ranking by them. Furthermore, considering Yung Siwu's reaction, other academies might have also thought he had cheated. The top three academies must try to destroy the dream team and restore their lost pride through their offer. He looked at them, but they didn't care and wanted him to decide because he was their captain. The man gave his perspective as the organizers that they were looking forward to the dream team accepting their offer. The protagonist looked at his face and could tell that from broadcasting to searching for sponsors, they must have it rough. He wondered what he should do as if they succeeded. They would receive 6.5 billion won. But if they failed, they would lose the 3 billion won they were supposed to receive. The protagonist suggested the counteroffer since the total prize pool for this tournament is 6.5 billion won. He requested him to use his influence to tell the offerer to increase the prize money to a total of 10 billion won. They were shocked to know his counteroffer, and he clarified that if they refused, there was no merit in accepting this offer after putting themselves in danger. Even if they did nothing, they would still get the 3 billion won in prize money. He needed 500 million won, so if he divided 6.5 by 3, they would each receive 2 billion won. After spending the 500 million, the remaining 1.5 billion won't be enough to cover the ever-increasing casualties. But if the prize money increases to the billion won, he can buy both the lectures and elixir, which is enough reason to risk their lives. Lidoan never thought the dream team would make such a counteroffer as they saw through the organizer's intention because he thought their fighting sense was only good. The cadet thought the dream team would refuse the offer because they did not need to take such a risk, but it all depends on their confidence. The bald man asked Lido Yun if they could do it, but he thought it was possible. He was shocked because it had been a while since he had seen him be so sure. The monster that will be conjured this time would be a revenant who is an undead type 9 star monster. It doesn't feel pain and needs to be killed twice for it to die, but Lido Yun remarked that the beast itself is nothing special. And if it was a dream team, he thought it possible, and his companion agreed that they were doing well this far. But this time, the situation would be different. The audience in the auditorium was shocked and looking at the screen, so he looked there and was stunned. Meanwhile, inside the dungeon of the nine-star monster, Miniol assumed a money ghost possessed their captain. He asked Cyan if he was always like that, and she replied that he was always like that, but it was not this bad. He wants them to do their best since it was the last round with 10 billion one online. Soon, they sensed the ominous energy around them and were shocked to see the monster. Everyone in the stadium was surprised to see the beast as it was Draugr, not even a 10-star monster. It was a 10-star monster that posed extreme difficulty among all the 10 stars. He wondered if they were planning to kill them all, as mind-type monsters were forbidden, so he asked why it was there. He wondered if it was an error, so he jumped out of the fence and rushed toward them. The appearance of a 10-star monster was not a big problem because there was no way students would die just because they received damage from a demon conjured by sorcery. However, there is only one case of death by a monster conjured by sorcery, a mental attack by a mind-type monster. It is because mental damage means that their brain will be damaged. Even if the attack is an illness, the mental damage will still be applied in full. In the past, the conjured mind-type monster that caused the casualty was around 5 minus 6 stars. However, the mind-type monster in front of them was Draugr, a whopping 10-star monster, which was not the monster the students could deal with. Lee Miniol was crying and saying that he didn't do it, and Cyan was also calling, requesting not to kill her dad. He was sure that at this rate, all the students in the dream team would die a horrible death. He entered the maintenance room where the man was instructing them to get out of there immediately. 
They told him they had already sent someone, but maybe because of overload, it was impossible to access it. Lidonan instructed them to break the mana core and cut off the mana supply or do anything else, but they were worried about the cost of implementation rather than people's lives. Lidoan gets furious with them as they would rather have people die than throw away a few billion won. They agreed that nothing was more important than those children's bright future. He wondered what kind of researcher Young Jimin was, but they were shocked as they saw the protagonist completely fine. They wondered what a Draugr was doing there, and it hypnotized all of them. The Draugr smiled as he imposed the mind-type magic on them, and the weakness deep down in their mind haunted them. The protagonist wonders what is wrong with them and if they are all right. Soon, the Draugr was trying to weaken its mind that he might be on a winning streak right now, but how long will it last? Deep down in his mind, he still thought that he was actually nothing and shameless and always questioned himself if he could ever last, even after becoming professional. Although these were all his dark thoughts, which Draugr thought would traumatize him, he was completely fine. The Draugr is surprised, and the protagonist's lecture progress on Buddha's increases. The protagonist rushes to attack him with his long ganu, and he gets terrified, so he starts haunting him with ominous thoughts. If the Transcension Academy ad hadn't appeared, he would be nothing. He was nothing but an empty shell, and Kim Seo Joon knew these were not the Draugr's whispers because the Draugr's evil thoughts were eroding his unconscious thoughts. These are the seeds of doubts and anxiety he has harbored, and then he remembered Buddha's words that he shouldn't tie himself up with his imagination. Since coincidence eventually leads to a connection, connections eventually lead to destiny. This coincidence will ultimately lead to forgiving his destiny, and these Buddha's words take away all of the ominous energy from him. Draugr again whispered that coincidence is one word that will make everything accounted for in what would happen if he wasn't the student of Transcension Academy. He couldn't achieve anything on his own, before or now, and those whispers were pulling him deep down in dark words. Then he remembered Buddha's comments that a depressed person talks about the past while an anxious man speaks of the future. The person at peace with himself talks about the present, and he explains with an example that if a painter becomes greedy, he indiscriminately puts too many colors on the canvas. In the end, the whole canvas will be dyed black. Sometimes, people need to let go of the burdens of their hearts. If he is confused, he should accept their resentment. He should climb up the green mountain, lie down, hear the sound of water, and watch the clouds float around the sky. Ultimately, he is also the child of the universe and deserves to be where he is, and Buddha's inspirational words pull away the evil thoughts seeded by Draugr. He reached near the monster, but it once again tried to tremble and scatter his mind. He whispered that although great, the abundance of resentment and peace of mind asked if he thinks he deserves to have something like that. He takes his form and tries to sway him, but Buddha's words help him stand firm. He asked him what he thought of Buddha, would they be remembered as living beings remembered an omniscient existence? Upon recalling the venerable appearance of Buddhas, you will probably say so, but he was not made of only the great moments that the world remembers. They accept and learn something new at every moment of their lives. The great images that the world remembers are nothing but the giving away of something that was accepted in life. If he doesn't accept the moment of life, he has nothing to give, and if he has nothing to inherit, he wouldn't have anything to share. All these moments in their breath make a person who he is and strengthen him in their critical moments. The Buddha's words take all of his negative thoughts away and push away the negative shadow created by Draugr. He rushed toward the Draugr and it got terrified, which made all the nerves in his body tingle as he was electrocuted. But the seeds of anxiety and doubt in his heart had already withered, and any evil thought did not sway him, and he was in a state of unwavering heart. His Buddha's lecture progressed, and with the god's strength, he rushed toward the monster. He smirked as it was too late for the Draugr to dodge and thanked him as he was the best lecturer, and he killed him with his lance of longinus. This was unbelievable as the Draugr was a 10-star mind-type monster, and not a single cadet there could withstand its mental attack. Furthermore, physical attacks do not work on it since it's a ghost without a physical body. This was why only the Soul Saint could handle the 8 Draugr dungeon that appeared in Korea in the past. But it was killed by a single hit from Kim Seo Joon and Lee Doyon laughed as he was not someone their guild could handle. Meanwhile, everyone was shocked at the player waiting room to see how he defeated Draugr. Jung Si Woon was also surprised and wondered who did that because a 10-star monster, even if it was conducted using sorcery, would be at least an 8- or 9-star monster. From the beginning, attacking the 9-star monster is nearly impossible unless he is an S-rank hunter, and he realizes there is no way he could catch up to him. Meanwhile, the protagonist was glad he didn't collapse, just like he did with Dirad. He realized that it might be because of Buddha's lecture progress rate. During his 90-day free pass period, the progress rate went up to just 17.5%, but 
but now it is about 31.7%. It went up so much in such a short time. The protagonist was glad and thought Draugr was, in many ways, the best lecturer and was his progress rate booster machine. Later, both of them gain consciousness and are surprised as Kim Seo Joon defeats the Draugr by himself, and he smiles. They took him out of the dungeon, but he was startled by the sudden ambush of many people from different guilds and wanted to hire him. Many of them offered him to lead their guild, and they were shocked as they couldn't comprehend the situation. They were all gathered around him, and the staff member arrived and stopped them as the dream team suffered mental attacks. They needed to check their condition, so he requested them to give them some way and took them away. Later, Seo Yoon arrived and was worried about them, and she rushed to him and asked about the conditions of others. Fortunately, none of them suffered any severe trauma, and they checked their condition and didn't find significant abnormalities. She was so scared because she thought something terrible might happen to him. Even though he had not taken the professional hunter test, she couldn't see him as a student anymore in just a few months. It has already been decided from their first meeting that it will naturally happen and is worth celebrating. A few moments later, the association president arrived, and they were surprised, wondering why he appeared. The president was worried when he heard about the accident, which surprised the protagonist as he came for the Draugr accident. Kim Seo Joon is the man who brought the Azure Dragon Sword that the Sword Saint had never entrusted to anyone. Hey, he thought whoever was involved would have died when he heard that Draugr had appeared. But he took care of Draugr, so now he understands why the Sword Saint is interested in him. The president thought that since the Sword Saint's beloved daughter was also with him, he might be incredible and glad he came in person. Seo Yoon wondered how he knew the association president, and he uttered that he had sold the sword to him. The president asked about his health, but he was fine now, and because he came there personally, Kim Seo Joon wanted to ask him one question. He wondered what happened to make the sudden change of the monster in their final round. He asked why there was Draugr instead of the Revenant as the boss and was shocked to know that the dungeon core mana was overloaded. The president informed him that Young Jimin applied the result of her research on the mutation to the competition for the first time. The protagonist assumed that the mutation overloaded the dungeon mana core. Then, does it mean they could artificially create a distortion? And if they could do that, how was the cataclysm also a distortion? The president was apologetic and wanted to make sure that this kind of accident never happened again and he was not just trying to express his apology in words. The protagonist wanted to slide the matter for his sake, but when the president asked him if he wanted anything, Miss Park Seo Yu looked at him, unsure what he would demand. The protagonist agreed to settle the matter with 3 billion won, and the president agreed. Just like the last time he asked for the money, he assumed he might like money, but the association president was dumbfounded when he demanded 3 billion won for each. The raid battle with many twists, and turns has ended, and the overwhelming abilities that could bring shame to the elites of the top three academies have come to light due to the nine-star monster Draugr incident caused by the Monocore overload. From the guilds who want to recruit the Dream Team by offering them the best conditions to the ordinary people, everyone knew about them. Korea was on fire because of the Dream Team and Kim Seo Joon, who were the main characters of that fire. Meanwhile, Lee Miniol and Cyan wanted to take the three billion and give the rest to him, but he was reluctant since they all participated. Cyan remarked that they both played the man part in the tournament, but she didn't perform much. Lee Miniol said he didn't do much either since their captain took care of Druagar and did most of the tasks. They knew they would have been dead if it weren't for him, so he should sue all that money. He didn't think they would act like that, so he was pleased because they did not care about anything, and he hugged them tightly. He calculated all the prizes and offered money. The 9 billion won from the president total became 19 billion won. From those, Lee Miniol and Cyan took 3 billion each, and from the remaining, he had 22.5 billion won after adding his previous 9.5 billion won. He was glad because he could take the lecture of Heaven's Great Sages with just 4.5 billion more. He went to Miss Yoon's cabin and asked her if the Dream Academy would go up to the first division and she said yes. He gets excited because they can raid the High Star Dungeon now, but she informs him they can only do that if they have won a rank hunter in their party. He knew that Miss Seo Yoon was still a B-rank hunter at this rate. He was sure they wouldn't be able to get permission to raid the dungeon. She apologized to him as she wasn't capable, but he remarked that he wouldn't be able to participate in this tournament if it was not for her, so she shouldn't be worried. He was mortified, as he shouldn't have asked her, and he wondered what he could do now because he couldn't go to a six-star dungeon and make that much money. He wonders if he should wait longer to gather the remaining amount or take the mana lecture first. He thought it would be better to do both, so he asked the mentor. He texted him to meet as he wanted his advice, and the mentor immediately hopped out of the phone. 
he got terrified, and the mentor was thrilled because he was surprised this time. The protagonist asked him if he could show up before him in different ways, but it wasn't fun for him. The mentor asked him why he wanted to see him, and he explained the whole situation. He wondered which lecture he should first take, and the mentor thought for a while. He suggested he could take both lectures if he could get a casualty discount and asked if he wanted to try it. He explained a particular event where he could get a discount on the casualty assigned to him. The protagonist was surprised that a discount event also exists in Transcension Academy. He wondered how much discount he could receive, and his mentor informed him that he could receive up to 100%. The protagonist was shocked and assumed he could even get Heaven Great Sages to lecture for free and ask for the discount. The mentor stopped him and told him he couldn't get a discount by doing nothing. The protagonist inquired what he needed to do to get the discount, and the mentors informed him that there was an ongoing event at their academy. It's a support even for the students with the highest grades, which supports those with excellent mock exam grades. The protagonist was mortified and sullen because it was a mock exam for the transcension students. His grades were horrible the last time he took it. Still, unlike that time, he knew he had Jiang Senfeng's footwork and Hercules's power. He also has Buddha's unwavering heart, which has grown explosively compared to last time, so he should get better grades than before if he retakes the exams. Although it's impossible, it gets grades good enough to be one of the students with the highest grades. He was gloomy and the mentor thought that he made a mistake. The mentor told him that instead of saying students with the highest grades, it's more accurate to call them students with the highest grade improvement. Simply put, it's about how much his grades have improved compared to the previous mock exam grades. The discount rate would equal the grade improvement rate, so if his grades are 50% higher than the last mock grade, he will receive half a discount. It means he doesn't have to get the highest grade since the mock exam grades he received last time will be the standard. The protagonist was surprised because it meant his grades needed to improve. The mentor thought it would be possible at his current level, so he asked if he wanted to try it. The protagonist thought that if he could raise his points by 14.5 points, then it would be 50%, and could also increase it by 60%, and he doesn't want to miss that golden opportunity. Later, he prepared his fake old bar as he knew how Fafnir was crazy about the gold because he had seen it before and was confident this time. The mentor calculated his casualty fees for the mock exam, which came out to be 1 billion and he was surprised as he had to pay for the mock exams. The mentor gave him the phone and explained that the mock exams are only accessible to first-time test takers. He calculated the aftermath as he would have 21.5 billion left after this, so he needs to receive at least 60% to get them to 10.8 billion one. On top of that, if he considers the 2 billion costs for the elixir, he will need a 70% discount. He converted this into a grade of 20.3 points because he had 7 subjects and needed to increase each grade by 3 points. With all this calculation, he decided to take the mock exams, and a notification about its commencement appeared. The detailed notification regarding the mock exams appears based on the last question, and its difficulty is not on student casualty. It consists of 7 subjects, and scores are measured based on each question and point for each subject. The first subject was combat proficiency, which had 15 questions, and its first problem was appearing. The protagonist was sure it would be the Dragon of Destruction, Fafnir, so he grabbed the gold bar. The first problem appeared, so he immediately threw the gold bar and rushed to attack since they were distracted by the gold bar. The protagonist was shocked because another dragon with a nine heads hydra appeared instead of Fafnir. The mentor notified him about the first problem on the phone as he had to defeat the nine head hydra. He was speechless and worried as they didn't tell him the problem would be different, while the mentor wished him luck. The mentor thought he would be aware that the problem would be different because there was no way they would ask the same questions as the previous test. Because if they repeat the question, people would have to memorize the answers and go at it. He was curious why he bought the gold bar and assumed there might be a reason. The dragon was preparing to fire while rushing away, telling the mentor that he should have informed him earlier. He was shocked as the dragon attacked him with the breath of fire, and while falling, he thought he needed to increase each subject's grading by 3 points. He was evading all the dragon's attacks with the cloud ascending ladder. The mentor was amazed and asked when he mastered the foot technique because it had not been long since he had recommended it. The protagonist was aware that, for now, he could avoid its attack, but one of the dragon heads was near him, and he hardly managed to escape its attack. The poison just grazed him a little, but soon, the excruciating pain became unbearable, and he fell. He wondered why it was so painful as he can't take it, and it hurt him so bad that he preferred to die. 
he failed stage one, and the mentor went to him. He wondered if it hurt that much since he was crying. The mentor told him that Hydra's poison hurt terribly because it top-ranked monster in terms of poison, so it must have been painful. He remembered that in Greek and Roman mythology, he couldn't overcome the pain when Chiron was poisoned with Hydra poison. He said that he no longer wanted to be immortal and begged to be killed, and he also said the same in his lecture. Now he understands why he had to beg for it. Although he lost stage 1, Jiang Xinfeng's lecture progress rate went up. He thought if he continued like this, he would be able to receive casualty discounts and training simultaneously. But he was reluctant to retry and asked his mentor if they could stop right now. He uttered that he could stop if he wanted, but he can't guarantee that his point would be enough. Although he was crying as he had to face the same pain, he clicked on retry, and the dragon appeared before him. This subject was related to combat proficiency, meaning he could only get a good score if he somehow managed to damage the Hydra. Since that was the case, he pulled Gungnir out of his pouch and threw it toward them. It ordered to behead its one head and was glad to get one head and wondered if he cut snipe the rest of its head like this, then he could win. But he was shocked as the head regenerated and the Hydra attacked him while wondering what they wanted him to do. He again failed his stage one, and he fell on the ground, bearing excruciating pain. He wondered what he was supposed to do and was in trouble because, in his previous exam, he got 4.2 by hitting Fafnir once with the Lance of Longinus. He didn't know exactly how the score measured, and if it was based on effective hit, then he was confident he was screwed. He wondered how many heads he had to shoot down to get a higher score, but still, it grew back, so he wondered if he was doing right. Since he was having difficulty, his mentor suggested that he refer to the commentary lectures but reminded him that his score would be deducted. He started looking for the commentatory lecture while the mentor was rambling that even if his score was deducted, he might get a high score based on the lecture strategy. Still, the decision was his to make, and he started crying because he was confused and decided to try again without a commentatory lecture. The monster was roaring, the protagonist was weeping, thinking about the pain, and the mentor was cheering him up. He was cheering him that pissed him, and with an explosion, he failed again. His first subject, combat proficiency, ended, and the next subject exam would be in three days. His grades were measured, and he prayed to get higher grades, which were 8.8 .8 points. He was delighted since it increased by 4.6 points, and the mentor remarked that every time he see him, he had become a completely different person. Aside from the foot technique, the divine power in his last try was amazing and he wondered when he learned it. Judging from his growth rate, he was the student with the fastest growth rate he was in charge of. He was flattered by all the appreciation but got embarrassed when his mentor remarked that his standard was the most horrible. He would have liked it more if he hadn't said that, but it was the truth. He thought that the person who pretends to be pleasant from the outside but slanders from the inside is more hateful. He was glad as he successfully achieved his goal of scoring three more points in his first subject. He decided to keep this progress up as he could do it, but later he knelt on the ground as he screwed up everything. Nine days ago, his second test was essential endurance, and he had to hold up the heaven on behalf of Atlas, and the time limit was one hour. The protagonist requested him to wait as he had to wait until he got the golden apple. He was trying to hold him back, but he didn't hear him, and he wondered what kind of exam at this in basic endurance. His grade was 5.9 points, which increased by 2.2. Six days ago, his third test was reaction speed, and in level 1, he had to win in a staring contest against Argo Incarnation. He was staring at him while Argos was closing his first eye, and then he opened his second eye. He wondered how many eyes he has and his reaction speed grade was 4.2 which was increased by 1.9 points. Three days ago, his fourth test was Mana in level 1 had to endure the Arch Lick's Mana Drain during the time limit. The Lick told him to kneel before the inevitable and he moved his hand toward him which startled him and he started rising his Mana. Few moments later his all Mana drained out and the Lick asked if that was all he had. He replied at Bikase he had not taken any extra on Mana yet and he get 1.6 points in his mana grade which increased by 0.4 points. Present day, he thought he has screwed up as he didn't perform well I his all revious tests. His total grade was 9.1 points which was 11.2 points less than his target of 20.3. He asked his mentor if his grade improvement rate doesn't exceed 50% could he still get the discount. He denied because his grade improvement must go over E50% for him to receive the event benefit. He decided to think he threw the 1 billion one that he had spent on these mock exams out of the window, and they started their fifth exam. The subject was mental, and he had to listen to Archlick Requiem for 30 minutes. The Lick hoped he wouldn't disappoint him this time, 
and the protagonist was also determined to get a high score in this subject. Thirty minutes later, the leech praised him and disappeared, and he completed level one. He took a peaceful breath, luckily, he passed the first level and wanted to do the same last time. The second level was where it started real, he tried to keep it in his mind. Level 2 commences, and he needs to get rid of the ninth level demon possessing his mind within one hour. He heard the demon's voice, and he told him he wouldn't be able to get rid of him since he was with him now. He threw the demon out of his ear and wondered if he was spouting, and the devil asked if he was shaking water out of his ear. Level 2 completed, and level 3 started, and he had to resist goddess Aphrodite's temptations. She praised him, but he called her auntie and wondered if she didn't feel cold, and he completed level 3. The mentor was shocked, wondering how he completed this level, but didn't know as it was bearable for him. Level 4 commenced, and he had to endure the screams of the infinite hell for 30 minutes. They were screaming to save him and some to kill him while two blamed him as he killed him and made them like that. They wanted him to take responsibility and go with them as they were lonely. One of them grabbed him and screamed that it was all his fault, and he apologized and pushed him back as they hadn't met before. They were shocked and awkward when Kim Seo Joon asked if they knew him. He completed level 4, and the mentor was surprised, wondering how he was doing this all. Level 5 started in which he had to resist the pleasure of the Demon King's incarnation, Mephistopheles, for one hour. The Demon King uttered that even Foss couldn't endure this leisure the seven sins would soon become heaven that afflict his seven desires. His words were unbearable for him, and the Demon King enlisted those seven desires, which include lust, the hell of lust is heaven that doesn't reject any desire greed, and in this hell of greed, he could have everything as it is the heaven where there is no shortage of anything. Gluttony is hell, where food doesn't run out no matter how much he eats, and it is a heaven whole of abundance. The sloth, where even angels show their brightest smile is the heaven of negligence filled with nothing but rest. The wrath where he could control those who have tormented him to his heart's content, is the heaven specially for avengers. The envy is the hell of the envy that fulfills his jealousy of the things he couldn't get, heaven where he could accomplish anything. He could resist it somehow, so he thought if he could hold it just a little longer, he could complete this level. The last one was pride, which he could not resist, and his level failed compared to his previous level. This was not easy. He decided to try again, and he repeatedly tried again, but he failed, and soon he completed the exam for his fifth subject, mental strength. He could not stand the pleasure of the hell of pride till the end, but the mentor was shocked as he reached level 5. He just endured it and thought it was probably because of his unwavering heart progress has increased a lot. The mentor can't believe that in such a short amount of time he could increase this much. He asked about his progress on the unwavering heart lecture which was 31.7%. The mentor was shocked as there was no way he could manage to increase it that much because last time it was 15.5%. He can't believe it unless he sees it with his own eyes so he snatches his phone and checks his progress. He was shocked to know it was true and wondered how could something like his happen and he was shocked as he looked at Hercules's lecture progress which was more than half. The protagonist said it was because he was lucky and the mentor wondered if he was kidding him. He wondered what kind of heaven-defying luck does he have for the progress rate to increase this much. His expression really hurt him but his mentor was shocked to look at those numbers. Leaving all the other lectures aside he was more shocked as he managed to increase Buddha's lecture rate that much. No freshman could be able to get that much progress rate but he was speechless on hearing again that it was all because of his luck. His result for the fifth subject came out which was 22.8 points and increased by 13 points which made him happy. A few days later, they finally announced his result and he got 52.2 points and he was contented since he made it. His target was 70%, but he increased it by 80%, which meant he could get an 80% coupon discount and could finally listen to Heaven Equal Great Sage Lecture. He sighed peacefully because he would have been in trouble without the unwavering heart. The mentor couldn't believe this and wondered how something like this could happen and how he could get that high percentage. The protagonist called him as he was curious about how many points he needed to get not to fail. The mentor explained that he needed to score more than 60 points in each subject even if his total scores exceeded the passing score. He will automatically fail if he has a subject grade that is less than 6 points. The protagonist wondered how many points in total he needed to get past. The mentor calculated, but because it's different every time, he usually needs over 90 points, so he needs 630 points or more. The protagonist was shocked and looked at his current points, which are 52.2, and he was embarrassed. He searched for the lecture of the Heaven Equal Great Sage, and his mentor was amazed as he would listen to this lecture right away. He affirmed it because he didn't decide what mana lecture he wanted to listen to, yet he chose to take it. 
two lectures appear, one about the primary spearman ship and the other about heavenly meteor safety. Kim Seo Joon wondered how much the lecture on the heavenly meteor staff cost, no matter how expensive. He was sure he would take it with an 80% discount. He wanted to check it out, so he clicked at the lecture, but an error occurred. He needed to attend the class on Heaven's Great Sage Deflecting Grasping Piercing. He was not expecting this, but he was sure that one day, he would be able to learn the Heavenly Meteor Staff. For now, he decided to take the lecture that he could first, so he clicked on the other course, and its casualty was calculated. After the discount, it came out to be 5.4 billion won. This price still seemed too much to him, but the mentor remarked that it had become cheaper. He registered right away since it was no more than 27 billion won, and he clicked on the play button. But it didn't work, and he got worried that his money was wasted. The great sage appeared and apologized, and the protagonist was amazed to see him in the lecture commenced. He apologized for being late as he had to go somewhere for a bit because Master Tripitaka suddenly called him. He was enraged as that monk can't seriously do anything by himself and is no different from a kid. The protagonist was still amazed to see him as he was the heaven equal great sage, and he could finally take his lectures. He started the proper lecture and was going to teach them in the lecture the basic staff technique and spearmanship. These include deflecting, grasping, and piercing techniques, which he explained in the orientation. But for the spear and staff, there are three forms from which all these techniques start. He realized that some cadets had forgotten about that technique. But it was his fault since he was late, so he decided to use it again. He instructed the cadets to open their eyes and look carefully and showed deflection, an outward deflecting movement. With this technique, he slit the stone, and although it was Kim Seo Joon's second time looking at T but it's amazing. The second one was grasping, the movement of pulling the staff inward, and the force started pulling the elements inward. Lastly, the piercing, in which he stabs as if he is piercing through a single point, and the stone turns into small pieces. After explaining the basic fundamental techniques, he informed the cadet that if they needed to learn the heavenly meteor staff, they needed to master these movements first. Moreover, these techniques are not only applied to his heavenly meteor staff but are also indispensable if he wants to learn the spear staff technique. He instructed the cadets to remember what he showed them and practice reflecting until their following lecture. After the lecture ended, the daily task arrived, and he had to perform the technique of deflecting a thousand times and wondered what he was supposed to do. The mentor informed him that he has been taking the introductory lecture now, but he started with the immediate lecture, so everything he takes will be considered a transcension lecture. The professor wondered if there was any difference, and the mentor said it would be on a completely different level. It would be faster for him to feel himself, and he went to the ground and grabbed his spear just like the heavenly great sage did. He moved his seat in the air, and he was shocked as it worked and broke the ground. Meanwhile, the meeting was held between the three representatives of the top three academies, Gaon, Ale, and Hunter Mills. Su Jinhan was furious because the status of their top academies was unsuitable, as the community thought they couldn't be compared to the Dream Academy. Lee Jin Xiang wondered what he supposed them to do and if he was saying they should kill Kim Seo Joon. He was not talking about killing him, but he wanted to break his fighting spirit. But Jin Xiang thought he was crazy because the protagonist had the Sword Saint's support. So if something terrible happened to him, not just their neck but the Hunter Mills might disappear. He stood to leave and remarked that he would pretend he didn't hear anything just now. Cha Haiyin also decided to go with him, but Su Jin Hyun asked if the exchange tournament would be held soon. She wondered if he was thinking of sending Lee Hyun out, and he smiled wickedly. The protagonist can't believe this because, with a simple swing and minimal movement, he could cause that much destruction. It was as if he used the god's strength while swinging, but it drained considerable energy. The mentor explained that this was why the Heavens Equal Great Sages course is an intermediate level one. He took the beginner transcension lecture for strength and attended a class beyond his limits. The current Kim Seo Joon would have no choice but to struggle, and he realized that taking high-level courses is not always a good thing. The mentor smirked and uttered that they didn't plan out the curriculum for no reason. The protagonist knew that only 10 repetitions would be impossible at this rate, so how could he do a thousand? The mentor said it's still not impossible because he would have urged him not to take it if it were impossible. The protagonist wondered if there was another method and the mentor asked if he was not planning on taking the Mana lecture as well. Because he had a high progress rate in Hercules' lecture, he could do it if he took the Mana lectures along roughly. The protagonist asked the mentor if he meant he should choose what he preferred for Mana. The mentor suggested that he listen to the sample lecture, and since he wanted to attend the lecture, he should listen immediately. Then, he looked at the list of Mana cultivation lectures and decided to listen to the Swordsman Dongbin Lu's lecture first. 
he started the class, and the instructor explained that rowing kai is just like increasing the size of a bowl, and that bowl is known as danchen, which is an elixir point. So they will follow the danchen, the body's most crucial part. Danchen is defined in three parts, upper danchen, central danchen, and lower danchen. Upper danchen refers to the practitioner spirit, the world entering samadhi which means Tatsma and Law, the ultimate bowl of the transcendent world and can turn humans into a god through transcendian. It uses the central parts of a person who heads the realm of Gong, which is why the upper danchen is the most important. The instructor informed him that he wouldn't be covering anything related to the realm of the upper danchen in this lecture. The protagonist wonders what he is saying even though he has no clue but gets the gist because of Merlin's lecture insight. A body part called Gong the brain because it is a significant part of the upper danchen. He wondered if it would be the mind domain. For mana, the upper area is the brain, the central is the heart, and the lower area is the stomach. To summarize his lecture, if he compared it to mana cultivation, the usefulness of Kai goes down, but it's easy to accumulate. After taking that lecture, the protagonist could comprehend the mentor's message about safety and proficiency in Ammon cultivation. Something was missing, so he took Siegfried's sample lecture, but he misunderstood something. He decided to ask the mentor something and wondered what the issue was. He was speechless to hear Kim Seo Joon wanted to take both lectures simultaneously. He uttered that according to instructor Lu Dongbin, Upper Danchen is the mind, which means Buddha's talk could play a role in this. Although the wavering heart was the subject learned during the process of transcendence, they could say that all transcendent beings taught themselves the upper Danchen through Siddhartha Gautama's unwavering heart. This means it is central Danchen and lower Danchen. If he takes a mana lecture, he could use both at once. So he thought taking three simultaneously wouldn't be impossible, and the mentor wondered if it worked that way. He wondered if it was that way but couldn't know the details if he reviewed the lecture's content. The protagonist was surprised as the Merlin lecture progress rate increased, so he was sure of taking those lectures. The protagonist asked if the other students he had been in charge of said anything. The mentor said that they picked according to their references, but he thought if there wasn't a different story till now, then it meant it didn't work. The protagonist wondered if the manager could tell the instructor about it because he wanted to ask the community but he couldn't leave anything in the bulletin. He wondered if it would be more accurate to ask the instructor in person and wondered if it was because of an internet lecture, or money again that they couldn't ask. The mentor assured him it was nothing like that, but the protagonist gazed at him fiercely and asked if other students asked about the content, too. He wanted to learn both lectures on a man, but the problem was money again. He decided to think about it later when the mentor returned, and he reached the academy and wondered who those people were. Miss Seo Yoon instructed him to introduce himself to them as they are representatives of the Gaon, Ale, and Hunter Mill Academies. Three introduced themselves to him while he wondered what they were doing at his academy. They informed him about the exchange process, an unofficial tournament between three academies. However, the Dream Academy is more qualified to join their exchange tournament. They wanted him to participate, so he wondered what the prize was, but he was shocked as there was no prize. It was just an exchange tournament. The only goal was to compete with their geniuses to grow their skills. The protagonist asked Seo Yoon if his attendance would benefit the academy, but there was nothing like that because it's an unofficial tournament. Nothing like that matters. He refused to participate because there was nothing he could gain after winning. They were shocked and furious as he refused the incredible opportunity to compete with the geniuses and wanted him to think about it again. Because they were so persistent, he asked Miniel if he wanted to participate in the exchange tournament. Although he had learned the new skill, Lee Miniel didn't care about it. But he wanted to try it on his captain, but he obviously wouldn't pass. The protagonist bids his farewell to them as it is decided that Miniel will participate in the tournament. All three representatives wondered what they should do about the current situation. A few moments ago, when they stopped Kim Seo Joon and asked him what he wanted, he explained that he needed 6 billion won prize money. They didn't know he was that big of a lunatic regarding cash. Cha Hyeen also can't believe he was saying that the reward must be at least 6 billion won for him to participate. Lee Jin Seong said that if Kim Seo Joo is out, there is no point in the tournament because they plan to beat him. Still, it is a ridiculous statement to think 3 would be a reward in the exchange tournament. Meanwhile, they asked him why he needed the money again and he went insane thinking about it. Later, he entered the room, cleared his throat, and apologized for taking so long. The protagonist asked if everything had ended well since there seemed to be a conflict in the discussion. Su Jin Hyun explained that they wanted an exchange tournament with him, 
They hoped that if their student competed with him, they would be less concerned and improve their skills. Since he said he wouldn't participate without a reward, they have no choice but to think about what to do. However, at the end of their discussion, they decided to put in a bonus, but they had a few conditions. Meanwhile, Cyan was practicing when the magic saint instructed her to compress her mana a little more through a magical globe. Lee Minyeol was also practicing his new skills, and Kim Seo Joon was amazed to see them as they were working hard. The reward was decided at 6 billion won as he initially suggested, and it would be paid differently, with the second place getting 4 billion won and the third place getting 2 billion won. So the reward will be 12 billion won, and the method is not a team match but an individual match. So if he won, he could get 6 billion won, and there was nothing special about it till then. But there were few conditions because the reward given to them would be one-sided, so they would decide the tournament's method and rules. The protagonists thought they were given the reward so they could at least ask for that much. They wanted everyone from the Dream Academy to participate in this tournament. He looked at them, and Lee Many didn't mind it, and Cyan also agreed because she had been training a lot these days and wondering how strong she had gotten. The protagonist asked if they had any other condition than these two, and they had, but they remarked that one person hadn't agreed yet. They wondered what he was talking about because there was no other cadet than them, but he was shocked as he remembered about Miss Seo Yoon. At present, she was practicing hard, and he wondered why they would want him if it were an individual match. He inquired if she was doing this all for him and then she didn't need to overwork herself. She uttered that she had always only received help from him but gave nothing in return, so she wanted to be helpful this time. The protagonist was surprised to hear it as she was the one who had always helped him more than he could ever ask. She told him to go because she was alright and he didn't need to be concerned about her. He left because he also had things to prepare for the exchange tournament. He wondered why he hadn't heard from the mentor when he said he would return soon. His phone rang, and he received a message from the mentor who instructed him to stop taking the mana lectures for a while, and he wondered what he meant. The mentor tested that it was a bit complicated to explain through the test, and he will hear the answer from the directors since he puts an inquiry. He wondered if something happened and assumed he should raise all his existing progress bars for now. A few days later, on the morning of the exchange tournament, they were amazed to look at the building, which was big enough to have the riot battle. Yet they said it is an unofficial competition, and he doesn't think he is just a regular exchange tournament. Ms. Seo Yoon remarked that the top three hunter academies are called the top three for a reason. The protagonist saw the journalist on the other side and assumed they planned to show it to the journalist. Ms. Seo Yoon checked the list of the first round among the students. On hearing this, Minyeol and Cyan turned and started praying. Cyan didn't want to have the match with Kim Seo Joon and Minyeol first. But Minyeol doesn't want to have the duel with his captain but intends to fight with Cyan, which surprises her. M. Nile peeked at Seo Joon's practice session yesterday, which was insane as the swing of the spear caused colossal destruction. The protagonist realized he might have seen heaven equals a great sage daily task. While they were still praying, the journalist saw Lee Hyun with her bodyguards. The journalist surrounded her and asked her for a reason behind publicizing the exchange tournament. She ignored them, and her guard protected her from them, and the man led her inside. At the same time, they were asking questions about whether she was participating in the tournament or just observing. The journalist asked her if it was confirmed as there were rumors that she didn't participate in the tournament because of Kim Seo Joon. Her killing aura was unbearable for them, and the journalist remarked that he didn't mean that as he just heard the rumor, and she asked who is Kim Seo Joon. Lee Minyeol realized it was Hunter Mills Lee Hyun. He had heard about her but saw her for the first time. He remarked that she was beautiful, and Cyan wondered why he would utter that without any reason. He praised her because she was gorgeous, and he thought it was not wrong for a pretty person to be lovely. Cyan uttered that the situation wasn't right, and secondly, he didn't even praise her once. He remarked that she is still a high schooler, but can't understand why being a pretty high schooler matters. But this matters to him, and she gets furious and tells him to stop teasing her. She is still furious but is startled as she hears a journalist surprised by the appearance of Kim Seo Joon. They realize that Dream Academy is also participating in the exchange tournament, and realize the reason behind making the tournament partially public. The journalists wanted to interview him to know if he was going against Lee Hyun. He thanked her for gaining their attention, and she realized he was teasing her for Kim Seo Joon and they headed inside. At the Dream Academy waiting room, the staff member informed them that using personal equipment is strictly prohibited in this tournament, as they would provide the equipment and hand the weapons to everyone except Sion. He asked her if she needed anything, but she refused. Lee Minyeol liked the quality of the bow, but he was not used to it, and Miss Seo Yoon was also uncomfortable. 
Cyan told him that craftsmen never blame their tool, but he disagreed and asked if she had ever seen those craftsmen use crude tools. He told her the craftsmen said that because they already use good tools, and she said she was joking. He gets furious as she teases him because she doesn't have the weapon and gets her revenge. They asked their captain if he was okay with his weapon, but he did not care much, and he was not that picky about firearms, and they started fighting. Later, the first duel between the protagonist and the Gaon Academy cadet began. He wondered how he was who made them prohibit personal weapons. On top of that, Young Siwoo also did not plan on participating in an exchange tournament. He thought it might be because he heard the rumor that Lee Heon was participating and thought he was afraid of her. But that was barely the reason, so he wondered why he wouldn't be experiencing it, and he told him it was because Kim Seo Joon was participating. He was furious because Young Siwoo backed out because he was afraid of this guy. He wanted to take this chance to show him how the absolute super rookie is. As the referee started the match, the protagonist got out of sight, and he was surprised as he lost his movements. Suddenly, he sensed his presence behind him, felt the danger, and blocked his attack. He wondered what kind of strength he had and was trembling while the protagonist lifted his spear and attacked him. He pushed him back, and without giving him enough time to prepare, he rushed toward him and pointed the spear at him. He started trembling and threw his sword, and the protagonist won the match. He was shocked to see the crack on the spear, and the protagonist was also aware that would happen, so he was uneasy about it. If they had ended the duel even a bit later, the spear would have shattered, and he would have gotten terrified and fallen to the ground. The protagonist called the staff to change the spear into something sturdy so he couldn't use his strength correctly because he was worried it might shatter earlier. He got the new spear, as he thought his spear couldn't withstand his strength. He was uneasy from the moment he got the spear but never thought it would get cracked with just three swings. He was sure that if this continued, he would have to change his weapon after every round of the competition. Miniol and Cyan were thrilled by his terrific duel, and Miniol remarked that what he showed during training was not everything. Cyan said everyone was going insane because of what had happened to him. Miss Seo Yoon also informed them that an article about him had already been published. Since the Dream Academy had already entered the exchange tournament held between the top three academies of Korea, they wondered who would win between Kim Seo Joon and Lee Hyun. The protagonist was amazed to see the article, which seemed like the reporters at the entrance route. He thought this response was insane as it was even a recommended search. On top of that, since the top three guilds will pay for all the expenses spent during the exchange tournament, they just wanted them to notice him. The protagonist assumes that Lee Hyun might be amazing, but Minile disagrees as his captain is fantastic, not her. He wonders who Lee Hyun, his captain, is comparing himself with her. Park Seo Yoon laughed, agreed with Minile, and said his captain was terrific. Whether internally or externally, people had a strong image of Lee Hyun as a wall that could not be overcome, and people were bound to go crazy because Kim Seo Joon would break that wall. Cyan agreed and showed the comment where the people were going crazy, calling him an out-of-touch irregular. Lee Miniol remarked that he would go with her without hesitation if he had to choose between Lee Hyun and his captain as his opponent. Cyan said she would select Miniol as her opponent, and he was brought up suddenly and the main lead laughed at their quarrel. Su Jinhyun asked her opinion about the protagonist and remarked that there is a reason why he has been mentioned so much. He asked her if she could win against him and told her not to be burdened even if she lost. Being second would be all right. She uttered that no matter how much he tries to fly or crawl in the end, he is just an irregular at the level of a student. He looked at her as if he thought she was right, so out of concern, he asked her not to mind what he said. He looked out of the window toward him, whose spear again shattered, and wanted the staff to change again, and he was concerned. The tournament and the search for the victor continued, and Minyul climbed considerably, as expected. Even though he thought Cyan would struggle, she has been fighting well. The protagonist also won and requested to replace his spear, and the staff member was shocked to know it shattered again. He kept trying to control his strength, but since his opponents were extraordinary cadets, it was much more complex than he thought. The man asked how many weapons he had replaced, and he told him that, including this one, was nine. The man was shocked because considering that one weapon is 10 million one and roughly calculating the replacement of those in firearms, the cost easily surpasses a billion one. He was worried because, at this cost, the weapon cost would surpass the prize money, which is the situation where the belly button is more significant than the belly. It's not like they could say they can't replace something broken. The protagonist called them and suggested that if it were going to be like this, it would be better for him to use his spear. They wondered if situations like this continue, then wouldn't it be safer to be safe since it is flexible, and not a particular treatment. They asked if CEOs had no plans to change the rules, and they rushed to ask them. 
The protagonist was sure they would figure their way, and he saw Cyan trembling beside her. He was worried about her and wondered why she was trembling so much. Her face also turned pale, and she informed him that her opponent was Lee Hyun. He now understands her reaction as the burden might be significant to her because it hasn't been long since she started learning from the magic saint. She wondered if she could perform well, and he laughed and told her it was not like she was going to a dungeon raid or anything. He told her it doesn't matter whether she loses or wins, she doesn't need to be stressed because it's a good thing to be competitive, but being too obsessed with it isn't good either. She was worried because she hadn't been helpful in the raid battle last time and because of the sense of accomplishing things together and being acknowledged by people. A sense of accomplishment felt after improving her abilities and the process of all that was so enjoyable for her. That was why she couldn't fill that gap more than anyone. She wanted to show that she could also do something and was worthy of standing side by side with them. The protagonist wishes her luck and decides to do her best because she wants to check her worth. Since both of them were ready, the match commenced, and she rushed back. Lee Hyun didn't attack her, and she told her to try everything she could. Cyan wondered what she meant by this, and Lee Hyun said that by doing this, she would realize how insignificant she was, so she should give it everything she has until she can't anymore. From her posture, as her weapons touched the floor, she realized she hadn't even gotten into a combative stance. She gets furious and wants to ensure she regrets what she has said. Lee Hyun wondered how every single person she met managed to say the same thing. She activated her magic fear that created a thick skin and put pressure on the opponent, and her presence was blocked so she rushed to attack her. Su Jinhyun and Cha Haiyin were surprised she was a me but still fighting at close range with Hyun as the opponent. She continuously tried to hit her but dodged the attack, so she cast the spell above her. Li Hyun still escaped while she was chasing her, trying to punch her. Cha Haiyin was amazed because she was just a student but could already cast magic while moving so turbulently. It hurt her pride, but she could see why their students had such a hard time. If a mage plays in the back and casts powerful magic, they have done their job as a party member. But she wondered if that was the case in actual battle. What if their mana gets messed up and if they are in a state where the mana is constrained? What if there is a mana explosion, the world has no more mana, and there is no hunter to protect them? It can be ruined anytime, and she was the mage thoroughly focused on her performance. However, after the magic saint, that method disappeared, and Lee Miniol cheered her to pressure Heyoon more. Meanwhile, the protagonist identified her technique as the hero of Cataclysm, and the peak of the mages, the magic saint used that battle method. At the prime of the Cataclysm era, the magic saint was also known as the Disaster. With that in mind, other countries called the magic saint. He could see the apparent deflection of the magic saint in her, and she punched her, but she dodged the attack. Lee Hyun wondered if that was all she could do, so she punched her and asked her if she could get the gap between them. She grabbed her and smiled as she got her, then cast magic on her. But she was surprised as she only managed to rip her clothes a bit, and didn't make a single scratch on her. She slapped her, and she was thrown back, and everyone was shocked, and she went to her, grabbed her, and slammed again. The protagonist gets furious and steps forward but she stops him. The staff member arrived as she was continuously slapping her and ordered her to stop immediately. She threw her away, and the protagonist rushed toward her, and Hyun remarked she was nothing special. He was furious and heading toward her, but she stopped because she was not good enough, and everyone rushed toward her. Right after Hyun's fight, healers were assisting Saya, and thankfully, there weren't any significant injuries. The only punishment given to Lee Hyun for committing such a violent act was a mere warning. Later, Lee Miniel apologized as he was trying to avenge Cyan, but he also ended up losing. He told Kim Seo Joon to be careful because there is a reason people call her the best. This Seo Yoon was furious because, after Cyan, she did that to Miniel and decided to go out and protest more strongly. The protagonist told her not to protest and leave it be, but she wondered why. After that, the exchange tournament continued, however, he couldn't remember. This Seo Yoon's worried expression, the number of times he has to replace his spear. The announcement was made for him that if he is ready, he should head up to his spot. After he arrived, the announcement for her opponent, Lee Hyun from Hunter Mills, was made to head to her spot. The match that everyone had been looking forward to was about to start. Before the match started, he wanted to ask her if it was necessary to go that far. She's the most talented pro hunter, so she has probably never experienced the frustration of playing around with an uncertain future. The reality and despair of working hard yet being unable to move forward. 
He asked her if she knew that despair was the proof of one's effort, and she trampled on that effort. She could not dare to disregard it, even with her well-rounded skills, and she asked him if they should begin the match if he had done with his speech. The protagonist realizes she doesn't get it with him just saying it to her. He told her to try it, and she was startled, wondering what he meant, so he said she should try everything she could. She gets furious as he repeats her words, and he tells her that she should see how it feels too and realize just how shitty it feels by herself. She remarked that he seemed to think he was something because people praised him a little. She told her to quit bluffing when he came up there by trampling on insignificant people. The protagonist realized it still hadn't gone through her head, and the referee asked them if they were ready. They started the match, and she grabbed her sword, but he was standing still, and she wondered what he was doing. The protagonist reminded her, as he had already told her, that she should try everything she could. He rambled her words, how dare someone like her, and how everyone always managed to say the same thing. She gets furious and rushes to attack him, but he escapes her every strike. He yawned, and she struck him again but failed, so he asked, as this couldn't be the best she could do. She rushed back, prepared the aura blade, and ran toward him as if he couldn't do anything, and it might seem like it would get her. She attacked him, but he blocked, and the energy produced was so enormous and bright that it dazed everyone's eyes. She felt like she was getting pushed back and couldn't believe it and the protagonist pushed her back. The protagonist informed her that he would fight with her for real now and used his skill deflection. She was special even without putting in bone-crushing efforts like others, she easily made it to the top. In other words, she had an overwhelming ability, a true talent that vastly overwhelms efforts. At some point, people started saying that she was the most talented hunter in history. She didn't feel the least proud or pleased about it because she knew it's the truth. At present, she was surprised to hear he would start for the real and wondered if what he did just now wasn't real. The protagonist used his technique deflect, which caused such tremendous destruction that she coughed out blood. She wondered what's happening because all he did was lightly swing his spear. Then he used his technique grasp, which pulled her, and she was inverted before him. He attacked with pierce techniques, which generated such a robust blow that his spear got broken, and she was thrown back. She can't believe this because it's not possible and even didn't make sense to her, and this was weird because there was no way he could be more potent than her. She wondered how there could be someone more skilled than her in the universe because she was the owner of the most incredible skill in all of the pro hunter history. The protagonist threw his broken spear away and told her the match wasn't over. She couldn't accept her defeat, so she grabbed her sword and attacked him. But he punched her and cursed at him. The staff members wondered what to do and if they should stop them. But his fellow remarked that looking at the situation, they could tell that Heyoon, who was holding the weapon, was in a more advantageous situation compared to Kim Seo Joon without the one. On top of that, Lee Heyoon did not seem to have any plans of quitting while he was continuously punching her. He was sure that she wouldn't know, but there are people who live their whole lives getting beaten up by others. She wondered what bullshit he was spouting, and he uttered that life is incredibly hard and they were not gifted with an overwhelming talent like her. So they lived their lives getting beaten up every day without having a choice. She attacked him, but he evaded, and she wondered why her sword was not reaching him. When she got exhausted, he asked her if she knew what was more surprising and uttered that those people don't care much about fighting back or winning. Even though they have lived their entire lives getting eaten up, they care more about moving forward than fighting back. So, no matter how strong of a punch they receive, they don't fall and go forward little by little. He approached her, and she started trembling. But he kept telling her that when those people receive strong hits again and again, they still got up repeatedly. For a moment, they might stay down, but eventually, they moved forward, which was the only way to win a battle that was impossible to win to keep fighting. And that's what true talent is. But she remarked it was all rubbish because something so insignificant like this couldn't be a true talent as she was the most talented. The protagonist asked if she was saying she was the most talented individual in all of pro hunter history. He lifted his arm to punch her and remarked that she was ridiculous because she was trembling just from a few hits from his fist and asked what kind of great talent is she. He was furious and informed her that they were not the people that someone like her could dare to trample and belittle. With God's strength, he punched her, and she felt like her pride in being the most talented hunter was shattered. He stopped before punching her as her pride shattered, she was also torn apart, and she knelt. Everyone was shocked, and he asked her how it was and if she had opened her eyes a bit with this, he got the victory at the exchange tournament round one. Later, all three top academy representatives were meeting, and they wondered what they should do now. Lee Jin Xiong was not confident in winning if he fought against Kim Seo Joon. Cha Hyeen was surprised because even though it had been some time since he had retired, 
He was once an S-rank hunter. He is also the presenter of Gaon, one of three great academies in Korea, but he was saying he couldn't win against him. Su Jin Hyun doesn't want to admit it, but he also thinks the same way because those three blows overwhelmed Lee Hyun, which wasn't a student's level. Cha Hyun remarked that he wasn't at this level during raid battles in the past. Su Jin Hyun thought that something might happen to Kim Seo Joon after the raid battle, but he was still confident as the exchange tournament hadn't ended yet. Lee Jin Seong gets furious because there is no point in saying it because he is already out of their reach, and they can't beat him. Su Jin Hyun agreed because he was right, and they should accept the truth. Because there is no way to beat him, however, they could use that against him. Meanwhile, the reporter was chasing him for the interview to confirm the rumors that he had been the disciple of the sword saint. They wanted to know if he had thought what he would do after the hunter exams. They were stunned to see him running mid-air and decided to take his photos for the article. Kim Seo Joon defeated them, but the Dream Academy did not defeat them. She was worried about him, but he successfully managed to escape from the sight of the reporters and reach their waiting room. She wondered how he managed to get there as reporters were outside, which was why she was so trapped inside. He was frustrated because he had gotten through them while they were blocking the way. She showed him the article and told him it was because Korea was flipped entirely. He was surprised to look at the comment that even as a pro hunter, he couldn't reach the skills of the most excellent of all time and remarked that he was a hero rank and out of touch. He wondered when something like that got posted, and the comments won't stop coming up in real time. Everyone praised him because even Hyun could win against him, and some thought he would have no issue at his level, even if they called him a level student. He was stuck at one comment saying that the Academy CEO is a B-rank hunter. After that, there was a load of negative comments about her, that she was freeloading him and was trying to suck the life out of a good student. He was surprised by the enormous number of comments about Miss Seo Yeon and gazed at her. She smiled and went to him because, aside from that matter, they should think of how to go about the second round. He was surprised to hear the second round and wondered if it would be a team match. She remarked that what he thought was correct as it was a team dungeon raid scheduled with the participating members. He wondered what they should do because Sayona and Minyul were in the hospital, so a team match was impossible. She was going to ask the people associated with the event, but the reporters all trapped them. She thought everything was slowly wrapping up outside as she heard the voice of a staff member moving away from the reporters. She was going to ask about round two, so she requested him to rest before the second round. After she left, he sat on the sofa as he was all worn out after using the god's strength at the last minute, and he wondered if he should make her faint. He used the power of god because he was emotional, but now that he thinks about it, that might not have been necessary. While he was all worn out, the mentor appeared from the hind and was in extreme shock. He was so shocked that his sofa flipped back, and the mentor wondered why he was so shocked, but he asked how he could not be surprised. Even though the mentor was highly apologetic at the moment, he was sure that he would do it again and wondered if it was his habit. He decided to forget it and asked him how things went in the academy. The mentor uttered that he brought his questions to many instructors and made sure he also asked the principal. All the instructors said it was impossible and shook their heads, and his answer made him gloomy. Kim Seo Joon sighed as it was fair because there was no way other transcended didn't think the same thing as him. The mentor called him and said that he had to listen until the end when someone was talking, and he told him that the principal said if it was Kim Seo Joon, then it might be possible. Surprised, he wondered what this meant, that it was only possible if it was him. But all the principal told the mentor was that it might be possible, but she wasn't too sure about it. In the beginning, she said that using the middle and lower D nations simultaneously is impossible, and he wondered why she said that in the end. From then on, the mentor told him that everything he said was officially from the principal as it was her opinion. Firstly, everyone brings a set amount of mana they can take in and use, which is the source of the essence of existence that couldn't exceed the quota of existence, the limitation of source that existence could bear, so the restriction of causality can be the middle danchen or lower danchen. Just one of these is enough. The being that can save this allocated casualty quota might collapse or disappear altogether. However, even if Kim Seo Joon used middle and lower Dantain, his existence wouldn't collapse or disappear. The protagonist wonders why his mentor explained it because his casualty hasn't been measured. He told him that no matter what, his casualty had never been counted, and he asked him if he remembered what happened last time. He didn't have an ID then, so he reported it to the principal. Since his causality isn't assured, he also doesn't have an assigned limitation. Following that, keeping two Danatane usages to account makes it possible for him not to collapse or disappear. 
That was what the principal said, and she said there are a few points to keep in mind when using two dantians simultaneously. First, it is to open up both the dantian simultaneously, and second, it is to put up with the immense burden of casualty. The protagonist was worried about knowing the burden of casualty, and the mentor told him if he opened two types of dantian simultaneously. Then, of course, the mana needed to full hose dantian needs to rise along. But the number doesn't just double, it increases exponentially. Using such incredible power is possible. However, he heard it was impossible to make up for it using simple training. So it is essential to use an elixir to supplement the mana, and to put it simply, he realized he had to pour an enormous amount of money into this. He was trembling and wondered how he could give up even more like this, and thanks to all this, he was still living a single bedroom life. The mentor uttered that although this is just his personal opinion, he believes it's worth giving it a go. The principal doesn't use the word it is possible lightly. If she said it, he could see it as possible. He would be transcended that uses all three dantians, and if that were possible, then unthinkable things would start happening. It seems to him that the principal was looking forward to it because she even said yay. She would need to leave her spot as principal for it to be possible. The protagonist gets curious and wonders what kind of person the principal of the Transcension Academy is. Although it was difficult to tell him her identity, he could say she was the second transcended if he asked to take precautionary measures. He wondered who the second transcended, and the mentor was shocked as he didn't tell him about the history of their Transcension Academy. This was the first time he had heard about it, and he couldn't believe he hadn't told him such an essential and entertaining story. On that note, he decided to tell him the story of their Transcension Academy, and suddenly, the door opened, and Miss Seo Yoon returned. The mentor immediately vanished in the air, and Miss Seo Yoon heard him talking with someone, but he tried to defy it by saying she was imagining things. He asked her about the discussion on the matter of the second round. Su Jin Hyun came to inform him about that matter because the meeting had just finished. Since the exchange tournament has students, it is a significant opportunity for them to compete at their best along with other students. All the host representatives of the academy gathered and had a meeting, and in the discussion, most of the votes shifted to continue with the second round. Miss Seo Yoon was worried because they could only send Kim Seo Joon from their academy. He said that was why they would switch up the rules slightly in the second round. He asked for their opinion and wondered what they thought about proceeding with the dungeon raid with teams of one student and one instructor, not all students. The protagonist thought that if it was like that, he and Miss Seo Yoon could be a team and enter. But she was a B-rank hunter, and if they are talking about the other teams, the instructors from the top three hunter academies are A-rank, at least. There was already enough going around about her in the community, so if the gap is shown this way, it might further damage her image. Instead of worrying about this, she asked them if there was additional prize money, and Su In Hyun was dumbfounded. The original rules and methods were changed suddenly and altered one-sidedly, meaning they could also request something. He asked her how much money she wanted, and she looked at the protagonist. She told him not to worry about her as the director, she had never been helpful to him, so she needed to help at least once. She also didn't care what those people said about her because it meant nothing to her. Before the prize money, he wanted to give them the counteroffer that they should switch to representatives instead of an instructor in the team. Miss Seo Yoon was the Dream Academy representative, and then he thought the representatives of the top three hunter academies should also come out. He was reluctant to comply with this offer, but the protagonist suggested they would give him the 6 billion won tournament prize money first. Then, whatever rules and methods they made, they would comply with all of them, and if they disagreed, they wouldn't participate. He smirked and decided because he had no choice but to agree with his conditions. This was how the second round rules ended up being the representatives and representative students of Dream, Hunter Mill, Gaon, and Ale Academies. The dungeons are split into Dungeon 1, Dungeon 2, and Dungeon 3, and the students enter Dungeon 1. The representative went into Dungeon 2, and they solo raided it, and the mana crystals procured from each dungeon after clearing them were inserted into the altar. The boss will be summoned in Dungeon 3, and it's over when the student and representative eliminate the boss monster together. For example, the time to clear dungeons 1 and 2 and the time taken to slay the boss monster in dungeon 3 would be combined. The team with the fastest record would be the victor of round 2. He combined it with the 6 billion one he had just received, and he registered to take the mana lecture by Swordmaster Dong Bin Lu, and the Dragon's Aura lecture by Siegfried. The staff member arrived to inquire if he was ready for his dungeon, and he was fully prepared, so I informed him that he was coming. He reached the Dream Team Round 2 testing ground, where he saw Ms. Seo Yoon waiting for him, and she wondered what he was doing in the room alone. 
He looked at the device and wondered if Dungeon 3 would open up if they put the crystals in. There was nothing he could do about her falling behind compared to the representatives of the three top hunter academies. However, the requirement for the second round was not based on individual time but on the time they added up as a team. The amount he managed to shorten his time was the key to this second game. He had opened up the upper dungeon but didn't know if he could make the difference against the former S-rank hunters. The announcement was made for the Dream Hunter Academy that if they were prepared, they should enter the dungeon. He called her and said that he would see her in a bit and was entering his dungeon, so she waved her hand to him. He entered his dungeon and was glad because all the monsters were gathered, making it easier for him. The monster was attacking him, and he took his position as he was already ready to attack. But suddenly, his central and lower dungeon activated. He swung his spear, which destroyed the mountain behind and terrified the monsters, and they started running away. Later, he got his crystal and wondered why they made this monster implementation so detailed. He was sure that he could have shortened the time more if they hadn't run away. He came out of the dungeon and realized that Seo Yoon hadn't finished yet but hurried up and put his crystal in to record the time. He heard the notification sound and looked at the board as the Hunter Mill Academy cleared Dungeon 3 boss, and time is 12 minutes. He realized they were making the precise time in life and was surprised to see their clear time. The Hunter Mill Academy cleared the dungeon in 35 minutes and Dungeon 2 in 1 minute, and he was shocked and thought they had lost. He was worried they lost as the precise time gap between Dungeon 1 and Dungeon 2 clear time was huge. Considering that Dungeon 1 was cleared by a student and Dungeon 2 was cleared by a representative, it makes sense, but the issue was that their situation was the opposite. If he were to put in the mana crystal like this, then there would be no issue with their victory. But if he, a student, has a lower time than Miss Seo Yoon, she couldn't avoid the criticism. But if he matches Miss Seo Yoon's tempo and puts in the crystal simultaneously, they won't win. Furthermore, the difficulty of Dungeon 2 was an 8-star dungeon, so that she might fail the raid. He was so desperate for the money that he could judge the situation appropriately. Then, the notification about the Gaon Academy clearing the dungeon was displayed on the screen. He remembered her words when she told him not to worry about her as she wanted to help him as a director. Meanwhile, in Dungeon 2, she is panting as she is exhausted but has defeated the monster. She was startled as she suddenly saw another monster appear and attack her. She just wanted to clear the dungeon and was sure that the protagonist would be waiting outside for her. Even if she was not faster than him, she needed to remove the dungeon. While she was moving ahead, the monster grabbed her leg with its tongue while another attacked her, but she managed to evade the attack. Objectively, her skill wasn't as outstanding as that of the granddaughter of the Sword Saint, one of Cataclysm's heroes. She got a mere B rank after studying under the Sword Saint. She respected her grandfather's Sword Saint, one of the heroes of Cataclysm, but at the same time, he resented him for being compared with her, who was unskilled. She resented herself for not being skilled but wanted to clear the dungeon for his sake, as she knew he would be waiting for him outside. With teary eyes, she thought she didn't want to be a hunter due to her spirit to win, she was able to get the crystal. When she first met Kim Seo Joon, she thought if they used each other, that would have been it. She thought using a cute-looking student to spread the Dream Academy name would have been the all. But now that Pro Hunter exam are just around the corner, this exchange tournament should be the end of their relationship. A short time just as fast as a relationship has reached its end, even if it's not much. Suppose she can even help him in the future, even as a weak stepping stone, as long as she doesn't hold him down. She came out of the dungeon and was startled to hear him saying that the dungeon was so hard and remarking that she just come out on time. He told her that he had just come out, and the crystal slipped from her hand, she asked why he did that. She knew he was lying as he might have cleared the dungeon before her, but he said he hadn't done anything. He went to her and told her that it was confirmed that he needed money but that it was not his everything as he would collect it again at a time he wanted. He picked up her crystal and said that once a broken heart can't be returned to how it originally was. He thanked her and went to the device to put in the crystals so their time could be measured. But he placed her crystal first. On the path to becoming a pro hunter and being transcended, he wanted to sit alone with people like this. They cleared the record displayed on the screen, and their final score was 58 minutes and 4 seconds. Hunter Mills's conclusive combined record was 58 minutes and 53 seconds, so if they wanted to win, they had to find and defeat the boss within 48 seconds. The protagonist wanted to tell her this one day that if he had been alone, he would have never made it this far. He looked at her, smiled, and said he would leave it to her just this once, instead, he would leave it to her moving forward. 
She started crying and wondered what that was for a while, wiping her tears. He wanted to be honest with her because the only person he could trust was her, so if he passed out, he wanted her to take care of him. He went to the dungeon and had approximately 30 seconds left, so it was impossible for him to find and take down the basilisk in 30 seconds. Instead, he decided to give the dungeon so much shock that it wouldn't be able to take it anymore and make it collapse. He used the god's strength and aura blade simultaneously, but his current strength wasn't enough, so he purchased an elixir. After he drank the elixir, it led to a tremendous increase in strength. The air around them started shaking, and she could feel it. She wondered how he could have this energy, and he activated his lower danchen and middle danchen. He remembered his lecture on heaven equal sage when he used disperse from deflect, grasp and piercing techniques. It's important not to exceed the range of the end of his spear as he was moving around from the inside out. It felt like he was pressing it gently and waving it around, which was dispersed. Then, it will grasp the internal war and take in the blow now spread out as if he was twisting it inwards, and he used his grasp technique. Now, the final step was pierce, which connected his body and the tip of the spear as if he were one. As if he were to pierce a point and with his technique purse, he would cause massive destruction. Meanwhile, everyone was shocked as this was impossible because the Dream Academy cleared the dungeon 3 in 41 seconds and got first place. Later, the protagonist wakes up and is in the hospital, and the first question he asks after waking up is what happened in round 2. She told him they won, and he sighed peacefully but she was worried about him, wondering if he was alright. He smiled and stretched his arms to assure her he was alright as his body and arm were tough. Especially his mind was as tough as steel so passing out a few times wouldn't do anything, and she smiled. He wondered what was wrong with her and got puzzled, but she thanked him. He smiled and told her it was nothing as he was the one who should be thankful. While they were talking, a few reporters managed to barge into his room as they wanted to meet him and have an interview. But the guard was stopping them as he needed complete rest. But the reporters weren't willing to listen to him. They informed him that they wanted to see him to check if he and they were just there to cover Kim Seo Joon's side of the story. The bodyguard gets furious and tells them they should go to the Dream Academy someday if that is the reason. The reporter asked him if he thought they were crazy as they didn't know what would happen if they ran into the sword saint there. They just wanted to ask him one question. How did he collapse the dungeon? They wondered if he made it collapse with his strength or if there was another method to destroy it and what happened inside the dungeon. The top three hunter academies were denying his victory as they said they lost to Kim Seo Joon, not to the Dream Academy. The reporters asked his opinion on this statement, and he looked at it and replied that he was just a student of Dream Academy. He shrugged his shoulder and tried to be innocent, saying there wasn't much he did. He just did what their director told him to do, and she was shocked, wondering what he meant. The reporters turned to her and asked her opinion on her academy becoming the best hunter academy in Korea. They asked her if there was any training method she had taught him, and she was startled by their sudden questions. The protagonist looked at her and smiled while the reporters continuously questioned her. They want her to speak a few words as the academy head for many prospective students who wish to be like Kim Seo Joon. She was dumbfounded and wanted to stop them but they asked if she knew what someone must do to become a pro hunter. She was surprised but furious when the protagonist told the reporters to forward all the inquiries to their director. Later, a video was uploaded about the Dream Academy, claiming that 99% of the people don't know the truth about Dream Academy. The man greeted the faithful audience of Faithful TV and was there to deliver the shocking truth. On this broadcast, he would talk about the reality of Kim Seo Joon and the Dream Academy, which has been the hottest topic recently. The Dream Academy's participation, which included the protagonist and the exchange tournament, drew national attention, as if it was enough to defeat Lee Hyun, who was the most incredible talent in Pro Hunter history. He even blew up the dungeon. With such news, the Hunter Forum and every site were now filled with discussion. This was really beyond insane. No one would argue, even if it was called the Battle of the Gods. At this point, even if they call him a hero instead of a hero rank student, there would be nothing to say. But even if he was excellent, that was not justified, so he was trying to wrap up the controversies on the topic. The secret was the Dream Academy director, the granddaughter of the Sword Saint. The second round of the exchange tournament was a combined raid with the student and the director. So, in other words, it was only possible with Kim Seo Joon and the director working together, not just with him alone. After telling this, his video ended, the comments were terrific as some wanted to join the Dream Academy, and some showed love for the main lead. The protagonist blushed upon reading the statement in which the person called him Kim Seo Joon, the light that made his room brighter. He was also glad because Seo Yoon gave him her share of the 6 billion won in prize money. 
He was going to the academy as he needed to absorb the wonder elixir he had earlier ultimately. He saw Lee Haewen on his way to the academy, and she wanted to talk to him, but he refused since he was busy at the moment, and she was very shocked as she had never expected this. Later, she was nervous and embarrassed standing before him but did not say anything. The protagonist decides to leave because she has nothing to say, but she asked him for confirmation that there were rumors that he was the disciple of the Sword Saint. He replied that if he were the Sword Saint disciple, he would have been using the swad instead of a spear. She was shocked, and he couldn't believe she didn't even think about it that way. She also thought he was right. The protagonist assumed that would be everything she wanted to ask him, so he left while she told him to wait. She asked him if there was nothing that he had learned from the sword saint, and she wanted to know what they usually teach at the Dream Academy. He was shocked, but she was continuously rambling as she wanted to know if there was a specific training method. She wondered what they usually eat and if there was another student and her chatter annoyed him. He was so annoyed that he decided to escape and rushed away in the air, but after covering some distance, he looked back. She followed his steps and almost caught up, requesting him to wait. He gets down as he guessed the most incredible talent doesn't go anywhere, but she gets hit on his back by his sudden stopping. The protagonist was pissed off and yelled at her because she knew how to annoy someone and asked what she was curious about. He asked her if she wanted to make excuses about how she lost to him, that excuse being the sword saint. She gets terrified and refuses all those accusations as she is just curious. He was surprised because before, she had been colder and more arrogant. She asked him where his director was because she thought they were always together. He wondered why she was looking for her, and she informed him that she had something to say to her, so she wanted to meet her. He told her that if she was looking for the director, then she said that she had something to take care of so she headed out first, and he doesn't know where to see it either. He turned to leave, glared at her furiously and told her to stop following him now. While leaving, he was also curious about where she went in such a rush after the exchange tournament. He assumed that he would be able to see the whole training process at the academy. Meanwhile, she was sitting at Swad Saint's mansion, and he wondered why she suddenly visited him. The Sword Saint was surprised as she wanted to wield her sword again. Councilman Seo was surprised because she had never once asked to wield the blade of her own will. The Sword Saint asked her for a reason for the sudden change of mind, and she uttered that she was to go together. He asked her if she was talking about Kim Seo Joon and if she was saying she wanted to abandon her dreams to follow that man and become a pro hunter. She refused as she wasn't leaving her dreams and remembered he told her that his dream was not to become a pro hunter. She was surprised and asked if he wasn't training and earning all this money so that he could become a pro hunter. Although true, his dream wasn't becoming a pro hunter and she wondered what he meant. He uttered that once, a high-ranking person told him this, although it is hard to say who it was, it was someone she knew. That person once told him that dream is a verb, conversely, it's a noun, so their job can't become their dream. His job as a pro hunter was not her dream, so she wanted to walk her path differently. Since she realized that dream is a verb, she confidently told her grandfather she wanted to wield the sword again. He was again totally broke when purchasing the clear Dukai elixir, the cost due to casualty was 2 billion. He was thinking that if the casualty increases, it would be, at best, twice as much, but it wasn't twice but three times, which was making him crazy as he wondered where he would get this much money. He sensed the presence of the Dark Saint, so he looked behind and asked if he would always have to show up like that. The Dark Saint appeared and remarked that it amazes him every time he sees him. Those stalkers from the Order of Truth couldn't even notice him, so he wondered how he did it every time. The protagonist could feel his presence, and he thought his age must be catching up to him. He wondered if something had happened and asked about the progress of tracking the Order of the Truth. The Dark Saint had something to tell him, but he wondered about his disciples' health before that. He said that he had been discharged already as there were no significant injuries and explained that his matchup wasn't good. The Dark Saint remarked he was foolish, so he told him to focus on just one weapon, and the protagonist smiled as Miniel had his style. He gave him the notebook as he wrote down a few more things so he wouldn't get beaten up so easily next time. He also remembered his promise and assured him he would give him 3 billion won soon. The protagonist asks if he knows the Magic Saint Disciple is also in the Dream Academy. He was stunned to learn and wondered if he was talking about Young Jimin and if she was there. Kim Seo Joon defied and informed him that he had taken in a new disciple besides Miss Jimin. He told him he gave him 10 billion won in return for looking after his disciple. He said he had a Magic Saint about him and that his disciple was also at his Dream Academy. He told him honestly about the situation and the complex and delicate relationship between him and the Dark Saint. Magic Saint heard the story and asked how he could get by with a mere 3 billion, 
Then, he gave him 10 billion without hesitation. Even though he kept saying he couldn't take it, he forced him to accept that 10 billion. At that point, he thought it would be rude to refuse him, so he took it. Hearing this story, the dark saint was frustrated and asked him what he wanted to say. He meant that while entrusting his disciple to his magic saint gave him the billion, he shouldn't worry about it much, though he was telling him that he provided him with 10 billion. While they were talking, suddenly someone asked what was happening there, and when he looked, a sword saint was standing there. He furiously asked the dark saint what he was doing there, his aura covered his body, and he angrily repeated his question. The dark saint uttered that he didn't think he came there only because he had a business with Kim Seo Joon. The protagonist called them and requested them to stop fighting, but they did not listen. The sword saint remained that the someone who betrayed them used the order of truth as an excuse and is still running his mouth. The dark saint denied the accusation as he never betrayed it was a warning, but he was the one who didn't listen to or believe him. Since they were trying them, he guessed they wanted to fight but requested they take their fight somewhere else. The sword saint uttered that the warning was the only excuse he could think of after betraying their trust. The dark saint asked him how it turned out and if the order of truth tricked him in return, and the sword saint yelled to shut his mouth. The protagonist sighed as there was no other way, and air covered the entire room. He was amazed as they stopped fighting, and they wondered what his fighting spirit was. They wondered how he became so much more robust in such a short time. The protagonist uttered that the building almost collapsed because of two of them. He yelled at Dark Saint, asking what Minile would do if the academy collapsed and if he was planning to throw him into the mountains again. The same goes for Sword Saint, who asks him if he destroys the academy building and what excuse he will use to come to see his granddaughter in the future. Although he doesn't know what happened between them f, if they were going to fight, they should take it out somewhere else. He sighed and decided to finish what he was talking about earlier and asked the Dark Saint as he had something to tell him. Since staying there was no longer used, he reached the point. He informed them that the Order of Truth was plotting something related to Berserk. Both of them were shocked as that giant monster Berserk had caused the cataclysm in the past. The Dark Saint said it hadn't been confirmed, but the Apostles had begun to make their move. The Sword Saint remarked that it's too much of a speculation to connect Berserk to the Apostles' movement. The Dark Saint reminded him that he had already said it was not confirmed, so he would investigate appropriately, and wanted his help. The protagonist was startled, wondering how he could help him in investing. According to what he has found so far, the Dark Saint explained that, as he said last time, he can't do it himself. Those people have repeatedly conducted certain experiments targeting specific dungeons, so he must look into those places. Kim Seo Joon was reluctant as he was still a student though there was a limit to the dungeons that he could access. The Dark Saint reminded him that he would take the Pro Hunter exam soon, so he might be able to do it after that and asked him if he would help him. The Sword Saint wondered why he was asking him that, and he replied that he was the only one capable of doing it, but he wondered what this meant. The Dark Saint uttered that even if he told him, it was evident that he would believe him as he did back then, so he wondered if he needed to say it. They furiously looked at each other, and the protagonist asked them if they wanted to fight, they should take it outside this time. He couldn't believe them as they were acting like a kid, and after their problem was resolved, he asked Sword Saint why he was there. He asked him if he was looking for his granddaughter, and she informed him that she had said she had something to do, so she already left, and he didn't know where she had gone. He remembered his granddaughter's words and wondered what was great about him, and Seo Joon wondered why he was acting like this. They all sensed someone present, and the Sword Saint and Dark Saint rushed away, and Lee Hyun appeared before him. Lee Hyun was, by chance, taking a walk, and she ended up near the Dream Academy. She felt a significant amount of energy, so she decided to take a peek inside, and she was caught by the Sword Saint, who asked her who she was. She was shaking in fear, and Dark Saint asked the protagonist if he knew her, but he refused as he didn't know her and said that they could write her out if they wanted, and she was crying. The Dark Saint confirmed if he would do it, and Kim Seo Joon agreed. So he assumed he would start immediately after the Hunter exams, but the protagonist wants him to take care of the money. Dark Saint thought he couldn't bring it up this time and inquired how much money he wanted. Since the task he wanted him to do was like that, he informed him that the price would be high, and she was stunned. She wondered what was going on and if he was ripping off money and, on top of that, from the Dark Saint. She was more surprised as the Dark Saint suggested the 10 billion one they discussed earlier, which didn't make sense to her. The protagonist agreed to this amount, and the Dark Saint promised to take care of it sooner. The protagonist took the book and reminded him of the 3 billion one for child support, which is separate, so the total is 13 billion one. 
The Dark Saint felt it every time but wondered if his conscience was genuinely selfless. He asked him again that instead of money, if he didn't want his sacred arts and if he wants instead of sacred arts, he could teach him himself. He refused as he didn't need anything like that, and she was surprised as he refused to be a hero's disciple. The Sword Saint remarked that it was useless as he had to be for him to ask for the money instead of his artwork. Dark Scient asked him if he thought he would be different from him, and he was shocked as he had been cut off last time. They were going to fight again, and he told them to take it out if they wanted to fight, and Li Heyun wondered just with whom she was messing with. The Dark Saint told him he would come to find him again after the Pro Hunter exams and told him to deliver the sacred arts well. He assured him he would pass his sacred art rightly and requested that he not forget the deposit. After he left, the Sword Saint asked him about his relationship with the Dark Saint. He didn't want to say it was a relationship but had to name it, and then he guessed he had today a business relationship. He turned to Hayun, furiously asked her what she was doing there, and wondered if she followed him. But he told her not to follow him, and she got scared and assured him that she didn't follow him. Then he wondered why she was there, and she was murmuring something that he couldn't understand. He told her to speak clearly because if she didn't, then who knew what the sword saint might do to her, and he was looking at her with disapproval. But she was more scared of Kim Seo Joon than the sword saint but didn't reply. He guessed she still couldn't think straight, and she said she also wanted to enroll in the Dream Academy. He wondered why she wanted to enroll in Dream Academy because there was not much time left until the Pro Hunter exam, so he asked what the point was. He inquired if she was the C of the Hunter Mills Academy, and she said someone had saved her. She told him it's nothing like that, and he wondered why she was acting so weird, and she told him it was because she wanted to enroll. He was still suspicious but saw the Sword Saint leaving, and the Sword Saint wondered if there was any reason for him to stay longer. There was no reason, but he wanted to ask him what he should do with her, and Sword Saint told him to get rid of her however he wanted. She felt like her soul departed her body, and she wanted to stop him as she also wanted to leave with him. She was so terrified of him that she wanted him to save her, and he got close to her and asked if she wanted to join their academy. He didn't know if that was genuine or fake, but that was something for Miss Seo Yoon to decide. Not him, and she was unavailable now. She got an opportunity since the director wasn't there, she will make an excuse to run away and return next time. She wanted to slip out of his grasp, but he gave her his subspace pouch and instructed her to hold it until the director arrived. It was so heavy that she could barely hold it up even when she drew out her mana, but he had it like it was nothing. He was leaving while she was holding the weight, and he warned her not to bother him since he was going to train. At the same time, the sword saint reached his Allah and asked her if she still hadn't changed her opinion, and she nodded. So he picked his azure sword, unsheathed it, and instructed her that fast sword if the sword hat seeks speed. The blade pushes the opponent with a quick attack, and the sharp sword is the man's sword for stabbing. It is a weak spot for opponents who seek out close range in a battle, but stabbing is often done in parallel with the fast sword, which is also the quickest attack method of the blade. The change sword is a sword that reveals the opponent's loopholes with ever-changing sword techniques. The speed is essential, but the key to that is an invariant attack, a sword that causes unexpected fatal injuries to the opponent due to sudden focus. He explained that the dull sword is a slow sword, but it doesn't mean she couldn't use it just because it's slow. The opposites were alike, a sword that slowly walked into the opponent's territory and gradually eroded. The strong sword was a sword that a person put weight on while wielding it. It is a sword that handles the opponent quickly in a situation where he deals with the majority by making each blow impactful. The heavy sword is the next stage of the strong sword, which adds more weight. It is the most destructive sword on the opposite side of the fast sword. Unlike the ever-changing sword, the magic sword is a sword that misleads the opponent's eyes. Stride and fast movement, the illusion of confusion, creates a false image of the blade. The running sword is the sword that gently attacks and seeks to counterattack. The sword reduces the burden on the sword and, at the same time, dissipates the power of the opponent's attack. The defeat sword combines the fast and robust blades, which are fast and heavy simultaneously. Therefore, they could overwhelm the opponent amidst a sword fight if she could wisely use these techniques. These were the basic tricks of the Sword of the Breaking Gods, and he gave her a deadline. She had to complete the blades he had shown her within that deadline, which was before this year's Pro Hunter exams ended. He will not allow her to hold a sword again if she can't finish it within that time. The Councilman Seo was worried about her because learning all these techniques quickly was impossible. He asked her to give up now if she thought she could not do it, but she was sure she could. Li Heyun was stunned, wondering what was with this crazy energy swirling around Kim Seo Joon. The protagonist told her to hold the subspace pouch properly, and she asked when the director would return. 
Meanwhile, Miniol and Cyan returned to the academy and encountered each other at the entrance. The protagonist was worried because after how much he filled it, it didn't seem complete because of how big the vessel was. He wondered how many medicine potions he needed to take to fill it up, and he was surprised to see her because she was still there. She was furious and cursed him because he told her to hold this. Her hands were trembling like crazy, and he had already forgotten that she was here. The protagonist realized that she was still unaware, so he told her to keep bowing, and he was leaving. Suddenly, he turned to her and asked if she was trying to flirt with him, and she was speechless. She was frustrated and wondered why he thought she was flirting and if it looked like she was flirting right now. She quickly returned the weight to him as she was exhausted and felt fresh because all the burden got off her. The protagonist found it strange as it was working normally again, and he put some weight inside and handed it to her to hold it again. She was trying hard to keep it and wondered what was going on and why the engraving was activating. He wondered why the engraving activated again when he had already stopped it because, in the past, it was the case that only he could touch it. But he remembered that Miss Seo Yoon could also remove it when he got stuck in Kibisis. It was the same when he lost consciousness while using divine power against the giant. Uncle Mitchell and Magic Saint brought the weapons for him since he couldn't retrieve them himself. He concluded that engraving activates only when someone desires to use or draw it. He told her to put something into that pouch once, giving her a small weight. When she tried to put something inside the pouch, she got electrocuted, and as he thought, he got the result. While he was experimenting, Miniol and Cyan appeared, and he wondered why they came back together. Cyan informed him they met at the front, and she wondered why Lee Heon was there. The protagonist told her she wanted to join their dream academy, and Miniol asked if he was considering accepting her. Since she gets electrocuted, she falls, and the protagonist tells her to get up instead of acting. The protagonist wondered why she was asking him because the director should decide, and he agreed since it was true. The protagonist remembers the sacred arts book that the Dark Saint gave him, and he handed it to him. He informed him that his master had asked him to stop going around getting himself beaten up, and he thanked him as always. The protagonist asks why he is thanking because he should be the one to thank him, and Miniol can't understand why his captain should thank him. Meanwhile, Lee Hyun was crying but still wanted to bear with it. Firstly, she had to stick to him, which was to find out how to possess such insufferable strength, and this was the olden opportunity to see how he usually trains. Miniol was happy after getting a few more notebooks while Cyan asked him if there was nothing for her, but he told her to ask the magic saint herself. Li Heyun wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to grasp it firmly. She was surprised to hear Cyan asking him if he could jump down when it was dark because complaints were coming in. The protagonist went to her and asked for the pouch because he had to do the Hercules assignment. She tried to escape, but he stopped and instructed her to help Cyan with the training. He instructed her not to disturb Miniol and to help Cyan, and she wondered why she should do that. The protagonist was stunned and inquired if she wanted to help, but it was not like that. He told Sion to ask her for help instead of Miniol, but she wondered if that would be okay. He asked what the problem was with it. If she wanted to join the Dream Academy, she should at least do this much. He wants her to give it her all while she is at it, and she knows that Li Heyun, a strict person, wonders if she will help in training. She started training and informed her that she would be counting on her for help, and she attacked her. Li Heyun stopped her, wanting to know when Director Seo Yoon would come. Meanwhile, the reporters were exhausted and waiting for them outside at the Pro Hunter Association Soul Branch. The meeting has been going on for quite a while since it has been almost a day since the meeting started. Something like this has happened in Pro Hunter's history, so it makes sense. No one has imagined things would turn out like this because of Kim Seo Joon. Korea is buzzing with excitement over the upcoming Pro Hunter exam as the hottest topic. The reason behind this is the irregular Kim Seo Joon, who is unreachable starting from the community. The entire Korean society has plunged into a heated debate about him and the Pro Hunter exams. The association president appeared and apologized for making them wait so long. The reporters asked him if the meeting about the Pro Hunter exam was finally concluded. They wondered how this year's PR Hunter exam would be conducted and if Kim Seo Joon would be exempted from the exam. The president told them that they would resolve this issue by insignificantly increasing the difficulty of this Pro Hunter exam. H. Wang Dongsu, a reporter from the Hunter newspaper, asked as he mentioned they would significantly increase the difficulty, so he wanted to know the extent to which it would be raised. The president told him they intended to make it so no person could score perfect marks. The reporter wondered if this rule also applies to Kim Seo Joon and if that was the Hunter Association's intention. They assumed that the exams would be too tricky then, and if it was going to be this way, 
he saw no reason to change it to an absolute evaluation. Other reporters agreed because this exam was a simple ceremony for the sake of having an exam. They spoke about ensuring equity among the citizens, but ultimately, this wasn't a form of leveling down. The reporters thought they should grant pro-hunter qualification to a particular case instead of doing it this way. In the original regulations, only the top scorer could become an A-rank hunter, so what would happen to that under absolute evaluation? The president informed them that there would be no A-rank pro-hunter this year if there were a perfect score. In the first place, the president consistently scored 100 points under the previous reactive evaluation method. However, in absolute evaluation, being first place doesn't necessarily mean a perfect score naturally. They also intended to change that regulation. But even that was impossible due to enormous lobbying by the opposing guild, and he cursed that large guild. The ability to establish a guild is available to a rank and above, so the malicious guild's plan to prevent Kim Seo Joon from obtaining an A-rank hunter qualification. They aimed to pull him into their guilds but didn't know he was a colossal dragon they could not contain. They seemed to think they could dominate the throne forever, but that isn't possible. He informed the reporter that those who become a rank hunters this year will be granted priority rights for dungeon raids for the next five years. He knew that as soon as Kim Seo Yoon entered the world of Pro Hunter Korea, the world would usher in a new era. They have decided to open this Pro Hunter exam to the public. Miss Seo Yoon returned to the academy injured and was surprised to see Lee Hyun guiding Sion. Lee Hyun instructed that though her power output was tremendous and her attacks were too simple, she wondered what kind of idiot would just stand around and wait to get hit by something like that. Cyan asked if it would be fitting if she lowered her power and added some changes. She asked him what had happened when he was gone, and they were surprised to see him, but Hyun was happy. The protagonist asked her if she had handled all the urgent matters. She told him that until the pro-hunter exam ends, she doesn't think she could attend the academy frequently, and he wondered why. She doesn't think she can come and guess she would stop by sometimes. At any rate, there wouldn't be any competitions he could participate in before completing the pro-hunter exams, so there wouldn't be any significant inconveniences. The protagonist was stunned as he couldn't meet Miss Seo Yoon, and he didn't want that. He asked her if he could still attend the academy after becoming a pro-hunter. Even if he becomes a pro-hunter, he still has to train, and his house is too small. He does not have a suitable place to prepare, so he wants to train and feel comfortable there. She smiled and looked at him as she also had something she needed to talk to him about. She asked his opinion if she wanted to turn the Dream Academy into a guild instead. He was surprised, but she told him that it would be more accurate to call it a raid team rather than a guild because they were small. He blushed since he told him his dream job was to raid dungeons, as she still remembers. But she had one condition, she wanted him to take charge as the guild leader. He was stunned and asked for confirmation if she was talking about him. She uttered that a person could only create a guild after reaching an A rank or above, but as they know, she was still a B rank. She wants him to obtain the A rank hunter license from this hunter exam first. He could not understand anything and had many questions, but she was uttering that she could use their Dream Academy building as the guild base. Miniel agreed to her, and he wondered what he was agreeing with. Miniel told him he wanted to talk about that, but she beat him. He was excited and wanted the captain not to abandon them after making the guild, and Cyan agreed with them, too. Since the protagonist would be the master, M. Niall asked him if he could become vice master. Cyan asked why he was spouting nonsense because the vice guild would be Seo Yoon. He agreed since that's truth and wanted to decide their position, and he was furious at them. Miss Seo Yoon smiled and informed him that he must do well on the exams because she believed there wouldn't be a problem. She mumbled that she would do his best, too, and he wondered if she did say something. She smiled and told him they should do their best together. The short-lived relationship between these two has come to an end. Niniel decided to join the intelligence department and will be in charge of collecting the information. Cyan assumed she should be the research director because he was the head of the intelligence department. The protagonist wondered why they thought he would give them any position, and Lee Hyun remembered her past. There was the end of that relationship and it brought about new connections in the process and created new stories again. The end of their relationship wasn't the end of everything, as it just continued into a new life and a new beginning. His lecture progress increased significantly, and he completed the lecture on the power to uproot mountains, metamorphosis, and insight. As time flew by, the day of the long-awaited pro-hunter exam finally approached. Miniel was astonished to see so many people, and Cyan was worried about whether she would do well. The protagonist assured her that she would do well as she had to do what she had been doing. She thought she would feel great if Miss Seo Yoon had come with them. 
Unfortunately, she couldn't come with them but could only apologize, saying she had not done what she was supposed to. Although he wanted to ask her if something was happening, he knew there must be a reason as she had been entirely about it. The protagonist instructed them to focus on the exam in front of them first. Most importantly, he stared at Lee Hyun and asked why she was there, and she was startled. Ultimately, she didn't gain Miss Seo Yoon's approval to become a cadet at their academy. Miss Seo Yoon told her that the Dream Academy does not plan to accept more cadets. Cyan asked what was wrong with him because she had significantly helped them. Many all agreed with her that they could go to the exam center together. The protagonist can't believe it as they fight an intense battle in the exchange tournament. So when did their relationship become so good? Cyan told him it was because of how cold he had been treating her, and she also helped them in training every day. Minyeol also didn't mind her as long as Cyan was alright with her. Since they all agreed he had no option but to give up, the academy cadets were surprised to see him there. They couldn't believe that he was also going to attempt his exam at this center, and he rushed away and wished them luck for their exams. They couldn't believe he had suddenly disappeared, and they couldn't believe their captain too. Lee Hyun thought she had significantly improved but couldn't see herself catching up to Seo Joon. Meanwhile, a pro hunter in the exam center VIP room, Lee Sungman, who was in second place in the Korean hunter ranking, commented that there are a lot of valuable talents this year. Jiang Yunmi, who was in third place in Korea, Hunter's ranking suggested that he should give up as the mythical guild was running low on funds. He informed them they were still doing better than their guild, and the Hibiscus Guild was there. Du Minsiok, who was in fourth place, uttered that he had been staying still, so why would they drag them in? Because of financial resources, the Sarabi Guild should be the poorest among them. Han Manchial, who was in the fifth position, said that their Sarabi Guild only looks for honorable cadets. They suppose that the association president has pulled quite the trick even though it looked like he thought Kim Seo Joon would get a perfect score. Do Min Seok call him stupid because of this, as they all know about Kim Seo Joon's skills. Ryu Jin Chiol, who was in first place, hoped they had made thorough preparations and used all the connections they had at their disposal, since they would be in trouble if Kim Seo Joon acquired an A-Rank Hunter status. Jiang Yoon Mi assured them that would never happen, so he just had to worry about recruiting him. Do Min Seok wonder what they plan to do if he refuses his offer? Ryu Jin Chiol was furious as if he couldn't acquire the A-Rank Hunter status there because it was only a matter of time before he became an A-Rank Hunter, so they should be aware of his method. He doesn't like having competitors, which is why they should focus on preventing him from getting an A-Rank Hunter status. Since that would bring them more trouble than refusing his offer, everyone assured him he was worrying about nothing. They were sure that the first lace would still get by Kim Seo Joon, but the difficulty of the first subject, the written test, was extremely high. After the written exam started, the invigilator instructed everyone to hand around the exam as they received it. The difficulty that would even make pro hunters shake in their boots was not designed to be solved by cadet level users in the first place. This was why he would never get a perfect score, but their prediction went wrong as he got an ideal 100 score in the written exam. The pro hunter exam consists of written, essential endurance, mana proficiency, dungeon raid, combat proficiency monster, and combat proficiency, a total of six subjects. The exam was held for three days, and the exam that was born that day was a written exam and a basic endurance exam. The difficulty of the exam was crazy, but he could still secure a hundred points. Lee Miniel was worried as he thought he could beat him in this exam, but he got 50.2 points. Cyan was also surprised, even though she got 87 points, she wondered how he got a perfect score. He told them he could figure it out by looking at it, and they were dumbfounded. They realize he is lame but he knows that if he wouldn't have the ability insight, he wouldn't be able to secure a perfect score. While they were talking about their score, Cyan asked Hyun about her score on the exam. She was embarrassed to tell them she got 32 points in the written exam, and they were shocked. The most extraordinary talent ever born in all of Pro Hunter history. It looked like her talent in other aspects hadn't bloomed. Meanwhile, he inquired them, and they said he would never be able to secure a perfect score but he got an ideal score in written exams and essential endurance, so they want an explanation. They were surprised because aside from the written exam, they had adjusted the difficulty of the basic endurance exam based on the four major guild leaders gathered there. They realized he had secured a perfect score and was at the same level as them regarding essential endurance. They assured them not to worry as there was a setback in their plan, but it's not over yet. After the pro hunter exam, Ryu Jinchial heard that the Dream Academy would convert into a guild. The leader of that guild would be Kim Seo Joon, and the daughter of the Sword Saint would also join the guild. He assumed they would know the meaning of this no matter how stupid they were. 
a guild with the Sword Saint support and the dungeon raid priority for the next five years would be given thanks to the association president's trickery. He was talking about the birth of a new guild that will put out positions they have built so far in jeopardy. Jiang Yunmi assured him that what happened today would not be repeated on the second day because they made it possible to alter the tone and difficulty of the question. They did it by referring to the records of all the competitions in which Kim Seo John has participated. So she was sure that unless he suddenly got better overnight, it was impossible for him to get a perfect score again. The third subject was mana proficiency, but he managed to secure perfection in this subject, too. He also managed to get a hundred pints in the fourth subject, Dungeon Raid. All of them were worried, and Ryu Jinchial inquired if any of them were on his side. They refused all their accusations as this was a misunderstanding and what benefit they would get from siding with him. He was worried and asked how they reared for the remaining subject, and she informed him that they had already prepared. Two issues were left, combat proficiency with the monster and the opponent. If they failed again, they would become an A-rank hunter, so he instructed them to revise their plan thoroughly. They asked them who the examiner of the subject PvP was, and Han Manchial told him that he was an active A-rank member from their Sorabi guild. In addition to his reputation, his skills are so outstanding that they expect him to reach S-rank soon, and he instructed them to change the examiner. The same day at night, Councilman Seo was worried as Sword Sate told him to leave them. He asked how they could do that even though they knew that five prominent guild leaders would interfere, so how could they ask him to leave them be? He was worried because if something went wrong with Kim Seo Joon, then Miss Seo Yoon would be upset. The Sword Saint uttered that if he were to break down just from something like that, that would be all he amounts to. If he had been that weak, to begin with, he would have been able to come this far. He was unwilling to admit it as he didn't have the guts to involve all the five major guilds, but he still wanted to leave them to do what they wanted. Even if that was the Sword Saint Dare, he couldn't just sit back and do nothing. So he went to see him, and he was stunned to see his aura. The protagonist asked him why he got there. He rushed to him and asked if something terrible had happened to Seo Yoon, but that was not the case. He was surprised by sensing his energy because it was on a completely different level compared to the past. In just a few months, he managed to reach this level, and he wondered if the headmaster was aware of it from the beginning. The protagonist asked if something was wrong as he came to see him personally, and Elder Seo said he had something to tell him. The next day, the last day of Pro Hunter exams, the fourth subject was Combat Proficiency Monster Subjugation. He acquired a perfect score. Miniel was also glad he managed to get a hundred scores in this subject. Meanwhile, they praised him in the examiner's waiting room as they knew he would get 100 points. But he was sitting sad, and they wondered if something was wrong. Another student rushed inside and informed them that the examiner for the PvP subject had changed. The exams were already tricky this time, so it didn't matter if the examiner changed, but Miniel was sure something might have changed. But they were surprised to know that the four major guild leaders had come as examiners. Later, the final subject Hyun opponent was Han Manchial who defeated her and gave her 64 points. Other cadets found it impossible as even Lee Hyun could not acquire high grades, but her score was pretty high compared to the difficulty. Han Manchial was the master of the ultimate truth sword, which was something even the sword saint acknowledged. Han Manchial appreciated the examinee as their skill this time was terrific. His net opponent was Kim Seo Joon. Although he doesn't feel comfortable nipping these talents in the bud, this is also the Seeker's path to the ultimate truth. Meanwhile, the cadets were gossiping about how the five major Yuid leaders were preparing for the hunter exam. They also headed to the exam room where Kim Seo Joon Han M. Nashial from Sorabi, the examiner. Everyone wondered if he could win, but they thought an examinee could not beat the examiner. In the history of professional hunters, something like that has never happened before, but who knows what would happen. Han Manchial praised him as he was impressed because his performance in the Row Hunter exams had been incredible. However, this was as far as he would go because he would never get a perfect score in this subject. And he knew about this, which surprised him. One day before, he was shocked to learn that five significant guilds were keeping him in check because they wanted him to become an A-rank hunter. What was more shocking was that if Miss Seo Yoon didn't master the sword by the end of the hunter exam, she would be entirely a hunter. Then, even if he becomes an A-rank hunter, if she fails, she will be able to be part of their guild. Councilman Seo informed him that although he has achieved perfect scores, the problem is tomorrow's PvP match. The right to decide the PV match score tomorrow depends entirely on the examiner's evaluation. No matter how great he is at sparring, 
it would be impossible to get a perfect score if they decide to say that his performance was incredible enough to earn 99 points but still fell short of reaching 100 points. Of course, there would be some backlash, but he was sure they would suppress it with their influence. He has always admired the ultimate truth seeker mentality of the Sarabi Guild Master, but this was quite disappointing. Mr. Senior told him they had enjoyed sitting on their high horses for a while, and their desire to protect their position had also increased. The only way to overcome this was for him to go to Sword Saint, and if he set the condition like last time, he would have no choice but to give up. He asked if Miss Seo Yoon was doing well and could master it within the deadline. Elder Seo remarked it would be impossible, but he didn't think about interfering because it was her fight. He feared that she would want him to get a perfect score even if she caught up with Kim Seo Joon. The protagonist asked him for a face and wanted to tell her about his situation. He wondered why he tried to alleviate her guilt and that it was all right to fail because both of them were in an impossible case. But he was thinking the opposite because if he could make the impossible happen, she would think she should be able to do the same thing. And he refused to go to the Sword Saint. Meanwhile, at the Sword Saint Villa, the man asked him if it was all right for them not to stop her. He was worried because she had been swinging the sword for several days without eating and sleeping. That day was the promised deadline, which was the last day of the hunter exam, and if she continued to be like this, something worse might happen. They knew it was impossible to master the sword in just a few weeks, but Elder Seo instructed him to leave her. He was restless, but Elder Seo informed him it was something she had decided upon herself, so they couldn't interfere. He looked at her and smiled, now understanding why she desperately wanted to hold the sword again. Meanwhile, the protagonist apologized to him as he must get the perfect score because someone was waiting for him. Han Manchial doesn't know the situation, but the world of the pro hunter is cruel, so at any rate, it's impossible for him to get a perfect score. The protagonist asked if the examiner supposed to make the evaluation cannot do so, they will give the score then. The examiner wondered what he meant, and the protagonist stretched himself and asked if the situation was so that there was no other choice but to give him the perfect score, which would be his score. Han Manchial knew there was only one case where an examiner couldn't evaluate it when they lost against the examinee. The protagonist believed that he wouldn't die but might have to stay in bed for one month. Han Manchial gets furious because a mere examinee dared to challenge him, though he is arrogant. He remembered that even though he had skills that surpassed those at the cadet level, he defeated the examiner. The protagonist wanted to secure the perfect score and let the examiner make the first move. He gets enraged even though he has been trying to keep the situation from getting out of his hands, but he wants to make him regret it. He rushed from his post and attacked him, and he was stunned by his colossal amount of energy. The protagonist requested that he not die because he was using his lace of longinus so that he couldn't control his power. Nine years ago, when he met Uncle Manchial, he thought his name was similar to the leader of the Sorabi Guild. Uncle Manchial affirmed that after being saved by Han Manchial's father, his father named him after his son. Because during the cataclysm, there was a point when the monsters surrounded the shelter. The government and military decided to abandon them due to a lack of workforce. He wondered what was about the people inside, but they had no choice but to wait for their death course, where the five heroes couldn't step forward to stop the monsters from attacking. The moment everyone thought everything was over, the only person who stood against those monsters was the founder of the ultimate truth hunter, Han Wan Yi. He uttered that if they want to walk the path of an ultimate truth seeker, they should ask themselves whether they did their absolute best. Did they fight to the point that they almost died and put everything they had into defeating their opponent? He cut through the legion of monsters in a single slash and saved 50,000 people without a single casualty, but died in the process. Amential's father was among those he saved, so they needed him after his son to show their respect. He remembered Kim Seo Joon wanted to become a hunter, so he worked hard and saved money. He instructed him not to get hurt because, for people like them, their body is their asset, so he should take care of them. Their manager saw them talking and yelled at them to go to work as they ate lunch. He heard the news that Hunter Han Manchial had safely handled a 10-star dungeon break in the downtown area. He saw his interview on TV, where he uttered that the Ultimate Truth Sword wasn't simply external strength. As the Ultimate Truth Seeker, that indomitable spirit is the essence of the Ultimate Truth, and he wanted to be as cool as him one day. At present, he attacked him with his spear and spilled the blood, then he used his skill to deflect, grasp, and pierce, which they whim back. Everyone in the room was amazed at Han Manchial, the leader of four significant guilds. Han Manchial thought it was ridiculous but had no choice but to admit it, as he knew that if he had delivered the final blow, he would have died. This was undeniably his defeat, however, after his last blow, he was sure about one thing. 
the examiner must continue the exam unless the examinee is incapacitated. H.N. Manchial realizes that Kim Seo Joon has no intention of killing him, so he decides to attack. He uttered that if he gives up because his defeat is imminent, he isn't a seeker of the ultimate truth. If he wants to walk the path of an ultimate truth seeker, he should ask these questions. Did he do his best and fight to the point that he almost died, and did he have everything to defeat his opponent? He used his ultimate truth swad and informed him that he would never lose his consciousness because the only time he lost his consciousness was when he died. He rushed to the protagonist and attacked but evaded and asked if he had surrendered to the dark dragon. The protagonist wonders if he was pulling this stunt on him because he doesn't want to relinquish what he desperately tries to hold on to. He did that all for his benefit, so Kim Seo Joon wondered if that was the ultimate truth his father, Hunter Han Wai, was talking about. The essence of the ultimate reality was an indomitable spirit. At one point, he admired Sarani Han Manchial. It would be correct to say that he respected that indomitable spirit and asked if he wasn't embarrassed to face his father. Han Manchial wondered what he knew to mention his father's name and how he dared to talk about his father. The protagonist uttered that he asked him to kill him, and he liked it too, but he wouldn't kill him. It's like he told him earlier that one month, but instead, he should be in bed for two months. He assumed he was looking down at the spirit of ultimate truth and rushed to attack him. The protagonist punched him and remarked that it was he who was looking down on it, and his punch was so strong that he spilled out an enormous amount of blood. Han Manchial was surprised and wondered what with his strength and what he was hitting him as his fist was so hard. He pushed to attack him, and after his multiple attempts, he assumed it couldn't be called a fight anymore. He knew Kim Seo Joon was strong, but he thought he would still be weak. Thank him. Han Manchial could not reach or even touch him as there was an overwhelming difference in their strength. The protagonist punches him again, and he requests him to kill him instead, and he hits him with God's strength. He was thrown back, and he went to him again and grabbed him, so he requested to spare him. The protagonist found him unsightly and repulsive, and Han Manchil requested him to spare him if he would give him 100 points. This wasn't the attitude of someone who walks down the path of an ultimate truth seeker. Perhaps he also surrendered to Ryu Jinxiao in this manner, even if that's what he said. And if he ended things there, who knows when he will turn around and return to his words. Even though he was a fake ultimate truth seeker, the ultimate truth he was seeking still has its merit, and he doesn't even faint easily. If he can't get a perfect score just by overpowering Han Manchio, and if he has to kill him to get a perfect score, it can be a severe violation, which could provoke his license, and he even considered the worst situation Ryu Jinxiao. From the beginning, it was impossible for him to receive an A-rank hunting license. However, he aimed to reach the transcendents who created their way when there was none. He decided to punch him and reminded him as he told him that he just had to lie down for two months. With the strength of his three danshin, he punched Bum while he was requesting him to spare him. He had an unwavering, unyielding, indomitable mind before anything was the path that an ultimate truth seeker wants to walk, and he must follow that path till the end. Han Manchial couldn't believe it as Kim Seo Joon reminded him of his father. The protagonist asked him to think carefully if he had done anything shameful. He realized this was the essence of ultimate truth and was far beyond it. He becomes unconscious, and the protagonist is furious at Ryu Jinxiao. He points at the camera and informs him that he is the next, and everyone is amazed as he does it. The secretary told the association president that the reporters were waiting outside. He came out of the examination room, and they rushed toward him. Meanwhile, in the examiner's waiting room, John Mi informed him they mobilized all the forces within the guild. But the association president showed up. He made the situation public when Kim Seo Joon's exam was over and even prepared the reporters. Ryu Jinxiao asked if they could wake up Han Manchial, but they informed him that they looked at it. But as expected, the maximum amount of mana he could handle exceeded. His life isn't in danger, but it will take him at least two months to recover, but they ultimately lost it. They failed a mere cadet who was just young but broke out of his shell. Later, they returned to the academy, but that place did not look like an academy, and they thought it would be unfortunate if they had to change their name. Vinial asked his captain if he would get an A-rank hunter certificate, but he was unsure. Cyan remarked that it wasn't confirmed in words but was the same as established. Minial said that the association president stepped in and said it, and he assumed they would be B-rank. Lee Heyoon said they would find out once the passing cut line was announced, but they believed they might be B-rank. Cyan opened the door but was surprised Miss Seo Yoon wasn't inside. Minial was also stunned as he thought she would be at the academy on the last day of their exam. She asked the protagonist if he had heard anything from her but was stunned as he had already left. 
The protagonist worries about her because the deadline the Sword Saint gave Seo Yoon ended the Pro Hunter exam. The fact that she didn't come to the academy bothered him as he assumed she might fail. He reached their residence, and the guard at the entrance informed him that Sword Saint had instructed him not to let anyone in. He requested that he do anything about it, but the guard refused to let him in. The protagonist was furious as the Sword Saint instructed in advance, knowing that he would come to visit him. He had no plans to return like this, but he can't recklessly and rudely barge in. Councilman Seo arrived and instructed him to send him in. But he was worried about the headmaster, who told him not to let anyone in. He took responsibility and urged Kim Seo Joon to follow his lead. They went inside, and she was surprised to see his sword saint was furious because he instructed them not to let anyone in and assumed they were ignoring his words. Councilman Seo could not tolerate his aura but was all right and apologized to sword saint. He approached him and said he had to visit because he had something to tell him despite his rudeness. The sword saint was amazed as he had grown again within that short time. He was no longer the immature kid he was in the beginning because now he was a kid he had to deal with seriously. He turned since there was nothing else to listen to as the deadline was over. What he offered is a minimum qualification, but if she doesn't have the minimum qualification, she will get swept away and end up blaming herself and suffering, which is worse than not going together. But he informed them that the deadline wasn't over yet because the deadline he gave her was until the pro hunter test was over but not over yet. The Sword Saint gets furious because that was nonsense as the test was over, the fact that he was there proves that the deadline is over. The protagonist informed him that his score had not been confirmed yet. The end of the Pro Hunter exam should mean that all the test scores for the taker have been announced. The score for his last subject, the personal combat proficiency, has not been reported, so her fight isn't over. The Sword Saint agreed with him, helped her stand, and gave her the sword. It was impossible, so she thought everything was over, but at that moment, the unbelievable turned upside down again. The protagonist smiled and told her that the impossible word was nothing and that she should take his example. She got another chance, so she went to her grandfather and requested him to do it again. They wielded their sword, and she attacked with a blade that pursued speed, a swift sword. To swiftly attack a single spot, she used the thrusting sword and the ever-changing sword that rapidly changed the targeted point, the variant sword. The following technique she used was the Creeping Sword, which is a sword that encroaches into the opponent's territory and oppresses it. The following technique was the Mighty Sword that stacked weight on its one blow. Heavy Blade is a sword that maximizes destructive power by adding more weight to its stacked weight. The Sword Saint attacked her, and she was about to fall when he assumed it was over. She was surprised as her sword flow was supposed to be connected, but she couldn't take on her grandfather's sword. He was attacking her, and she closed her eyes, but suddenly she remembered something and attacked him. She used the flowing sword, which counters attack a sword by gently letting the opponent's attack flow by. She assumed that compared to her senses, her comprehension was slower, and the feeling of her hand holding this sword felt unfamiliar. She grew up around great people and has met countless great people that others would have never thought they would be able to meet at least once. Her mediocrity was a curse among those great people, but she had met ordinary people instead. She could have lived a little differently than she was doing now, but she was busy running away from that reality. She met Kim Seo Joon. She attacked with the Phantom Sword, which is a sword that dazzles the opponent's eyes. She no longer wanted to give up and didn't want to settle for mediocrity again. She tried to stand next to him as the wind blew in her heart, and she didn't know what that feeling was. She wondered if that was what enlightenment was and if that was how her grandfather did it. But this was little more than this as she could undoubtedly feel a clear sensation, which was an unconscious act of desperation. Then she showed the last skill, a tyrannical sword, a fast and heavy sword that overwhelms the opponent. She completed all those techniques, and her grandfather can't believe this because she has her limit. It was undoubtedly the realm she could never reach at her current level, but what he was seeing was completely different. He wondered what made her like this, and she asked for his permission to go together with him. He was in complete shock while she was gladly telling Kim Seo Joon that she made it and succeeded, and he expected this as he knew she could do it. People in the world run toward a particular goal where they can predict the hardships and troubles they will go through. However, in some rare cases, there are those whose limits cannot be seen and those who can make others surpass their limit and move forward together. The Sword Saint knew he couldn't do that, and he remembered the Magic Saint's words. Sometimes, the person who thinks he is nothing can achieve something no one else can accomplish. He told him their era had passed, and he realized the true meaning behind the Magic Saint conversation. Councilman Seo apologized to him for disobeying his order, but he was fine as he was the one who allowed it to happen in the end. For some reason, the Magic Saint swords feel even more cruel that day. 
On their way to the Dream Academy, she asked him what he planned to do if she failed. He would probably go to find the association president, no matter what he had to do. He would have to ask him to postpone the declaration at the end of the exam. His phone rang, and he received the message from Cyan, who informed her that the association president was waiting for him in the academy. He realized she called him too, and he told Miss Seo Yoon to come as many people were waiting for them. They were happy to see her again, but Cyan was so worried about her since they hadn't heard from her, so she thought something terrible might have happened. Miniol asked him if he had gone to pick her up, as they were surprised when he suddenly disappeared. While conversing, the association president appeared and congratulated him on passing the pro hunter exam. He would be issued an A-Rank Hunter license since he received a perfect score in his last subject. Everyone else also passed without a problem and is now a B-Rank Hunter. The president wanted to give him an S-Rank Hunter license if he could, but he realized it might be a little challenging. The protagonist was okay with it since he could work hard from now on, and the president believed that it wouldn't be a problem. Kim Seo Joon The president informed him that A-Rank Hunters are subject to exceptional management by the association. A dungeon raid priority pass has been issued for him since he received a perfect score in this pro hunter exam. He came there because he wanted to ask if he was thinking of establishing a new guild. He affirmed and requested that he allow him to care for the guild establishment. He was surprised as the association president himself wanted to help him, since establishing the guild is complicated, processing various documents, forms, and permits takes considerable time. But if he took care of it himself, it wouldn't take long, so he requested him to write down the names of hunters who would join the guild. He wrote down all the names, but there was a problem with establishing a guild. He needed five pro hunters with B-rank hunter licenses, but they were shy of one more person. If he can't find anyone, he decides to process it with his authority, but he is sure that if five major guilds catch on, it will cause problems. The protagonists agreed because they are still trying to find fault with them, so they don't know what other schemes they might have. He did not want to include anyone in his guild, so he looked at her and added Lee Hyun's name. After adding her name, they became five and could quickly establish a guild, and others were looking forward to working with her. She was worried as he made a contract with her to become their guild member. The president asked about the guild name, and they had already decided it as they would be a dream team. Meanwhile, all the prominent guild representatives were worried that Kim Seo Joon would establish the guild. They wanted to find any way to stop him, but they couldn't find anything, and they wanted to stall it. But the real problem was his dungeon raid priority pass. While they were screaming, suddenly, the sword saint appeared, and they wondered why he was there. He could already tell what they were planning by the looks on their face, and his killing aura was unbearable for them. He was there to clarify the misunderstanding that there was no particular reason why they just let them be. But he didn't do anything because they didn't want to be disgusting like them as they didn't end Cataclysm to rule above others. Ryu Jinchiol remarked that anyone who heard would think he ended the Cataclysm. While they were about to fight, Kalia appeared and remarked that even if he is the sword saint, it isn't nice to wave his sword at someone else's house. He doesn't even look surprised at seeing her and assumes he might be expecting her there. They tried to take his azure sword and play tricks on him, and if they had the gut, they would have cut off his head. They attempted to do it many times, meaning they had someone who would care for them even if he intervened. She realized he had come to see her first and asked why. He was trying to act like a grandfather for the first time in a long time, and he knew they would cause trouble if they created a guild. This was why they all gathered there to plot a plan to prevent it, but he warned them not to do it. Kylia wondered what would happen if she refused, but he told her they should refuse as long as they could handle the consequences. After warning them he was leaving, he disappeared in the air, which she wanted exciting as she thought he might turn everything upside down. After he left, she instructed them to cancel all plans, and Ryu Jinchiol inquired about the hero of the Apostle of Purity, who was scared of Sword Sand. She remarked that he was letting his pride run wild and instructed him not to look down on Sword Saint. She was fully aware of his skill as he was the person close to the level of Cataclysm, but he was just close and could never get there. While leaving, she told him that even if they couldn't mess with him directly, they could do it other ways since fate wouldn't change. Meanwhile, he received a message at the Dream Academy and was shocked to see it. The next day was their first day, so they wanted to do their best. Miniol loved the situation, so they could go on a raid the day they got their license. It was the first time Cyan was going to the dungeon, so she wondered if she would do well. Lee Hyun assured her that the jail would be similar to the one implemented through sorcery, but the difficulty would be great. That made it difficult, and Kim Seo Joon enthusiastically informed them it would be different since they would be making money. 
They were whispering about his condition. He was money sick, and his situation was getting worse. Cyan didn't know, but she was sure he had become much stranger after briefly checking his phone yesterday. Yesterday, he received the notification that the free pass period was over, and he forgot he was running out of money because he bought the medicine to fill his kai. The new free pass cost was more than his balance, and he was going crazy because he did not even have 100 million won. He looked at them and asked if they said something, but they uttered that they were looking forward to their first raid. But he wasn't there, and they wondered about whom he was talking to, and he found him and called him. Cyan was shocked to see his father there, and she asked why he hadn't informed her. But he didn't think he had to report everything to his daughter. It was a suburb near Seoul in a Dark Dragon Guild exclusive area. They asked him who would permit him to be there as it was their guild exclusive. The hunter instructed him to tell the hunter to leave, but that differed from what he heard as he could use his priority pass there. He was surprised to listen to his name and asked for the name of the guild that went inside, which was a dream team. Meanwhile, he was able to get rid of most of the monster but was worried that he wouldn't be able to sell the corpses as there wasn't even a trace. Miss Seo Yoon requested to leave the rest to them, and they attacked the monster. While Cyan casts the magic from down and instructs Miniol to attack, he strikes the beast with an arrow. Later, they threw the corpse out of the dungeon and the hunter from the Dark Dragon Guild was shocked. Since they did their work by clearing the dungeon, Uncle Manchial turned to the position. They were cutting the corpse, and he suggested that he set up a transportation company and work with their guild exclusively, and those hewers were scared. Kim Seo Joon looked at them with faces covered with blood and asked who they were. Uncle Manchial explained to him, and they rushed away. They knew he would have chosen the Dark Dragon Guild dungeon deliberately. Cyan looked at the corpse and asked how much it would be, and Miss Seo Yoon explained that they might each get 100 million won. They were excited to earn that much and wanted to have the party, but the protagonist wondered what they were discussing as they started. After that, he takes them to multiple dungeons, and they get exhausted. Miniel wondered how long they should raid, and he asked what he meant as they should earn as much as they could. They don't want to raid further as they are exhausted and don't need much money. Miniel requested him to do it himself, but he had problems managing his strength, damaging the corpse. Furthermore, they need experience to be in a rank hunter, but they want to develop expertise gradually. He gets furious as they must become a rank for their guild ranking to go up as they had to pay tax and commission benefits, which differ on guild level. They need to increase their guild fame as there would be more money-making methods. Miniel uttered that their guild was already famous because you of Kim Seo Joon. The protagonist said they should become an A-rank hunter if they didn't want to do it, and Miniel thought he was a wicked master. Cyan was crying as she didn't want to raid further and requested Heyoon to help them and say something, but she had already gone next to him. They called her a traitor, but she apologized as she felt like he was going to hit her again. Since Miss Seo Yoon was the guild vice master, they wanted her to stop him, but they had no option but to follow him. Meanwhile, the Hunter Association president was amazed to see the performance of this new guild. Not only were they doing seven, eight-star dungeons, but they were deliberately raiding inside areas monopolized by the Dark Dragon Guild. From the Dark Dragon's perspective, even if they try to stop the raid, it is happening too fast and they also have the dungeon priority pass. He was amazed because the Dark Dragon funds had dried up, but they were still too quiet as they were scheming something again. The secretary entered his room and informed him that a Draugr dungeon had been formed. They could not contact Soul Saint but didn't know when he would answer. This was a disaster because only the Soul Saint could handle Draugr, so they had no choice but to wait for his reply. He remembered Kim Seo Joon but wondered if he would help them as a hunter he would be ready to put his lie online. He was sure he would do it if he gave him enough money. The association president asked him if Hunter Kim Seo Joon was in the middle of the raid. 